go. It looks like the symposium hasn't started yet, but I'll just get started on Civ, you know, and we can wait for that to happen whenever. Actually, let me go to the browser to interact. Lindell TV. Let's go to this live thing. So I believe this is where we have to be. So yeah, you can see this is the, uh, this is frankspeech.com. And uh, I'm trying to figure out where exactly it is. Okay, so there's a whole link here to the Cyber Symposium. It looks like this is not, this doesn't look like it's playing anything though. So I assume we have to go here. I assume this is the live thing. What's this? Overcomers TV? No, that's not doing anything either. All right, I assume they're probably just, you know, they're not uh, on it like me, you know, being here exactly at 10 a.m. You're welcome, viewers. If there are any, let me see. Let me see if we got anyone in the chat. No, no, no one in the chat as of yet. But, uh, you know, I'm sure my promptness will be appreciated at some point. <laughs> okay, now let's get started on some Civ. You know, even if, if this doesn't work out, like maybe I should play some music, just do some lo-fi hip hop in the background until uh, Lindell gets his shit together and then we can watch everything. We can watch it happen. So let's go. Let's do some lo-fi hip hop. Cause I'm cool. Do what the cool kids do, these Gen Z's. There you go, relax and study too. someone who I like and I generally like ones that have like a lot of science or culture I'm not much into like the fighting people kind of thing I've won like diplomatic and science and uh, culture victories so far so I pretty much go for them I played her though she was pretty good a monitore because I like being around the desert you do Petra it's such a game changer but um, let's see who else did I play I played I played Robert the Bruce before of Scotland and that was fun. I won by a science victory with him, of course. Keep my people happy getting that 5% bonus. But yeah, so right now I'm playing Christina of Sweden. Her thing is that I get 50 diplomatic favor when I'm a great person and I go for a lot of great people, you know. Um, Sweden gets one engineer factories plus one of the science universities. Having Sweden in the game at Give you two slots of writing, music, and any type of 
chat are saying they say oh what i people in chat oh shit oh no got it what's happening with this live broadcast sorry uh war zone wrath yeah freaking um oh my gosh i don't even know what's going on with this guy's uh live stream it's like i, I go to his page and i'm not seeing any like tv or whatever like i'm not seeing like anything playing so i don't know if, if i'm missing it if there's something wrong with my browser or if he's just like nine minutes late at this point which is you know believable sometimes people are nine minutes late you know oh vincent come home to rome that is perfect oh thank you vincent come home to rome yeah i got it sweet okay oh and thank you for the diamond shire free media i appreciate that will vincent the heretic be joining us yeah i mean if you want well no i think vincent might be might be busy let me see oh yeah i think he's probably busy this morning so Maybe not, but if he wants to. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not seeing anything in my email, like, saying, oh, you have to register in order to watch it. You know, I'm not seeing... <sighs> Mike! 
I've been waiting for this. I've been so excited to see this. The Cypher Symposium. And then I'm just like... Alright. I'm just going to assume it's late. Maybe I'll search on Twitter and see if other people are watching it. And then I'll know if it's late or not. Oh, oh, hold on. Turn into Mike Lindell's on Rumble. Okay. Um, maybe I'll go to Rumble. Okay. Um, hold on. I have a new link now because it looks like Lindell's thing might be janked. I don't know. <laughs> Windows, uh, he might not have his, his uh, thing go. Well, I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's just me and I'm just having issues with his website. Who knows? But I'm going here now. And come on. Let me interact. Hmm. Let me go to the thing itself on Rumble. Oh, hear that? Okay, okay. So this it's is, is stuff it, right? is starting, it seems like. Got a lot of on this, but it's not showing on my OBS. Let me see if I can find its rumble. Or through rumble. Okay, open link in new tab. And then I will copy this link and then put it in my OBS. And then watch it from there paste Oot. there we go okay guys we're going play and then let me turn off this lo-fi hip-hop as pleasant as it may right be now, i know exactly what you're thinking this is all this is all great you're going to show all of this evidence but then what like that's the question you're all here asking. we go now let me know if you want me to make this more more now, uh my friends i you know, don't know the loud but at least louder okay so there's a uh, real quickly quick uh, roll call here we have some media here that is set up we have the normal conservative outlets that are here i will point out i do not see uh two people here uh we'll put okay. that in the okay. chat i don't want to give them anything but uh yeah it's i mean the attendance here is uh from a conservative side is somewhat excellent uh, limited i'd say I, limited on the right side and once again sad leading the charge here so share this broadcast a way I can tag a friend uh, text a friend say look go get go download their app go to apple go to your android store they cut the servers no nope, no nope. okay we're up victory man we're watching it on uh rumble apparently is where they're showing it which makes me worry here on youtube you know is, is youtube you know are they they're gonna like this nobody report me oh geez do i lose this valuable youtube channel <laughs> to think that we're here today talking about election integrity and talking about the evidence that he uncovered himself. I mean, he got he, there's no financing behind him. He did it all himself. He from day one, all this stuff, even up to this point today, it's been all him. And of course, you can support him. So go to the store and do that. Uh, and I want to mention that you know, if, if if you are watching and you like what you see and you're fired up, I want you to get involved in your local community. I want you to get involved in local politics. And I've said this a time and time again, and I've had several people send me uh, messages and said, look, because of you telling us to get involved in our local community, I'm doing just that. And so I'm, here's a call to action. If you want to change the world that's around you, you change that world that's immediately around you. That's your school board, that your local city council, that is your community, even your uh, association boards. You can make a difference. Yep, yep, Rumble's live. I mean, you can find it on Rumble, or you could just, you know, chill here with me, you know, like my stream, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's somewhere on Rumble. It took me forever to find a link. I had to go, like, go jumping through Twitter, went on this page for RSBN, then they linked it to Rumble. It was a whole, it was a whole mess. But if you want to go through that, you know, feel free. Folks, I'm not sure we can go another six months under a Biden administration. We are seeing the absolutely destruction. 
Oh, yeah, what is it? Alex Jones been saying that uh, freaking Biden's about to, I guess, do the kill switch here on 8-11. That's literally tomorrow that he's about to, like, declare martial law or something he was saying on his show. I don't know if any of you know about that, but that's what I was heard. I was told by someone who uh, watches Alex Jones religiously. We can't wait for him to take the stage. We can't wait for him to take uh, the stage here. And, of course, with the cyber experts as well, uh, they're here. Talking, walking around, talking. Let me see. Bill, I, well, I know you've got the camera on the stage, which is great, but just to our right, we have a little bit of an assembly of, I guess, some cyber tech guys that are Ooh. here. Uh, cyber tech all guys. Of that. Uh, wow, we've got a pretty big crowd. Pretty big crowd watching. Yeah, I, think I got my, uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is coffee, and I got some protein in it. Some so uh, vanilla I'll protein again, shake thing. If you don't thing. have the Rumble app, um, or you know somebody doesn't have it, it's very, go get the app. But then go get our app on right side. Go to I try RSTM to get the app, app and it's like just for your phone. It's like, I'm on PC, app, dude. Apps, like, what? All of our programming this is, is not useful apps. to me. All the events that we cover are on the app. Past events are on the app. Just the other day, I was watching the Trumpzilla from Tampa, Florida. Uh, I was watching that rally that was streaming. So we stream all of our past uh, rallies and programs on there. Uh, we have Diamond and Silk shows on there. Ooh. The great Michael Savage, his podcast wow. is on that as well. What? Uh, red, white, and okay, I might turn in for Michael Savage. I like Michael. Even though literally what he does is he just like turns down the other person and then shouts over them. I, I still forget. I think it's hilarious. Alright. Oh, I think it's really cool and, and, and how you're playing a game there, while live streaming this, says Jessica Savage or A. Thanks. Yeah. Chamber. You know, give you something interesting to watch while we can listen to whatever they're talking about. I will give and you a like to the video, but I'll watch it on Rumble. Okay. All right, Tanner Nelson. Fair enough. I'll take that exchange. All right. Thank you for your YouTube stream. Super creative. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica, for uh, you know keeping this chat live. It's insane that they cut the servers. What do you mean they cut the server? What, what on a? Oh, you mean on Mike Lindell's like actual website they cut the servers? Oh, and so that's why I wasn't able to watch it through his actual website. I had to go to Rumble. So for some reason, but Rumble's still going, though, and, and this RSBN app is still going. They didn't cut those servers just to Mike Lindell's website itself. Jesus. This is like some, this is like some 1984 shit. This is like, this is like legit communist China. We are, we are under... Like... I love this guy. Yes. Okay. The, uh, we probably expected this, so we have a backup plan. They're hooking up now. This was attacked. <gasps> Our, the whole technology was attacked. We expected that. But we it's confirmed. A plan. It's going to be probably another five minutes. And, uh, wow. I want you guys, all you guys to know that out there, that this is why, because I need to get the word out. We can't even get the word out to the people that are frankspeech.com. Because they blocked the thing, or blocked the thing. Who blocked it, though? Who Who is this, this is part of what specifically? I'm about today. This is the cover up. This is the absolute cover up. Like, is this a company? Or are they getting DDoSed? And we're going to talk about all this or today. Cut the, who cut this? Is, the, uh, who owns these servers? All kinds of things. We're going to educate everybody. We're going to show them the. the uh, we're going to be running. I'll, I'll show you over here. You see this data that's running there? That's cyber data from, the, from what I've got. Let's see if it's moving. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not rotating yet, but but there's that'll go in and end the stream for days. And we put six states up there. Um, but I just <clears throat> we're not gonna start the regular program though, because I want to start because it's all educational and it all goes in sequence. I will cool. say this. Everybody tonight you're gonna China see something China owns the servers, time. yes. Yes they do. That, uh, wow. It's going to change the world. That's just Orwellian. And, uh, and then Simon that's data. <laughs> China. You're going to... You're going to also tomorrow, I think it's around noon, but we have stuff that there are only about a handful of people know about. And uh, there's a reason for that. Obviously, stuff like this that they attack. You know, This has been going on. There's going to be a, a lot of talk about the news. What the media did to us... And big tech, this is a prime example. 
Mike's great, but kind of buffoonish. I don't know. I think he's sincere, you know? I mean, he's like a... I don't know. It's very, very uh, boomer. But I like him. But how did we lose that? Because the media... The media, the media. And, and, and Facebook and Twitter and the biggest cover up. He kind of he talks simply to similar to I think Trump. But I don't know. That's buffoonish as much as like you know here, just kind of a communication that's why tactic. Done this. So they don't want me to show it. But I'll tell you what, we have backups and the show will go on. I know. I like Mike. Kiss the sky. Okay. This, this today, this today. Will be our I think it takes, you know, balls of steel, days, frankly, to do what he's doing. Like, what they tried to do is kill like even if he's completely speech, wrong. They took that away. They kept taking it away, and then they put out their own narrative. We already knew they used to do their own narrative, but when they take their, then they take stuff away where they don't, you can't even talk. Like Fox. Um, and they, uh, Fox. You know, they can do, there's two ways that they do it. They either cancel us like they tried when I came out with absolute proof. No media covered it. They just smashed it, but 150 million people seen that. And, uh, and now we're going to get a billion people. This is actually going to help because they're going to hear this attack this morning. Yeah, Fox was generally just like they're good. They're good. Uh, so they're useless good. on the election they're thing. Back Even back Tucker, I was so disappointed. Hannity did better than Tucker, actually, in that regard. And then Lou Dobbs on Fox uh, Business, I think. So I think he's gotten they've gotten rid of him I'll since. Tell you some of the things they, uh, what we're going to do here, and two, and the reason I want to do this live is because there's going to be a lot We of love Mike. Yes, we do, the Colin. Is the big lie. Okay. If he would shave the mustache, he would have a different what voice. I don't do know if that's how it works, Gorana. But the, I mean, there's a lot of them here. With the, yes, yes his heart is definitely in the right the, place. I invited the fake, the fake book plan. Yeah, shame on Fox. Fact checkers. <laughs> Creates bad um, website, doesn't but work. They, we're being hacked, everyone. But Vincent, they, uh, how... As soon as something Vincent out, isn't buying the being hacked theory, but like okay. So pop out there all over the place. We're gonna correct Thinks it Mike would lie to us, Vincent. We're gonna go. Here's what just this just in. CNN does a hit job. Says at the symposium, it's all nothing. There's nobody here. There's nobody watching. And then we're gonna put it out live, and then we're gonna we're gonna call them out. We're gonna call them out for the next three days. So big news before you do anything, you better. You better know we're calling you out because this is what's ruined our country when they've done this cover-up. You have one thing, the crime, but it's another thing to have journalists and every and media covering up the crime. You know, this is for all Americans. Every, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you're going to learn this. This was in, this was China. This was in a, you know this was China coming in. Sure, they had people here. We'll find out that later. We'll find out those who the who the bad actors are. But whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. I want to tell you a little bit. I was on Jimmy Kimmel. Did everybody see him try and destroy me? Well, he asked me something. And the reason I went on there is why? Because I couldn't get the word out anywhere. That's why we had Frank speech. And they attacked it then, and we never broke. We went live stream. They went one step beyond this time, let me tell you. They were ready. Well, we were ready, too. But I'm going to tell you, Jimmy Kimmel, he said, he, he asked me, he said, Mike, would you do it? Would you do it if your friend Donald Trump was the one that got in? If they'd have picked him, and, you know, if the chief was the other way. And I said, absolutely. The time for talk. He's just begun the talking. The time for talk country. is over. The symposium like hasn't even started yet. That this could happen and nobody listened. And then you want to know what happened after that? Uh, Washington Post. They'll be up. We're going to have elections too today, which uh, which is the worst media outlet in the world. Um, but the Washington Post. And other ones, there was one other one, came to Minnesota after Jimmy Kimmel, after I said that. They questioned friends of mine. I think they went back all the way to my second grade teacher. They <laughs> asked them, would Mike really do it if, if Donald Trump got in, if they'd have picked, if it would have been reversed? He, they couldn't find one person. Every single one said, yes, he would. But you didn't hear that from them, did you? This is about our freedom. I don't know about this. this. I hardly have. It looks like I don't. Children, I guess I have here to expand you know, out to. But here, this is really close. I like to have like to my city surrounded, or my my capital surrounded by cities. And I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling there, about this so if far. You're out there right now, if you guys are any live streaming back there, we've had we've been attacked by the, the attack. We the city states are a little close for my taste. 
because everyone's got to see everything we got. This is our one chance in history the next three days. We have to beat the media and the big yes. tech and these attackers so that, our, that this gets heard. This has to get heard. It has to be heard around the world. The whole world's heard, um, counting on it. This is, uh, I think one of them I said what Reagan said, if the lights go out here, they go out everywhere. And this is the hope. This is, a, this is about all Americans. This is whether you're, you know, one of the things to it, my, uh, my company, we've been attacked probably more than any company in history, 2,500 employees, and we have, we, we just had a, we had a death that, that one of our employees tried, very tragic, and we had a big party, that, you know, celebration of her life, and we were all in, and their family was there, but one of the things, we looked around, and there was, there was Democrats, Republicans, there were conservative liberals, all races, black, black, white, Asian, it didn't matter. We're all people, one big family, one nation under God. And I'll tell you, this is what, when we get through this, everybody, when we get through this, if we will, it's gonna be glorious. When you watch today, everyone, if you're over here, you're gonna see going, wow, this is, there is a better path. We pray, I want everyone to pray that the blinders are taken off, the people over here. They said somebody was bad mouthing People on the left the other day, I was doing a speech, or I was up next, and I got up there and said, they're not bad people. They've been brainwashed by the, the media. They've been brainwashed by this, uh, in our schools, and our, you know, taking God out of our schools, and our, our professors, and, and teachers unions, and everybody brainwashing our children. And this is what's happened, and then the media just inspires that brain, like the lies that are gonna come out of here. Can anyone watch that break? Thanks for call streaming your game. Yeah, no problem, Colfax Jones. And I won't even call their names because they're here. I'll do that later. Um, if they do it today. If they do it today, and they do it tomorrow, and they do it the next day, every single terrible journalist in this country is going to get called out by name. Every single one. Get them. And, and let me tell you, they. I want to tell you, I'll tell you a little thing here because now we got some time. And I'm gonna say, when Absolute, before Absolute Proof came out, and uh, and by the way, CNN did this hit job. Absolute Proof, there was an evidence, blah, blah, blah. No, we were telling about the evidence. We were showing there was IP address. We took them off so they wouldn't oh, go ruin So I have like no room to expand, and, and I'm between story. a desert but and when Arctic. Came out, all before that, every day they would attack me. Every day. Mike, you lost four more retailers. How do you feel? Did you hear about China, Dominion, Dominion, Dominion? Every morning, Mike, your company, you just lost Twitter. What do you say? Did you hear about China and our tag, Dominion, Dominion, Dominion? This went on. Every journalist in this country, I think, has my direct phone number. I don't use a publicist. I let them call me and they attack me, but that's the only thing I got because you know why? The other media, you got your great medias that are here, your OANs, your RSBN. No, don't, don't take their abuse, Michael Lindell. Screw the mainstream. We're coming on board. Um, but there was a time, they, they were, the journalists were, were running scared, a lot of them just got running scared with this law affair. But up until, up until oh, geez. No, um, February 5th, every day they called me from morning till night attacking me. Every day. You lost Kohl's, you lost Bed Bath & Beyond, you lost Costco. Yeah, shame on all you retailers. Shame Can't go too far yeah. away because I got this and warrior said, here that I don't want to like 5th. take wait over my city. 5th. February 5th came at 9 Bring my warrior back around. 9 a.m. on February 5th, and it went out. Absolute proof went out. Now it started. Vimeo took us down right away. Then YouTube. YouTube, we, we must have caught him by surprise. They waited an hour. And then, <clears throat> and then, and then Google. Terrible Google. One of the terrible, terrible companies. I bought my own name because I had a Michael J. Lindell website. I, they, uh, I, uh, I bought my own name. So Can you turn up the volume? Stories, Thank you for, for sharing this, Catherine. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on, let me. That's deflection. That's another thing. Let me know if that's good or if it's too much. Let me know. Right after the election, 
Right up to election, November, December. Good look getting there, back and proving OJ, this real. Oh, well, well, yeah, hey, thank you. I appreciate the, the wishes of good luck. Election. Big pack, yeah. that's go, easy. E. Talk about <laughs> Mainstream about media is the enemy of the people. Yes, it is cold facts. I don't know. 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 I don't Hog things, 18 stories about David Hogg copying my okay, pillow. Okay, I'll stop messing with it now. Sound. Let me know so after I this. Is, I bought my name. Did you go up or down? Because you know, you there's a delay in reading the chat, so it's like, you know. Then I went up to 50 or a quarter, then 50 cents, then a dollar. I didn't care if I spent $10 million that day because that had to get out. Google shut me off at 30 grand, said this guy ain't quitting. <laughs> shut me off. And, and then Wikipedia attacked me. Wikipedia took it down and took over there. I'm so Jack disappointed Dorsey, what's happened to Wikipedia. What they did there on Twitter, my Twitter was taken down, but my friends are going, are you okay with this election? And I go, what do you mean? And here they took over my Twitter and were reposting stuff like I was okay. Now you think about that. I tried to take it down and I got a letter from Germany for Twitter. Take this, you, you can't take this down, violation of Twitter code 603 of the Dorsey code. Crazy. We were attacked and attacked and attacked that day. But 150 million people seen that in three days. And I want, and I want to, to tell you, though, none of them journalists called me. It was crickets. All of them. You know, it's here. Not one. I'm calling them up. I got their cell phones, too. Hey, you're not answering. Can, can, you know, don't you want to talk about absolute proof? I, I would call them up. These are bad media. Daily Beast, Business Insider, Salon, all of them. They're just, you know, all the bad media. New York Times, Washington Post, the list goes on, all the attack ones. I can say that because they've attacked me every day. None of them called. They didn't call. They didn't write. So you know what I did? I said, how am I going to get back in the news? Nobody's talking about me. That was the other way to suppress me. If they just don't talk about it, if nobody calls, if they don't call. So what I did, I said, I said, I need Dominion to sue me. So I started daring, because I want you to sue me, Dominion. Sue me. I kept telling them that. Well, they, oh. didn't, they wouldn't sue me. So I called a friend of mine at the Daily Beast. He's, been, he's, he's kind of the, the best of the worst, right? Because he'll, he'll at least quote me. And I said, write all your other bad stuff around me, but you better quote me. So I got, I got him a little bit trained that way, right? So I, so I said, I said, why don't you go over and tell Dominion, why don't you do a job as a journalist and put some news out about them? Other than they're suing everybody over 200 lawsuits and 200 threatening letters to people all over our country. Yeah, Snopes, I think they Snopes is like go, straight up says, FBI. Yeah, Mike, I think there's someone who made it said, is like, well, do your story. I don't so know, he does. Says, Dominion's going to sue Mike Lindell, blah, blah, blah. Three days go by, they ain't suing me. So I go, I call him up, I go, Swin, I go, you better chop, get over to Daily Beast and tell him to hurry up because otherwise you're going to be known as big news. <laughs> so he did, he goes over there, he says, hey, you guys got to hurry up. That morning, the morning at 7 a.m., boom, that night Dominion sues Mike Lindell for $1.3 billion. They not only did that, though, they did something. Not only they were part of the biggest crime in history. Isn't that Mike Lindell doing all this 4D chess? Let's just also crush a company that had nothing to do with it. They did that. So, you know what? They started calling at 7 a.m. First one calls up, and I'm going to use fake names here. Kelly from the New York Times calls up. Mike, 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 Mike. You, you, Dominion's suing you. I said, did you watch Absolute Proof? No, no, I did, but Dominion's suing you. I said, let me tell you something, Kelly. I said, you're going to go watch. I made you a short version. It's 26 minutes long. You're going to go watch that, and you're going to come back, and then I'll tell you all, you can tell your garbage thing you want to print. But if you don't, lose my number, you know, I'm never taking your call again. I'll block you. There's oh, a guy I here forgot to do the farm here. Blocked it. You blocked Thanks. it for two months. You know, I don't mind. I, they attack me. That's all I got, right? But this day, I said, what kind of journalist are you that you didn't watch it? So she goes and watches it. I said, don't worry. You're going to be the first one I, I respond to because I'm sure they all did the same lousy thing. Well, I was right. They called all morning long. The next one called somebody from the um, um, Daily B, someone from Business Insider. You can, the list goes on. Yeah, Mike, this is Jack from the Business Insider. Um, Dominion sued you today. 
That's did you dark. watch Absolute That's Proof? No, I did, but Dominion sued you. I said, what kind of journalists are you? You, you said, you're ruining our country. You're horrific. What kind of journalists are you? I said, I made you a short version. Go watch it. Come back. This went on all morning. Not one of them had watched it. But it went on until about 1230. And you hear this really bad one called, she's always trying to over talk me, goes right to the story. And, um, and, um, say, it goes right to the story. As long as we're talking about this, Dominion just filed a lawsuit against Newsmax, OAN, and Patrick Byrne. This is what we're going to go through today, everybody. God bless them. Let me tell you something, Dominion. Guess what? After today, right there, you better you better melt down those machines and use them for prison bars. That's true. That's true. That's true. Based. And if you're out there now and you're there, you should turn yourself yeah. in right now. And because the first ones that do will probably help. You know, you know, maybe maybe they get air time. I don't know, Big you know, Pack. I don't know what's actually going to happen with this, this symposium, anyway, but I heard a lot about so it. I was like, figure, you know, I'll, I'll stream it, you know? She calls out Either way, what's what's the harm in, you know, showing it? Washington Post. And she, this, she always Most of us cannot get, get his channel to even look. Yeah, they cut his servers, Jason Lore. They cut his servers. I'm watching on Rumble right now. No, Dominion soon. I go, stop. I'm going to hang up on you. This went yelling in the phone. I go, what kind of journalist? YouTube are you? is censoring. You're I had to dig to find this. Wow. Oh, geez. Well, we'll see how far, how long I'm up here. If I go down, I'm on here. I'm also up on D Live. So let me see if I can put that in the chat. In case, you know, something goes on. In case D Live, or in case YouTube goes down, here's me on D Live. And you can watch me there. What was in it? She said something stupid. I go, eh, wrong answer. Now you get to go watch the two-hour version or you're never getting a bad story again. And she did. I'll give her this. She did watch the whole two hours. Okay. But this is what they're doing. This is the attack today. Right now, if, you, if you're out there where this isn't the program, they've attacked us. We had backup to backup to backup. My homie is a they top 100 us. IT no engineer in America and has access to everything Lindell says, or has. I all my own, I everything. you got to realize that Frank's speech, I bought everything, but there's a couple services you have to use. And no, they're not Apple, and they're not the, the terrible ones we know of, the Vimeos and the, and the um, YouTubes, OK? But they, they they attacked him and they did good. So either they're in. Sure, you're watching our Rumble. Rumble just did a double video thing. It didn't work. It seems fishy, right? It saying. went through absolute proof. 150 million people, 50,000 people a minute were coming on it. Absolute. I don't proof. know. Today there'll be a. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Rumble. People coming on a minute. But they did they did this. They attacked it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. We'll wait it. We'll wait it. I'll sit here and talk on for them. 12 hours. Like oh, thank you for the follow on D Live. Came. Kamehamehadukin. Uh, All right. And, and, <laughs> and I'll tell you, this isn't this something. Oh, yeah, like two more weeks. Yes. This was just handed to me. DDoS this attack is, on U.S. and Brazil. Is, oh, so that's what shut battle. it down. All we is a massive do, DDoS attack. Is get what I have out to the world. And, it, and there's a lot. This stuff is world changing today. That's just the first thing. If you're wondering what I'm reading, I'm probably reading and it on D Live. But YouTube just in, just in if you're on there, the, the media back there, they won't put, they, a lot of them won't put this on there, right? Guarantee it. Dominion just filed lawsuits. Now, this has to be there. They could be rolling up to 300 counting threatening letters. Who does that? Okay. Who does that? Let's get back to my game. The important thing here, guys. Who does that? Well, let me tell you who does that. People that have something to hide. They went against Newsmax, OAN, and Patrick Burns. But Newsmax and OAN, isn't that something? Why would they do it? Why would they pick today? Why would they pick today? I mean, there's suspicious things going on. I could tell you, my plane couldn't land here last night with people. There was all some work being done at the airport. That's weird. That could be. It could just have been a coincidence. I've been going through this for this has been the hardest week of my life. I mean, it's been one thing after another that you, these are called uh, deviations that don't make sense. 
but we do know. It's kind of like the election. When you get deviations and they don't make sense, and everybody knows, in the world knows some of the deviations that happen. That'll be part of the program. But I want to say with, um, with Dominion, by the way, it's on all the machines too, it's not just Dominion, let's be fair. Smartmatic, Heart, all of them, they're all, all in this. And they realize that China use comes in, you're gonna see all this. If we have one on the chart here, now it is rolling. If you see that stuff rolling there, but it's not up big event because they've stopped that. What you see there, that's data from the 2020 election rolling. I have six states up there. That was all the states at the end. We have it in all 50 states. So if you didn't think your state got attacked, you got Dr. Doug Frank on here, if you guys know him. He, um, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> um, they're waving me down here. I'm come. So anyway, Everybody, if you're out there live, it looks like we switched. Remember, we had backup to backup to backup. That's one thing. The word's getting out there, no matter what. So I'll be back in a couple minutes here. Do you want to say something? I'll be back. We'll be back. All righty. So I guess they're going on a on a little break here. They're waving him over. All right. Now words from uh, Mike Lindell as he announced earlier that the uh, system originally scheduled to broadcast this uh, was hacked and crashed and therefore their backup uh, was hacked and crashed so they're working on getting another support system up here to get this message out and so we shared about 20 minutes of uh, announcements uh, here with the uh, people here at this uh, cyber symposium. If you're just now joining us, uh, welcome. This is a very historic day uh, for this country and for, uh, well, and for all things election integrity as Mike Lindell's cyber symposium is kicked off here. Uh, started about nine o'clock here central time. Uh, a few technical problems are trying to work that out right now. Uh, but we're, we're witnessing history and we are witnessing the very reason why uh, we are Trying to watch yeah, from here. Australia, the website won't load on my phone or uh, laptop. Yeah. At its finest. I'm getting and DDoS. Course, uh, that has Ten been days of darkness then coming. Since Maybe. The election. Was he talk yeah, about Alex Jones said, uh, election? what is it? About what could Martial law happened. about to be declared tomorrow. Being silenced we'll see. by big tech. Uh, they don't give want up this trying to predict what's to get coming. out of here yeah. right now. Then there is a reason why. And yeah, I think Liz and I can just talk off camera here. Um, didn't you experience our app at certain times were, was glitching? And I don't know what that's from. I don't know. I know our app can hold a lot of traffic. So I don't think it was that. I it think smells like another grift, says Vincent. I mean, what a grift. We're not like yeah, paying so to watch this. Got a little scary for a moment because he doesn't have to do some special live stream that can be DDoSed if the information like he has is legitimately and, um, legitimate and apparently so, so important. This should be a walk in the park as far as broadcasting goes today. Very easy. Um, but we were glitching for a little bit. No idea why. Uh, looks like things are pretty solid right now. They might be able to get to them, but they ain't getting to us, not yet. Um, it's worth noting, and he went over it really briefly, but there were a few things that were mentioned that were really important, and I'm gonna talk about those in just a second. Before I do that, I wanna remind you guys, you saw Mike Lindell just now taking the stage. You are witnessing what is happening to him and what he is fighting against. If you wanna support him, now is the time. We have the best code in the history of MyPillow. You can use the code RSBN, as in Right Side Broadcasting Network, for up to 66% off your entire order at mypillow.com. That code also works at mystore.com. And this man deserves our support now more than ever. He is single. Let me pause this to read out. Okay, so Vincent is in the D live chat and he thinks it's a grift. He says the grift is that these guys are attention whores, that there's a half a dozen of them since the election that have inside scoops and secrets that are forever right around the corner. There's literally zero reason for him to have a live stream that has him center stage to reveal some info while just posted. I, he wants to make a show of it, obviously. You know, that's how I heard about it. Oh, he's back. He's back. So have people here that it's I know to, you know, streaming. get the hype going. And, RSBN, and uh, we're going to be, uh, so why don't you guys keep streaming? Okay, so that way they can get the word out that what's happening. Everybody, if you're just tuning in. We, we were attacked, but we have backup to backup, and this is part of what they've done to our country. That, you know, everyone's going, no, yeah, I'll tell you one thing, the headlines will be, here, uh, here I can see it right now, it's probably already out there, besides Dominion suing these guys, it's probably already out there. CNN's probably got it, they probably called, they have eight guys here. 
Mike Lindell's thing. He didn't have good technology. They, you know, didn't even, all he had was a microphone. There was nobody there. You know, I can see it already. But I'll tell you what, but they, right now, I'm gar the show will go on. And right now what's happening, they're so dumb when they do this. Here's why. This is good. This story's going around the world right now that they tried to do it to the people again. They tried to do this again. They tried to keep us suppressed, our First Amendment rights of free speech. And this is what's going on, and it's a perfect example. We get an example today. By the time we get it hooked up and start the program, there could already be 100 million people tuning in. And they... Um, they won't even let us, for a little bit there, they won't let us put up on our screen that there's, uh, that things are down that will be up momentarily. But the word's gonna travel on all the stations like RSBN and everybody else tuning in back there that when we, that we do, that we are doing, that they did attack us. Maybe Jimmy Kimmel can make fun of me again. Remember when it said the lights were like, we're under attack? Yeah, they were, we were attacked down, we were attacked at free speech all the time. But why don't I tell you a little bit where, what's gonna go on today could at least do that. What's going to go on is um, when we start the program, well, I'll skip through the program up here. If you're a cyber forensic expert, you've got a badge, and on the back of that, you've got it's color coded. There should be a color on there. Each one will go to a. Each of you will go to a breakout room, and you'll be you'll be fed uh, the data from the 2020 election. And. One of the things, too, is anybody here that's for that challenge, the $5 million challenge, you have to sign a sheet, a release form at the front. If you did, you have time to go do that now. A release form. Yeah, okay, so these are people who, uh, okay. um, I guess, are trying to disprove it. We're going to have two behind us over here where those cameras are, those kiosks right there. Those are going to be the cyber center, and you're going to be able to go up there and put any state or county of the six states or any state in there and you're going to see what the big lie was and you're going to see what the truth is so you, it'll take while well, the computer will generate it it'll go through pulling all the data from those hi shay i'm your US follower just k-u-z okay thanks mike daly i appreciate the follow see it's going to convert it. oh vincent also, guarana says those saying it's a grift are afraid it's okay it's okay to be scared i'm excited though hear that vincent Guarana says you're afraid up. it'll be let's say we pull up new hampshire they say by one new hampshire i'm going to give you this one this will be a little a pre pre mm -hmm. preview here. so we're going to put up the big lie and there will be new hampshire it'll be all blue right just like on election night and then we go what boom New Hampshire goes to Donald Trump by 40,000 votes. That's the truth. And we're going to we're going to do all 50 states. We're going to talk about what happened because every state was affected. They they weren't they spread this far and wide over all 50 states. And then we're we're going to explain what they did. We're going to show we have different things, not just the forensics I have, but we have a lot of other stuff we'll show you, but this is all about the machines and cyber, the cyber China attacking us with cyber warfare. Everybody, mm -hmm. we're living in an attacking age us now even today. where it's the computer age. There's hacks and cyber attacks every day, as you can see, right? Well, in everything else we have, everything we do, gas lines, even credit card companies, businesses, it hacks, they fix it, they bring in white hat hackers and they fix it, and life goes on. Insurance companies eat it, whatever, or we pay for it, the American people. But when it happens to your election, you lose everything. Everything. Because you can, they come in, we jumped right over socialism to communism. They come in, and now everything that you fought for, it falls like dominoes. Oh everything gosh. in your life, it's over. It is over. That's the only way. When you go, when you do this, it doesn't matter what else happens. It doesn't matter what else happens. If they took your election, ask Venezuela, ask, ask countries like that. If you steal an election and you have ways to always do that through computers and through cyber warfare, and everyone's going, Mike, you know, come on, that's so far-fetched. Was the, was the gas lamp far-fetched? Credit card companies happens all the time. I mean, this is the big lie. How does that, how do they sit and tell us that? Because of the media, because of Jack Dorsey, 
and Mark Suckabuck on Twitter. They put the fake book fact checkers up there and they cover up. Do you know when I did absolute proof, they put up false information. Then they put contains nudity and porn. And this is what, what? they do. That's insanity, you know. I put up this event. I just did it last night. I put out a thing this morning. I said, you know, we're going to start at 9 a.m. And, and this is what I did about 3 in the morning. We're going to start at 9 a.m. This is on my friend, not my not my fan page, my page, my Facebook page. I put the at Frank, went live at 9 at frankspeech.com. Boom. And put up, you, you, this contains false information. Would you, would you still want to put it up? Well, you know what? That's the one thing that the Facebook fact checkers were right on because they knew I wasn't going to start at night because they might have been part of this attack. Think about it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, you think about it. There's people like that are going to have a lot of explaining to do when these three days are over, I'll tell you. It's, it's uh, disgusting. And it all starts with the media. I'm about to get destroyed by bars. Facebook, all the social media. And you're going to find out. When we when we start, it involves a lot of a lot of other things too. And um, anyway, if you're tuning in right now, if you're coming in, they attacked, they broke three things already. And the one of them, now remember, the one of them had took 150 million people. And then when I came out with absolute interference, another 100 million, absolutely nine zero. I don't know how many that was. And scientific proof, which Doug Frank uh, was in. So, and then we called them. Do you know the company? And if they're part of it, I'm going to call them out. We're still, we're still out on this. Because this one's a big company. But we, we even, I even took out the insurance on the first thing. $56,000 oh insurance. Okay. So I might rage for it. I'm sorry, new game. I'm about to lose to the bar. They came out of nowhere. Oh, we'll forget army the of them. Five minutes and they switched. It's kind of OP. That one don't work. That one tapped. And then he switched over here to our moment. It wasn't even part of them. And that one's getting blocked. And now we have the fourth one, and it's going to work. So if you're out there, pray. But we don't need that. Well, I mean, we don't. We don't. We are going to get down. But pray for this get up sooner. The uh, one of the things we've had in our country is the power of prayer. And and when you yeah, look at that, everybody, quick pray. It's ready. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God bless. Thank you all. And I want to say, before I say, I want to thank all of you for coming. And um, it's going to be amazing, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mike Lindell. He just left the stage. They are about to reset. We're going to start over 9.52. So 52 minutes behind schedule. But as you heard, frankspeech.com actually got hacked today. They went through three different barricades, three different precautions that they've no. got set up to prevent being hacked. Uh, somebody doesn't want this information to get out. Fortunately, Right Side Broadcaster Network was able to live stream that entire kind of opening monologue, opening session, and a lot of truth bombs were dropped. We heard that um, a certain company, and at this point, I'm just going to avoid saying the name. You guys know who I'm talking about, but is being sued, is suing Newsmax and OAN. They are not here, uh, which was interesting not to see them. They've got name plaques, but they are not presently here, so that could explain why. Um, he also mentioned that at 7 p.m. tonight that... He will share information that will change the world. So a lot going on here today. Mike Lindell is absolutely killing it already. What an incredible event. We're so anxious to see all of this information for it to be brought forward, to come to light. And I want to remind you guys, he is doing this. He's not a politician. He's doing this because he wants to, because he thinks that what he's doing is right. He's led by God. And I want you guys to go support him. I want you to absolutely blow him away when my pillow sees these sales coming in. You saw what that company is doing to my pillow, attempting to sue them. They need to leave that company alone. Use code RSBN at mypillow.com. Again, that's code RSBN at mypillow.com for up to 66% off your entire order. They just got sued by Dominion again. They've been double sued now. You know, just kind of like me. You know, I don't know, Dominion's running out of, running out of they, they must have, I think if they have a lawyer for every lawsuit, 200 some lawsuit, that's nuts. Um, but anyway, so we're hooking up the link for everybody. And once again, RSBN, if you guys are watching on RSBN, um, you got, that we've been telling everybody out there that you, if you 
you just tuned in, now you can get to frankspeech.com or Lindell TV, but we're waiting to get great affiliates like over here and hooked up. And um, it'll be, I don't want to say, let's see, we'll say five minutes and if it goes, to, we'll see if Facebook puts a fact check up there and says false news. All right, we ready? Working absolutely hard right now, unbelievably hard behind the scenes to make sure that as many as many credible news outlets right now can take this coverage live. So we're patiently waiting for them to begin this program about an hour behind schedule right now. But again, we are just waiting to make sure OAN and other other networks are able to get this stream live. Very thankful for Right Side Broadcasting right now and their technology, everything they've invested from your donations and your support into this company to be able to kind of fight against these scenarios. We are live streaming right now and so proud of our tech team for just handling it like absolute professionals. Again, please go to mypillow.com. Let's blow them away. My pillow has been under attack because well, there's really no reason. <laughs> there's absolutely no reason. They're under attack. They shouldn't be. Michael Dell, of course, is the CEO, but that is a company of hundreds of employees, if not thousands, and they are just incredible people. We've had such... What um, a disaster. Are you kidding me, Big Pack? I just survived after this freaking barbarian the, horde had me, like, literally almost died, like, within, you know, an inch of life. We've met so many of their so wonderful heroic. employees. And they don't deserve to be going through this and to be, um, you know, canceled by the, Fox It's back up on Frank, Frank's speech, staying Lindell, here, so though, in case he gets hacked in. Okay, that we don't appreciate need that call. The less money. Our patriots know how to show their support, and that's by going and supporting MyPillow.com. Use code RSB, and again, best code out there, up to 66% off your entire Plus, order. you get to watch you this SIG game. Did you major, see that? I was um, almost dead. Billions, These bards almost the killed me. They, love to see they it. almost took they my freaking so capital city. Coupon codes. So for the next three oh, days leading up to this event, uh, make sure to use that code RSBN. And I really just want Mike and his team to see that our viewers are the best in the world. I am so excited. I love seeing the, the amount of sales coming through from our viewers. I mean, there's such a, like a direct correlation between what RSBN stands for and what Mike Lindell stands for and the amount of money he invests back into putting these things on. I mean, shoot, I'm just like, take my money, take my money. You should see my bedroom, Brian. It is, it is a, it's a my pillow factory at this point. He's a cameraman is back there like nodding his head. He came over one time because we had a flight with a long layover. He is like, you're not kidding. Like you stand behind these products. He needed to take a shower and he was like, even your bath mats, towels, bathrobes, pillows, duvet cover, three inch memory foam mattress topper. I got the pajamas, I got the slippers, and it is all so cute. Most of my colors blush pink, and I am hounding them all the time. I'm like, when are y'all gonna have new releases? Like, I need more, I need more stuff. Cause I already have everything. I'm obsessed with it, I love it. You guys check out their inventory. Go to mypillow.com, use code RSB at up to 66% off your entire order. Let's support other patrons. I'm just observing what's going on in here. We've got a couple. I noticed some local media has have come in here, which is very surprising because I called them out earlier how there was no local media at this event. Here's one of the biggest, I would think, media election integrity meetings that we've ever had, uh, and there's no local presence, but they're now uh, here as well. Uh, it seems like the room has filled up a little bit more since we started here about 9 o'clock central time when this thing was supposed to kick off. And as you heard earlier, it was uh, compromised about three times. Now they finally have a fourth uh, method of getting this message out there. Uh, thanks to uh, Mike Lindell for giving us an, a great shout out saying that, hey, you know, yes, we have had, I guess, little glitches here and there. Uh, but thanks to the technology that we have supporting our network, uh, that we were not compromised on that. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it, there's things that are going on behind the behind us that we don't know. But uh, we're going to go through this, and we're going to continue to bring this message to you. And as Liz said yeah. earlier, at seven o'clock tonight, Mike Lindell announced he is going to make a big, big announcement that will be huge and very impactful. Huge. And he says it's going <laughs> to it's going to shake the world. Uh, we cannot wait to bring that to you as well. And if there's ever a time that you can phone a friend I'm right now, send a text message and says, hey, you know, you've been doubting all the stuff that Mike Lindell's been saying. You've been doubting all the naysayers about the election. Well, now is the time to watch this broadcast. Go download our app. Go to your Apple store, your Android store. Download RSPN. Have it on your phone. It's free of charge. 
and you can watch and listen wherever you're at right now. I've got friends and family right now that are at work. They're all watching us on via our app because they're like, I can't believe what's going on. I heard that all this is, you know, the cyber attack is going on. Uh, and so this information's got to get out, and there's only one way to do that, and it's right here at uh, right side. We appreciate you guys doing that because it is about big tech censorship, and that's one thing that we've that we're under the. And this is a great example because you know. I look like Mike's about to take the stage, but you know what? If you think this is a left or right oh. issue, it's not. It's freedom of speech, it's tech censorship, and if you think that it's just... Vince is still going off in the chat. That Mike sounds like the guy Mike at a dive Lidell, bar questioning Lidell, closing Lidell, time Lidell, on a Tuesday. Oh, wow, Vincent. I wouldn't know, Vincent. I don't go to, you know, bars, a dive bar, especially not on Tuesdays, Vincent. I can't relate. Also, what's the grift? There's literally an ad for his company taking up 25% of the screen with a discount Lamal. Okay, so Vincent, Vincent's still holding on to his, his theory that this is all a grift. Cheers, cheers. Oh, he's back. All okay. right, everybody. Perfect timing. Um, the, uh, the company, uh, and I don't know, I guess I'll have some explained to him, but it was called Limelight. Both their mm -hmm. things went down. Those are the ones I paid for. Calling them out. They went down, so we'll find out. Right? But we're not with them right now. We're live streaming, and we're going to start our program. OEN got hooked up. Everybody can take your seats. <clears throat> this is the way it would have started. <laughs> um, Call them out. But I have, I have, uh, Get wrecked, Limelight. Jesus is going to lead us in a prayer to start this out. The prayer for our nation. And, uh, and, and Kendra, go ahead. Would you guys join with me in prayer? And thank you so much for being here and all your time and effort and energy. We really appreciate every one of you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we just praise you, God, for bringing this together, God. We give you all the glory. God, we ask for you to order all this today. Order it, God, according to your will. Let your will be done and your kingdom come, God, to our lives on earth as it is in heaven. And everything involved with the technology and getting your word out, God, and, and getting the truth out. God, your word says that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. I'm asking for the truth to be revealed today. God, in the next three days, Lord, I'm asking you to uncover. I'm asking you to bring forth anything, God, that we need to see, Lord. And we, we just want your truth, God. You are truth. God, we worship you. We praise you, God. We thank you, God, for this nation, God. You founded this nation, God, for religious freedom. And we acknowledge, God, that we are one nation under God. And we give you the glory, God. And we praise you and we thank you. And I just want to say a quick prayer. I, I felt led, like, to acknowledge these things and just ask for mercy and, and say a little bit from Daniel. This was a prayer from Daniel. Chapter 9. O oh Lord, you are great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to you and to your servants and your and your prophets. And then, and then later on it talks about asking God. It says, Oh my God, lean down and listen to us. Open your eyes and see our despair. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. We are crying out for your mercy on our nation, God. We have turned our back on you in many, many ways, and we're asking you to forgive us. I'm repenting of that uh, with people, God, that, uh, that want to repent here and just say we have taken you out of our society, out of our schools, out of our media out of our lives and we have turned our back on you and, and we call that sin and we're just asking you to forgive us, have mercy on us and listen and act. It says, oh Lord hear, oh Lord forgive, oh Lord listen and act for your own sake. Do not delay, oh my God, for your people. And, and we just thank you and praise you God ahead of time, give you all the glory for everything you're going to do over these next three days. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to have uh, Grand House come up here. He's going to lead us in the National Anthem, or the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Thank you. 
please join me in singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the My dog. And I want everybody around the world, what you're going to see next in this video, I want everybody, you share it, you get it out everywhere. From Australia, I know you're watching, you're watching even in China right now. And uh, even in China. This video everywhere before they take it down, even. Go ahead and put it up on YouTube and Vimeo and all that. Just, you know, right now, you got to share this everywhere. So let's start this movie. in the U.S. election results. No. Detailed logs documented entries into the tabulation system for the election itself, and the team saw many anomalies in areas of extreme concern. Then in November 2020, multiple groups of concerned Americans came together because they all observed something incredible in the 2020 general elections. The groups united to launch a full-scale investigation led by former members of the U.S. intelligence community, the Department of Defense, NASA, the U.S. National Laboratories, private investigations and cybersecurity companies and legal firms from around the country. The discoveries gained through intense forensic research left everyone involved deeply concerned about the future of our nation and our world. While the U.S. media will undoubtedly discredit this information as far-right conspiracy theory, the fact is the people involved in this investigation represent all colors, all creeds, and all political parties. To ignore this message, is to surrender to a government takeover that will gravely affect the lives of every man, woman, and child of every nation. If there ever was an authentic, nonpartisan issue, this is it. In 1970, Henry Kissinger said, who controls the food supply controls the people. Who controls the energy can control whole continents. Who controls money can control the world. This concept is critical to understanding the thinking of those who seek to cripple and control America. To achieve their goal, they've got to disrupt families, divide races, destroy small businesses, dismantle the middle class, and distort the American dream of owning land, a home, and everything necessary for the pursuit of happiness and sovereignty. In collusion with our foreign adversaries, these treasonous few are working hard to tear down the last standing wall between them and their agenda of global domination. That wall is you, the American people. By focusing on specific election system vulnerabilities, our investigation confirmed that the entire US election system is under the total control of private equity firms and foreign money. 
Ooh. UBS Securities LLC New York and UBS Securities Company Limited Beijing injected hundreds of millions of dollars into Staple Street Capital, the current owner of Dominion Voting. UBS currently holds the intellectual property of Dominion as their equity collateral. Up until December 2020, UBS Security LLC New York listed three senior Communist Chinese Party members as being on the boards of both UBS Securities LLC New York and UBS Securities Limited Beijing. The companies owned 75% by the Chinese government. Seidel, the parent company of Clarity Elections, located in Madrid, Spain, a data management and early election night reporting company, went bankrupt in May of 2020 and was subsequently purchased in a closed private equity deal by an Irish company called Paragon. The election sites for numerous counties in the U.S. go to a Clarity Elections web address. The counties don't own or control their voting data, and the positions of president, secretary, treasurer, and CEO are all occupied by one man, Jonathan Brill. Brill also happens to be a part of Seidel's senior management team and has run campaigns for Democratic Party candidates. Our investigation also revealed that contrary to the current political narrative, the election systems and their equipment were connected to the internet, making them infinitely hackable. Voting machines themselves are not connected to the internet. No voting machines are connected to the internet. The devices are not connected to the internet. They do not connect to the internet. Those things are not connected to the internet. The Department of Homeland Security says the 2020 election was the most secure in American history. The 2020 election was the most secure in U.S. history. That's what they say now, but just a short while ago, the political narrative was very different. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. We brought in um, folks who, before our eyes, hacked election machines. Workers were able to easily hack into the electronic voting machines. <coughs> it was possible to switch votes. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. Remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraudsters and hackers. Unfortunately, Dominion has recently been thrust into the national spotlight as part of a dangerous and reckless disinformation campaign aimed at sowing doubt and confusion over the 2020 presidential election. First, there were no switched or deleted votes involving Dominion machines. Dominion is not and has never been a front for communists. The company also does not have any ties to China whatsoever including no ties, including investment, or source code transfer. Let me be clear. Voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning that they are not connected to the internet. It sounds like some of these machines are showing the tabulators can and, and are connected to the internet. Um, throughout, you're gonna, particularly where a vote is cast uh, on election day, those machines tend to and should not be uh, connected to the internet, certainly is the best practice. But, but some have the capability, don't they? Uh, some may have uh, modems uh, that are typically in, uh, disabled, but in certain states, I believe in Wisconsin, some are temporarily activated to transmit, uh, transmit some counts. But, the, but those tabulators are connected on election day, because that's how they transmit the data to the counties and also into the unofficial... Uh, in some cases, yes. Sir. Yeah, okay. Through forensic analysis of election management system computers in Antrim County, Michigan, affidavits from numerous election officials in Georgia, as well as the operator's manual for Dominion's Democracy Suite 5.5, our teams have gathered indisputable evidence that the entire system can indeed be connected, hacked, and manipulated. And in fact, it was. Here's what triggered this investigation back in 2018. This is the Allied Security Operations Group primary finding in the 2018 governor's race where a direct flip of 560 votes was made from Matt Bevan to Andy Bashir. So that was exactly 560 votes was deducted from Matt Bevan. 560 votes were added to Andy Bashir. This race was decided by a little over 5,000 votes. So this one switch represented about 25% of the margin of the vote. Andy Bashir is declaring victory because he is the leading candidate over a Republican incumbent governor in a state Matt Bevin won by 10 points four years ago in the state Donald Trump won by eight points. 
Here's an example of election anomalies that took place in 2020. So now we would take the ballots and we would scan them. It's going to feed these ballots through the scanner. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to overvote. What do you mean by overvote? Overvote is when if there is multiple people in a section where it says only vote for one. So you're scanning the same ballots twice. It's already been scanned once. I've already scanned them once. Yeah, so you're scanning the same ballots. Same ballots twice. You just accept that every one of them. Every one of them went through. It's just, there it is, the fifth match. Okay. It's pending adjudication. I think I want to vote. It sounds like Paula Dean. And complete. So you made a vote for someone where someone did not vote. I did, did I? And you're the oh, incognito, black pillow in the chat. I am the person that sits and does the adjudication. All right, but we're not going to step Big out. mad. Initiated by a court order, the Michigan investigation team obtained forensic access to a DS-200 tabulator, the machine that counts the votes. A Telet 4G wireless chip manufactured in Taiwan was discovered embedded into the motherboard. The voting machine tapes clearly indicate modem engagement and transmission of election data. Okay, let's see. Some of the anomalies that we noticed in the 2020 general elections that five key states all stopped counting at a certain time in these key battleground states. Okay, these yeah. are all where Set on this side so I can get the answer here. Used the, the Smartmatic and GEMS software. So when the vote stopped counting, and this has been noted in other countries as well. President Trump was significantly ahead when reporting and counting resumed. There was a massive spike occurred that, uh, that favored Joe Biden. The next major observation the teams made was that there were significant financial transactions from private and nonprofit organizations that had a severe impact on the 2020 general election. Magazine article in February of 2021, individuals and organizations have been plotting to fortify the election since at least 2015. This is the inside story of the conspiracy to save the 2020 election, but it's massively important for the country to understand that it didn't happen accidentally. Democracy is not self-executing. There was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. They got states to change voting systems and laws and helped secure hundreds of millions in public and private funding. That's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream, a well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries. Oh, this creepy woman voice, the creepy sound in the background. Oh, it's creeping me out. Stop, Lindell. <laughs> they were not rigging the election. They were fortifying it. This network influence diagram really shows the interrelationship of money, people, and influence and control between key players and key organizations. Now, there were over 200 nonprofits that we found in this network that are all connected. What's even more troubling is that all of those 200 organizations have received substantial funding from a single source. Of all the financial titans and philanthropists of the 20th century, none are more complex or mysterious than George Soros. You're a Hungarian Jew who escaped the Holocaust by posing as a, a Christian. And you watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. And I would say that that's what I can act as. My understanding is that you went out with this protector of yours. Yes. Based. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. Like Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and the Rockefeller. What? He amassed billions through ruthless business decisions, only to turn around and give away most of his fortune to advance his own personal philosophy. I am basically 
there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. Do you believe in God? No. This is not the first time that Mr. Soros has been implicated in a plot to destroy a nation. His cover organizations have been banned from several countries for doing exactly what they're currently doing to America. The Philippines, Russia, Turkey, Poland, Pakistan, as well as Soros' own homeland of Hungary have learned the hard way the true intentions of this ruthless multi-billionaire. <laughs> Wow, Fox. Okay, we're going to move on. Look at them calling him out. Oh my gosh. 2006 when Soros said Mandel so based. Stable and just world calling out Fox and stuff. States. Translated into truth, that sentence would read the main obstacle to destabilizing the world is the United States. While Soros is often accused of unfounded conspiracies, that should not detour from the heinous crimes against humanity that he's actually guilty of. Many of those crimes he keeps hidden in plain sight. According to a white paper called U.S. Programs 2015 to 2018 Strategy, Soros's Open Societies Foundation began funding radical operations in Arizona and Georgia in 2015 with the goal of subverting the 2020 presidential elections. Through massive campaign contributions and nonprofit funding, Soros owns and controls countless public officials, university professors, teachers' unions, mayors, district attorneys, judges, congressmen, senators, secretaries of state, sheriffs, governors, and electronic voting machine companies around the world. In 2010, George Soros shocked even his most devout loyalists when he declared that China has a better functioning government than the United States. While the Chinese people should be considered friends and allies, the Chinese Communist Party is anything but. The CCP has been plotting to take over the United States for the better part of this last century. And their unconventional warfare principles were barely recognizable to the U.S. population. America's top intelligence official even went so far as to say, and I quote, if I could communicate one thing to the American people from this unique vantage point. Oh gosh, is, this freaking barbarian scout trying to attack China my freaking... poses the greatest threat to democracy and freedom worldwide since World War II. While we were sleeping, their poisonous seeds planted long ago have taken root and are now in full bloom within U.S. soil. The Chinese government and their operatives are buying up the United States at alarming rate. Through cover organizations and individuals that are purchasing American farms and businesses and mass volume. In addition, the CCP has co-opted the U.S. entertainment industry. Chinese firms own several major U.S. entertainment companies and control more than 8,000 American theater streams. Hollywood movie scripts are often reviewed and censored if they pose any threat to the image of the Chinese Communist Party. And many professional sports teams and players are controlled in great part by the CCP. The pandemic sped up a trend that was already years of the making, and it's brought about another change. The Chinese government's growing influence over the content of these films. That has people worried, including members of Congress, as they point to a growing list of examples of Hollywood seemingly bending to China's will. Now, here's a case in point. If you're a Hollywood actor, whatever you do, don't call Taiwan a country. Here's WWE star John Cena apologizing for doing just that. Uh, 
turn back. Kim Jong Jong, don't go Kim Jong And that's the fear now because you're now making movies for 16 year olds and China. <laughs> and that's it. LeBron James taking on Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey, whose tweet supporting protests in Hong Kong set off a firestorm between the country and the league. China announcing this morning they're pulling NBA games from their airways. I don't want to get into a, a feud with Daryl, but I believe he wasn't educated on, on, on the situation at hand. Just be careful what we, what we tweet and we say. Why would the NBA take $500 million plus from a country that is engaging in ethnic cleansing? Use the restroom real quick, I'll be back. I'm okay with doing this for China. One of the stark realities of this past year is the clear and present threat that China represents to the United States of America and to the daily lives of America. And it's not just about exporting a pandemic. China has also potentially compromised Joe Biden's family. Joe Biden, while he was vice president, took billions of dollars in bribes from the Chinese government in the form of payments to his son Hunter's businesses. In exchange, Biden was soft on Chinese military and economic aggression. This is the reason why I've held the view for so many years and continue to hold the view that a rising China is a positive development. They're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a competition for us. And I think that the biggest competitor is China. Joe Biden had a bit to say today, suggesting that China wants to own America by 2035. They literally have a stated goal of toppling America as the world superpower. How on earth could Joe Biden, with a straight face, negotiate with a government who's put billions of dollars into his family businesses? And finally, no rule, you're not going to win the battle for the 21st century if you are a silly people. And Americans are a silly people. Half the country is having a never-ending woke competition deciding whether Mr. Potato Head has a We are a silly people. You know who doesn't care that there's a stereotype right, of Chinese back. and Dr. Seuss book? China. You think China's doing that? Letting political correctness get in the way of nurturing their best and brightest. You think Chinese colleges are offering courses in the philosophy of Star Trek, the sociology of Seinfeld, and surviving the coming zombie apocalypse? Those are real, and so is China, and they are eating our lunch. China is going to eat our lunch. China. Come on, man. Last night, I was, uh, I was on the phone for two straight hours with Xi Jinping. And, uh, but, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, get moving. They're going to eat our lunch. And he called the congratulations. We had a two-hour discussion. He's deadly earnest. We're becoming the most significant consequential nation in the world. China is currently making big moves to gain control of U.S. port facility operations and already controls the Panama Canal. They're building 5G networks throughout Europe and the West, which can be used to feed personal information and sensitive data directly to the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese government uses commercial software and apps to spy on U.S. citizens and extract their private information. The CCP doesn't ask them for information. They don't need to. They have access to the information. There seems to be a great disconnect. I mean, the American people, at least the kids who are on TikTok, have no concern. No, what we're talking about here. Their ignorance of the threat does nothing to diminish it. It's estimated that at least 80% of American adults have had their private information harvested by China. Big Pharma has exported the vast majority of their production to China. Currently, 97% of antibiotics in the U.S. come from China. 30% of personal protective equipment, such as face masks, come from China. 80% of U.S. imports of rare earth minerals come from China which are vital for smartphones, electric cars, defense, and other technologies. In 2017, the U.S. produced zero rare earth minerals. China, on the other hand, accounted for more than 80% of the world's supply. In lockstep with the Mexican drug cartels, 97% of fentanyl, one of the most addictive and deadly drugs, is smuggled into the U.S. from China. People's Liberation Army hackers are executing unconstrained penetration, surveillance, theft, and offensive cyber attacks on U.S. businesses, critical infrastructure, intelligence apparatus, and yes, even the U.S. election system. To ignore this message is to surrender to a government takeover that will gravely affect 
the lives of every man, woman, and child of every class, culture, and nation. Our goal is to reach and revive the heart of humanity while there's still time. This is your wake up call. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Hello. Well, what do you think? Hmm. I see, I want to tell you, in that movie it said they were going to take over by 2035. They, they came about, what, 14 years early. Um, everybody out there, before we talk here, you need to share that far and wide. We're going to run that a couple of times a day here. China today. loves Joe Biden. So yes, they uh, do. This is well, I, I'm sure they, uh, they love his son more. He runs a red team. I had to find out what a red team made. <laughs> and they, uh, they do a lot. Uh, but uh, uh, can you t tell us some, Colonel, about that? Uh, you guys can all chime in, too, about the movie. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world. That, the, uh, that movie was really the culmination of over a year's worth of work from you know, about 12 to 15 folks full time and then an aggregate uh, injection as you know, whatever you want to call them, digital warriors or extended networks of, of folks who do a lot of boring drudgery uh, for research and it's uh, you know, researching publicly available information to uh, from everything from court cases to financial records to foreign uh, financial transaction databases, databases that are on the dark web. You know, it's just, it's just, a, it's really connecting dots, uh, following the money trail, and uh, looking at, uh, you know, the, all, all that list of Soros contributions, that was all from the Federal Election Commission reports, digging through all that information, all that data, all that uh, cyber, you know, if you will, everything is, everything is connected, uh, is in the realm of cyber, cyber security. Uh, it, Cyber is not necessarily a thing. It's, it can be a thing. It's a meme. Conduit. It's the way that it's a you meme. Communicate. Every one of you out there right now have got multiple devices who are, that are connected. Um, your your phones and your computers are air gapped, but they're connected. And uh, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to make that. <laughs> but um, the 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 efforts. Um, you know, I happen to be the guy sitting there talking, but the, the efforts are from you know folks. Some folks in this room. Uh, My gosh, this is vape is harsh. Um, folks around the country and folks around the world uh, that, that aggregate this information to give the American people a picture of what's really happening. Uh, understand the Chinese doctrine of unrestricted warfare. Understand the color revolution that, that's happening in the country. And that's really what brought us to begin this research. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's a threat. It's a threat to our republic. And uh, I, uh, I, you know, I disagree with a lot of folks, you know, especially the, the, the Time Magazine the article that says democracy is not self-executing. Um, you live in a republic, you're a nation governed by laws and, uh, and agreement on those laws. And I feel that uh, you know, our republic is in jeopardy. justice system, their bifurcated system of justice. We have a, a legislative uh, branch of our federal government that is out of control and non-functional unless it's uh, spending our money and, and wasting our money. And uh, we have an executive branch who I firmly believe is, is in place uh, illegitimately. And uh, we, we've got to wake people up and realize that if we don't keep our country like Ben Franklin said, then uh, we don't deserve it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna start picking apart that movie love, but one of the things I seen up there, did everyone see Chris Krebs? Said that was the safest election ever. Well, uh, let me tell you, about three or four months ago, we put it in, I think it was one of our absolute movies, 
He was on with Adam Schiff. I believe it was on MSMBN or MSNBC. One of the fact Facebook fact checkers can check that. Um, but they, um, when he when they interviewed him, remember this was like in March or something. Said, "What's the greatest threat to our country right now?" And Chris says, "Bar none, a cyber attack from China right down to the local races." I thought he copied the guy with a hand. I'm going, what, why didn't you bring this up in November, Chris? This is the great cover-up. And anybody that watched this movie, I'm talking to the journalists out there, the CNNs, the journalists, the people, not the not the not the, the Daily Beast and the Salon and the Business Insider. Did you guys watch that? You guys are living the American dream. We skipped right over right the right over your socialism to communism. It's here. And you guys are sitting there and you're part of this? Because what? Because you got it's a job and you can't. Uh, there are some journalists over there that want to report stuff, but they can't. I'm telling you, there was a New York Times and Washington Post did a big three hour interview with me to do an article. Both of them, they wouldn't let him run it because it was too good. And when it was too, too, too truthful. And that's sad. And that's what my appeal is, and we're going to hit the, we're going to hit because the media and the cover-up, and I'm talking about Facebook, you know, you work for Facebook, Lead Stories is here, you're the fact checker, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on all the journalists that are, you know, that are out there that, that are just sitting there going, you know what, it's my job. No, you're destroying it because you're, oh, this is okay. The Here we go. Oops, sorry. This is the cover up. You just seen everything in that thing. Actually, swoop that around. Oh yes. So a year of research, from 12, 15, all these guys, you know, full time. This is what these guys do. They did such a deep dive in a, and just went in and found all this out. You know, and it goes it goes deeper. You start talking. You know, when I spent my money on investigations, millions upon millions of dollars now the last months, seven months, it's like a blur. But all the money spent investigating, I would get so far and then I'd be attacked. They hire bots and trolls and they attack retailers and they attack this. These are enemy of the people. And the media, if they don't change, they're the enemy of the people. They are the enemy. They're the ones that stopped this and they changed the narrative. There's the truth just got put on there. That's why you've got to get that video out far and wide. This is disgusting what they're doing. These are these are guys that live the American dream. We're not talking about parties here either, everybody. We're talking about covering up for China, the greatest the greatest crime in history. They, you've seen in that movie. I caught that right away. It should be by th uh, 2035. Well, you know how you get it faster. You know how you take it faster. You take an election, because then you got everything. You can decide everything you want to do. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Take a shot, make you take a shot. They can make you do anything. You can, they're gonna make you do anything. And it starts, they took away, you take, the first thing they do, you take away our freedom of speech. That's what they almost won. They almost had it gone. You go back to January, January 9th, when I got there and started raising my hand. Everybody else was living in fear. Oh, we can't do this, Dominion will sue. We can't do this, you know, I gotta stay low. They're saying everybody's bad. Everybody's bad. You did this. You talk about you talk about the election, and you're taking away your livelihood on Vimeo and YouTube. This is it was all part of the attack, but it was all part of the cover up, and it starts with them guys right back there, the media. Yes, sir. The media. And you know what? I'm going to say it right now before we get into discussion. Shame on you, Fox. They're disgusting that they haven't talked about this election. At least we know where CNN and all these terrible outlets come from, but at least they attack. And then we can at least get the word out that, the, you know, you get the word out that at least, uh, hey, Dominion China took the country, is coming after us. And then they put all their bad stuff in there, which is, we've grown to say anything they say that you don't believe. Facebook fact checkers, they can put it up now that you know it's true. You know these stories put some over there. It's as true as, I, you can be, it's it. It's disgusting. The media, when we're going to all, every day up there, I'm going to tell you, we got three days we're going to be here. 
Every single story, I got five people, five companies just watching for some disinformation to come out there. So they're going to drop it, and we're going to stop the program and go right to calling them out. Because you guys are here, you're, and you're seeing it live. They can't do that. They sound bit me the other day. CNN did a hit job on me, eight and a half minutes. We, that was a two and a half hour interview, everybody. Two and a half hours I sat there. This was a week ago, because they, they hadn't called me in months. And they, and they never brought up absolute proof. They wanted to do a hit piece on me before we even got here to start brainwashing you, all of you out there. And I'm talking to people that are, you know, for me, my audience is everybody, especially a Democrat. They're everywhere, all people. Not the party, a Democrat, maybe even the party. Or you're working for someone. Why? Why would you let our country, why would you let this happen to our country? Why? A lot of you people that came here today are, are coming here for hit, hit jobs. Um, and uh, to come to attack, and you know what? When you attack today, just know when you attack the next three days, you're my, you're going to feel pretty bad because they, you are as guilty as anyone. The people that did this, every single one of you media outlets, every single one of you journalists, from Zach to Swin to all of them, I could go down the list. Shame on you, just because you're, you know, you could go ahead and be a Democrat or a liberal, but why are you trying to destroy our country? We have one, we have one enemy right now that took our election, China. Sure, they use people that were here. We'll melt down the machines and make bars out of them. Don't worry about that. Let's worry about this election, because if, the, if that election, right now you've seen on that movie, in 2035 they had planned. It's here in 2021. It's it. If we don't address that, everybody, you see that on the screen on that movie, everybody? That ain't going away. You can sit there. There's a lot of politicians here that came here, over 200 or their delegates. You can sit there and all the ones, all the ones that are out there that want to run for office, if this don't change, you ain't going to win. I was going to run for governor of Minnesota. What did I say after when this started happening in November? I said I wouldn't run to be a dog catcher if those machines are still here because I ain't going to win. All the money and resources we spend on elections in our country for our sacred election <coughs> on both sides campaigning and all the waste of money. And you know what you're going to see when we do this? Nobody's vote counted. It was all set ahead of time. Dr. Frank was going to show you that when he shows you the algorithms they used for the 2010 census report. This is proven even without the data I got over there that's running on the live stream from, from, 20, from the election night of November 3rd. All you, all you guys that are here, all you media, mo it was mostly a lot of bad media here. They're not even live streaming. I'm sure they're not live streaming it, but they're, gonna, they're, they're sitting here waiting for a hit job. That's all they're doing. And you, you know what? Don't be afraid to talk to them. If you know what? If they talk to you and they sound bite you, we're going to call them out. That's what they do at CNN. They sound bited me. If you all see, I'll see, right? If you all see the thing where it said, oh, how about a hug? I said to that Drew at CNN. You know what he said before that that's not on there? He said, he said, Mike, you know, you're going to do this. You're putting out um, conspiracy and you're, and you're going to lose, a, you know, aren't you worried you're going to lose your company and that your reputation? I go, where have you been for seven months? They've been attacking me. <laughs> what are you, you, you live in a cave or you're just, or you probably were watching Fox. They don't report nothing. I said the other day they should be a, they should be a, uh, a weather channel. Then the next day I changed my mind because they wouldn't report an oncoming storm. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. What he said, Laura, I don't know why he needs the Fox show behind the message. We have the bomb shells, but yeah, that's what Vincent's saying. He's saying, you know, this is autogriff, the blah, blah, that he shouldn't, you know, be doing the show. I don't know. That we're having this event. Wouldn't that be news? I've been getting attacked for nine, seven, nine months. And so a lot of other, other I try not to assume, you know, poorly of people. For American dream. Just to, to hold on to the hope. Just try to assume, you know, when in and doubt, just assume boomer. But boy, <laughs> she sure thinks this looks like more Arizona legitimate. Early, oh, thank you for the lemon, That's Leo disgusting. X White and D Live. Our, our whole media, you know, we've, I'll tell you what, everybody, and everybody watching in the world, we're going to have a surprise here. We're, we got a, another country coming in. 
and he's going to do a speech here. He's going to talk to you. They're very worried in their country of what you just seen in this movie in 2022, and it's Brazil. And I'll tell you, he's coming. He'll be here. And when he comes up, he's going to tell you all. And just take him. I've been getting calls from countries around the world. They're all afraid because if we don't, this is it. We're the last stand here. They take the U.S. and the lights go out here. They go out everywhere. Reagan said that. And when you take, and when you, every single country is watching. That's why by the time this over, we're going to have a billion people watching. Because what we have to show you, 7 o'clock tonight, noon tomorrow, you don't want to miss any of it. It's just about all the data you see rolling over there. We got way more than that. You know, apparently they didn't listen to you in November and December when everybody, 100%, you could ask anybody, and I have Democrat fans, well, of course they did, you know, the deviations, right? But who covered it up? The media. The media, Facebook, Twitter, and then they, instead they went into attack mode if you did try and say something. Then it went, they first you couldn't talk about machines, and then you couldn't talk about vaccines. Then you couldn't talk about the border. Then you couldn't talk about Jesus. This is where we're headed. And I'll say that now again, yeah, I see that. Um, the, uh, the video link, um, I, I gotta say, you guys, if you wanna share that video, you go to frankspeech.com. Everybody should be on there anyway. Uh, or lindelltv.com. They're asking where to find the link to that movie. You take it and you share it everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. We're gonna watch it again, we're gonna put it up again, we're gonna do it again. This video is so powerful because that's where we're going. And there's who's, who's behind it. It's just not up yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, but, it, but it will be up because you want to announce yeah, it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so you guys comments on the... Uh, the, the I, I, I think um, you, you brought up the idea of the red team. Can you, especially since this is a cyber conference, what is the significance of the red team? It's, it's important. It's an important uh, thing to bring out. Yeah. And so red team is uh, in, in the military. A red team is a, a tool for the commander to look at a situation from the perspective of the enemy. Uh, so um, several weeks ago, uh, Mike asked us to put together a, a red team and begin to, to start looking at some of the information and collating the information, actually tying it to other We're things. We're talking about the electronic know. information that we're be distributing. Correct, the electronic, the electronic yes. information. So uh, we, we pulled together a, a small team, lots of different skill sets, uh, mostly military folks who have been in the uh, electronic attack uh, business, the, the cyber business, some security folks, some civilian uh, folks who've got a lot of uh, information systems experience, experience coders, and Hair so flat today. It's killing me. More volume. Exploit, analyze the, a lot of the, the information, and uh, tie that back together to known points. You know how, how does this correlate to what we already know? The, the, the uh, Edison Research JSON data, uh, information from the Antrim County, Michigan, uh, uh, forensic analysis. Uh, hopefully soon with the Arizona uh, forensic analysis and, and there's several other uh, forensic analysis who've gone on around the country. Some of them are still uh, maintained under a uh, court protective order, but all of those things uh, moving forward it, to, to correlate to what happens in the real world in your state. And that's that's what uh, we began to pull this team together and start uh, analyzing the, the, the data set, correlating it, and making it useful for Actions in, in states and counties, legal actions, uh, uh, you know, attorneys general to, to use for law enforcement in their states, and that's really the, the goal of this team that's put together. So we look critically at the data to try to poke holes in it, to try to prove, disprove, uh, validate, invalidate, and. Um, Bill, can, can you talk to us about? I want to talk about China. And I mean, you guys have seen this trail from Soros, all the stuff they did up there, and all the companies that are involved. That was amazing. I love this list of how you got to wonder. Everyone listed up there, they, they don't care about our country, the American dream. It just blows my mind. These companies that were part of it, and people behind it, and the 
money. You ever everyone heard the, the George Soros rip? Did everyone see up there? Well, really, with that gal arguing with, uh, was it, uh, uh, Newt. Yeah. Did you guys see that? You bring up his name, what do they do? Go pull the pin. You know, it's good talking. What do you mean we're not going to talk about him? Who does the journalists out there think that who they, we can talk about? What about our free speech? That's why they take that first, everybody. That's why they take that first. I mean, what do you think of that? Well, I'm a former prosecutor, and I've never seen evidence to this degree. I've prosecuted thousands of cases. And I'm telling you right now, they've got the goods. I admire Mr. Lindell's heart, his courage, his fearlessness. My profession has been destroyed. I'm sorry, I'm a lawyer. But when I hear about real-time lawsuits being filed even this morning. Add me to the list. I know defamation law. I know evidence. I like trials. So add me to the list. We need more of our lawyers to stand up, stand for something. This evidence is conclusive. I've never had a case with this kind of evidence, ever. If we could just get through these gatekeepers, Get through the media. media, the media, the media. Let us present All the case. Today, that's why everybody that's uh, that's coming in right now, that's why we were delayed starting this morning. We had an attack of epic proportion. They attacked, I had backup to backup to backup. And they attacked it so they wouldn't get out there. I want to tell you, you talk about lawyers. I'll remember when uh, when my pillow turned her back around and we sued Dominion. For a uh, for a free speech, when, and Alan Dershowitz was on, he was on my on that lawsuit with me, and he said, "Mike, this will be the most important case in history for our First Amendment right to free speech." And let me tell you what he meant by that. And by the way, when our lawyers filed that in Minneapolis, the lawyer that filed it, they fired him. They fired him that morning. He had to go. Done. And they had already proved it. He said, "Oh, he didn't ask the higher up to take the case." You didn't hear about that, though, did you? No, they did, because my terrible paper in Minneapolis, Minneapolis Star Tribune. By the way, we're going to have elections. We're going to have mock elections in here, and we're going to have, you know, who's who's the worst paper in the country? You all get to vote on. Who's the worst news out in the country? Who's attacked? Who's attacked more than anyone in the country? Who's worse, Twitter or Facebook? We're going to do this because we're going to show you how voting machines work. And we're going to show you how routers work. And we're going to show you how packet captures are captured in routers. We're going to show you in real time what they look like. And then you're going to know why they're holding back the routers in Arizona. It's disgusting how deep this goes. And then one says, well, Mike, why didn't you get the, the media the other day with their attack? And you go, why didn't you get the word? Why didn't you come out with this evidence sooner? Where have you been? I've been trying for five months, but I wanted to make sure the stuff was written the way it was. It was just a buildup for this. Because everybody, everybody out there, even you know, all your media of the world, they knew I had something because I just, uh, you know, didn't shut up. Jimmy Kimmel goes, of all the people, all these experts and, you know, Chris Grubbs and all these people, and, and Bill Barr says it was a good election. Uh, you give me a break. They go, why? And he goes, why would a pillow guy end up with this? That's what Jimmy Kimmel said. He said, I don't know, because I got the biggest mouth. You know, I don't know. They gave it to me. On January 9th, by January 9th, everybody, nobody was talking. And I was brought something that would, that explained things. It explained things. One of the things it explained, I couldn't figure out, and I'm going to get into this a lot later when Dr. Frank talks, but I looked at deviations. This is what I do math every, every day. I look at deviations. I took calculus in the eighth grade. Yeah, everybody, CNN's going to look up. Everybody dropped out of college in one month. It's true, CNN. You know, no. So, okay, so, so what, um, okay, um, no, I don't, um, so anyway, what I was saying there is they, um, I look at the deviation, I just want to tell you one, and, and this will be a prelude that you can look forward to, as we go through every state, I couldn't explain like Nevada, all the, all these non-residents that voted, and I go, people are good people, how can, let's say it was 20,000. You have to live there for a month. 20,000. I go, nobody went and committed a crime. I go, this had to be done by a computer or something. Well, it was. 
And that's when on January 9th, I got something that anybody, anybody, when Jimmy Kimmel said, Mike, would you do it if it had been reversed? I said, of course. I said, our American dream is gone. It doesn't matter who's in the office if they, if they pick our winner like China did. And, they, and I, I like to bring up with the, uh, with the lawyers, um, you know, isn't it disgusting that, that lawyers either lived in fear? Or what, how do you explain that? What do you think happened? Well, one of the things that comes to mind is just how Soros and his cronies have gained the system. They've got a game theory. They know who to go after in which counties and which states. And so this is a pervasive, pervasive threat. This is an information So what we've done is we try to take the fight from the court of law because it's broken to the court of public opinion. And that's what we're doing. And you have to understand that just like in my trials when we had bought and paid for experts on the other side, over here with your mainstream media outlets, you have bought and paid for experts. Speak of the devil, I think I saw Harry Hursty here earlier this morning as an example of that. We're going to get the truth out. So the profession, this is a we the people do. Boom. This is a we the people do. The lawyers aren't going to save us. We need you all. I wish I could give you more sunshine about lawyers saving us, but what we've seen are doors that have closed. The rules of evidence haven't been followed. We haven't had evidentiary hearings. We basically had any case. I'm Professor David Clements. So for Dominion folks, if you want to file a lawsuit, David Clements, <laughs> New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. and, and how about, I want to ask, you know, because I think, how about the judges? You know, the one thing that was in was all, I really believe that the judges that were put in, you know, one thing Donald Trump had put in so many judges and then the Supreme Court judge, justices. And I really believe when we get past this now, and, and to break through the media wall, the block, the absolute cover-up that, that they have done. I believe we get through that. All those judges out there, because we are, what you said before, we are one nation and it's a lawful republic. you got to follow the laws, but you've got to go to the courts and then they're going to do, they got to be, I don't know that judges didn't look at stuff. I mean, that's such a... No, they, they, uh, they dismissed virtually 99.9% .9 of the cases on a legal doctrine known as standing, right. they didn't get to the merits. And what's troubling is when you have a president of the United States who's on the ballot, and he is told that he has no standing, communism is here. If you follow the precedents from Bush versus Gore, there's no reason why the president shouldn't have had standing. The fix was in. Can you see it? And they, uh, but we get through that once again, the media wall, big cover up shameful thing. Do you know when he said, if, you know, when he said, uh, when Alan Dershowitz said it'd be the most important case for our First Amendment right of free speech, I want to tell you what's going on right now in Washington, D.C. Dominion sued, they dumped it. by the way, they just added a couple more today in real time this morning because they knew they were, they knew Newsmax was going to be here in OAN and they sued him again this morning. I think that's two for <coughs> they sued them twice now. No, they're heroes, by the way, OAN. Uh, heroes. When ABC froze when but Mitch and George you, Soros law. Fox did that, ABC. too. I think that Fox well, clip was the most powerful, how Fox was just like, nope, nope. Ago, George Soros were ver verboten. They got Sidney Powell, I, I thought that was really uh, interesting. Rudy Giuliani. And we all got out there in, in front of that uh, federal courtroom. And I was the only one outside. All the media was there, all the news media. And I went up there, of course, that's what I do. And uh, I'm sitting there, and Fox was there, and all this other media was there. And I go, and I'm telling them about this symposium. They're going, Mike, your lawsuit. I said, don't you get it? That's called lawfare. This is what, this is what Alan told me. He said it hasn't been used in our country since 1798. And they put that back then. I think they did something against newspapers. There were probably a lot more than just suing them, right? So they would, you know, kind of like old mafia days, right? Racketeering. You know, you're going to, you do this or else. Well, that's what they did. The Dominion, smart mag. They come in, and instead of doing that, they sue people or threatening to sue. So you take a whole me. It's never happened before. It's disgusting what they did. 
and I'm going, and you're going. I kept saying on TV, I'm going, gee, why, if, I, if everyone said there were rocks and knives in my pillows, what would I do? I'd bring them to my uh, factory and say, look inside, it's beautiful, patented Phil. And they don't do it, because there's rocks and knives in their machines, everybody. What do you, I mean, it's, it doesn't take when you get, not, not 50, not 100, but 200. But let me tell you what that judge did when we went in there. And this is what he's sitting on right now. If anybody knows, if you're watching, that judge is making the most important decision I could ever think of right now of that's made out there. Because if he rules that those cases move forward, the dominion that those cases move forward, if that happens, let me tell you, you can tell what the floodgates had open. When I could go on TV and say Mark Zuckerberg did this and I could get sued, or I say, um, you know, I don't like, uh, it's my opinion, right? So it's a weird voice of free speech. You know how many people are going to talk? Nobody. Nobody. It's over. It's over. Then they can do their hit jobs, and you can't even talk back because they have more money, and they're going to sue you, and it's done. Am I right? Yeah, those are known as slapsuits, strategic litigation against public participation. This case against Mike Lindell and City Powell, it'll never see the light of day in trial because they know they will lose. This is to bury them with discovery, is to get a gag order. I'm surprised they haven't tried to get that yet. But this is to silence people, hope that the enemy wins in two years, three years, as long as it takes to tie them up in the court system. They're going to hope you forget. That's the tactic. So you need to get yourself real trial attorneys that are ready to fight back that love this, because I'm waiting for the day when we can stop with this gamesmanship to the media. Well, this is, here's, the, here's the news for Dominion today. And I've been telling everyone, they go, Mike, what are you going to do about that lawsuit? My own in-house lawyers at my pillow. I go, don't you get it? This ain't going to be, this ain't about the money. These guys, it's just what he said. They're pushing it out two years so we forget about the 2020 election. They don't care about the billions of dollars. That's just, they put a big price tag up there to scare, scare people. The first one against someone was in, started in Colorado. I think it was November 9th. They started there. They didn't let up. They got a team of lawyers. This guy said something. He, you know, okay, we'll let that slide. Bam. You think they didn't sue Newsmax and OAN just this morning because they knew they were going to be here? And then they got our power thing shut off. They shut it off so they, this wouldn't have existed. Then your CNNs and all your all your left-wing media that are ruining our country, the cover-up, they could have did their reports. I could already see the headline. Frank speech. 25 people showed up. They couldn't even get their technology, couldn't even get their microphones to work. And guess what? Only Anna Newsmax got sued for even thinking about hearing it. That's what was going to happen if we didn't have backup to backup to backup today. That, it, you think about that. I had four backups. We got on the fourth one. So everybody around the world, you need to know we got to go through this. And this is this is a big thing with the law, with the lawyer thing. And all your lawyers out there and, and the judges. But this is a good point right here on this one point. We cannot live in fear anymore. Do you know, let me tell you, you can't. I'm going to tell you about, about here, where we're at today in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. When we had this year, they were, they were, there was a tax just right out of the gate, bots and trolls. They attacked. They attack the venue stuff, you know, they attack the media here, they're going, we can't have it. Mike Liddell's going to have something in our town. Mike Liddell's going to have something in our town. And they almost backed out. I talked to a person, I won't name his name, and I go, you know what? I go, it, it's like saving money for a rainy day. I said, the Patriot for us to stand up, it's pouring right now. It's it. There is no time in history if you can't sit back and go, Oh, I don't want to be a part of that. What do they try and do out there this last two weeks? They tried to make it like it's some, like we're trying to overthrow, trying to overthrow the government. Mike Lindell's the number one threat to the country. Did everybody read that article? The number one threat. I sell pillows. They sleep good. <laughs> no, give me a break. <laughs> That's what I do. I, I, you know, I didn't just, I, let me tell you something. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, you know, the story is for me, everybody, I, you know, I, I was an ex-crack addict. 
I didn't know, I didn't think politics affected anything we did. I really did. I come out of, I come out of crack addiction. God freed me on January 16, 2009. I come out, I wake up in the morning, I go, what did I miss? All the stuff that was going on, I could not believe it, you know? And then I ended up meeting Donald Trump in, in the summer of 2016. He reached out to me, this crack addict, ex-crack addict from Minnesota, to talk about, it was just him and I in the meeting, we talked about, I, first thing he said, he says, you always wear your cross, Mike, are you a Christian? I say, yes, Mr. Trump, this is a divine appointment. But one of the things in that room we talked about, he says, you make all your stuff here. He says, he goes, I want to bring the manufacturer for the entrepreneur in this country. And all the decisions that from that meeting, that, or, you know, that he told me, I'm going, I want to tell you, he's going to be the greatest president ever. You know, I didn't know him. I didn't know anything about politics. But I did see in December of 2019, everybody go, eat to your happy place, right? Do you know how everybody felt in this country? I don't care if you were a Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, blah, blah, blah. Your lives that went up a little bit. You know, and some a lot. Entrepreneurs, it was the biggest consumer confidence. Entrepreneurs were taking chances again. They were taking chances because they didn't, but they weren't in fear. Everything was going on the uptrend. You know, you had secure, everything was secure. Our country was secure. These things manifested from political decisions. I realized at that, you know, at that point, I got thrown into it going, politics affects everything we do. Everything. Every single thing you do, they can make you do anything, make laws, especially if you don't have a republic, a, de a democracy, if you don't live in the Constitution. But they affect everything. They can make, they can, you can, we, we're living it now. But you had two, Jan December of 2019, everybody can bring yourself back there, and then all of a sudden, boom! Flip of where we're at now. Who would have thought we'd be here? But I will tell you this, the stuff we're going to talk about, by the time we're through with these three days, there isn't one person on the planet that's going to go, we were attacked we're to by China. And it don't matter. The Democrats warned us of these machines, and nobody listened. And then and then every single person is going to go, wow, we got to do something. Because it's scary. It's scary. We've all seen it on that movie, and um, they've taken everything. And so this is this is the time for, to not be in fear, ever. If everybody, if everybody, when you talk about the lawyers, then that's just one segment where you know they don't want to touch it. It's bad enough journalism. You know they're the start. Terrible journalists. But then when you've got people that don't want to stand up. I don't want to be the one that doesn't wear my mask if I don't, you know. I don't want to be the one in New York City that they, uh, if I don't have a vaccine, I have to check people and you can't come in and eat. Do you know that there's like, I think it's like 30 some percent of, of blacks and like 30 some percent of, um, I think, uh, Hispanic, haven't got the vaccine in New York, so they're, those restaurants, they can't eat. They're making them so they can't eat. This is crazy, isn't it? I mean, that's, I, and we're going to just go, okay, follow sheep over a bridge. This is, you know, it can't happen. And you know what? We're going to make that decision a lot easier for everybody by the third day of this. You're all going to go, hey, we're all in this together, Democrat, Republican, because we are one nation under God. Amen. Pat, I don't want you to say we're coming on there. I well, appreciate it, Mike. Uh, for, uh, my name's Patrick Colbeck, for those of you who don't know, I'm from Michigan, and Mike, you hit something really uh, important. That, that word was fear. And it's talking about how we're approaching having civil dialogue about things that are uncomfortable nowadays. And I just want to highlight that, Mike, you could have hired a, a spin machine to go off and, and look at the uh, what was going on with the evidence that's going on. Instead, you hired a red team, all right? And you invited cynics and skeptics of all shapes and sizes to come out to this event today after putting out a $5 million bounty. That's what happens when you're not living in fear. That's what happens when you're going to go off and encourage people to go back into that civil dialogue. Now, you've heard a lot about Mike talking about the media. Why is that? Why is the focus on that? Because we have lost the ability to have a civil discourse about something... Right, I'm going to use the restroom again. ...which the integrity of our election. And we can't even talk about it anymore. So that's why you have to have an event like this to go off and get the word out, because that's the only way you're going to get a blip on the radar to discuss this. 
That's why we went out to Antrim County not too long ago. And we said, you know, the only way we're going to get people to listen is to get 2,000 people out in the middle of an orchard to talk about election fraud. That's why I put frankspeech.com up. When I put that up, I spent millions and did something that couldn't be done. And just uh, these guys pulled this off. And when we did absolute interference, and we put things in place. Look at how hard they broke this this morning. But you know what? It's just a platform to get it out to the world. We have one of our, our audiences out there as we've been going through the weeks here in Australia. They are so worried in Australia. They're so worried in Italy. They're so worried in Brazil. They're worried around the world. Why? Because their elections are going to be stolen just like our, ours is. But we caught them, everybody. Do you realize we're in the glorious time in history? Because we're the ones that caught it. Look what happened. If this would have happened in December, and they would have been put in, and Donald Trump would have been put in on December 14th, we would have never known about the machines and about this attack by China. They'd have just done a better bet next time. It's a miracle that didn't happen. You know what? I want to tell you, as we're on the, I want to tell you, before the runoff in, in Georgia, I prayed on January. Oh, Kirby Gaspard is not impressed with the information being provided here. Just entered. Did he prove anything yet? Today's the day, right? Why would you do that? Yeah, I don't know if he's proved anything. He's done like a few kind of, um, I guess, kind of shows about, you know, China and stuff and George Soros. But I don't know if I've seen like much actually here. Yeah. But what happened when they took them both? I don't know how long like it's gonna green, last. Green I think it might be a multi-day thing too, so we'll see. Here. Everybody's heart sucking go, what? And we thought that was just Democrat. We didn't realize that was China. It's scary. But that's what happened. But that's a miracle. Remember, God set his hand in all of this, and they uh and these things we're gonna look back. We're going to look back at each thing and go, wow, if that hadn't happened, if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here when we get to that Shit. great place. And um, so it, it is the fear. You can't live in fear. Exactly. I, I want everybody to come into this event, and I think everybody here believes the same thing. Be skeptical, all right? We appreciate if you don't go cynical first. And <laughs> we'd like you to start at skeptical. But look at the data you're going to be getting here. What we're doing, I mean, when we first started this, I mean, actually, Colonel Walker, I think it was like two weeks Going to be getting, so it sounds uh, like we they're saying they're going to present more, I guess, operation. information. Just start throwing mud up against the Soon. wall. See what, what evidence fits into what slots in regards to how we believe this election uh, was messed with. And some stuff bears fruit, some stuff doesn't bear fruit, but the key is we're having that discussion. Um, we need to keep having that discussion. So please ask the questions, ask the tough questions. Um, and keep moving down the road because I'll tell you, I started out big time skeptic. I started out skeptic when I heard that Joe Biden got 81 million record votes uh, while campaigning for the basement, right? I'm definitely a skeptic of that. I'm skeptical when they say that there's no internet connection, right? Because I actually saw it. I traced the, the, uh, the Cat 5 cables underneath the uh, tables between the tabulators and adjudicators in Detroit at the TCS Center. So I'm a little bit skeptical that it wasn't connected to the internet. I'm skeptical whenever I see a spreadsheet. I want to go off and look into it, break out the numbers, because I'm an engineer. That's what we like to do. So I'm skeptical of all this stuff. But you know what? We have to have that dialogue. That's why we're here today, and that's why the media concerns that we have are so important. I'd add one thing. You need to think of yourselves as jurors. You're jurors in this room. For the folks that are watching online, the streams, you're jurors. So this is a presentation of evidence common sense. There's certain things that are going to jump out to you and the things that don't make sense aren't going to be true. The things that do make sense will be. You have the right to inquiry. You have the right to ask questions. And something's happened over the past 9, 10, 11 months where your thinking has been supplied for you by some expert talking head. They're so afraid of you asking questions and doing what we're doing right now and that fear has manifested itself this morning to try to derail this event. I got news for you. It's not. Professor, can I ask a, can I ask a question, Professor? It seems like the, the biggest um, objection from the electronic voting systems are the protection of their intellectual property. How common is it, in your experience, that 
intellectual property lawsuits, are, they, they look at computer code. They look at, is this, is this copied code? Is this a violation of Microsoft's intellectual property or some other company's electronic? Is, is that a valid argument in your legal experience? Is there a way to handle that information so that great question, people can look at it and determine, oh, it's easy. What you do is you get an in-camera hearing from the judge. The attorneys come there, it's on the record, and you can verify whether or not there's some evidence that suggests that there's fraud. Because if there was fraud, you can't hide behind IP law, right? If, if your fraud is part of the scheme and the cover-up, how is it fair to say, hey, sorry, you can't get to us. We've got a patent. We don't want you to know how we're perpetuating our fraud against you. Isn't that convenient? So there are ways to do that. You can take your argument to a judge. You can protect the secrets. And if anything were to happen, the attorneys would be severely sanctioned. So I, I don't know why that hasn't happened, but it, it's, it's something that I've seen hundreds of times. One of the things that I, I've been going around the country for months is talking to groups. I've had several of you there. And everybody always asks me at the end, they say, who are the they? Who are the they? You know, they do this, and they do this, and they've hacked the election. Well, you've been investigating that pretty aggressively for some amount of time. And it seemed like in your video, you, you specifically said left-wing activists and business types. Are they the they? And can you elaborate on that a little bit? I think just from observables, uh, we saw Zuckerberg specifically putting money in heavily democratic areas. I mean, so that's a business type. That, that's a business type, correct. I got I gotta interrupt here. Um, he just told me uh, Como had a press conference and he's resigning in two weeks. Wow, this is breaking news. But, but let's, 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 let's call that for what it is. I mean, you know, that maybe people stood up for the things that they were gonna do to small businesses with those vaccines, you know. And, the, but we can't let that be the whole news of the day because what you're seeing here in these next three days is gonna save the country. This isn't, what I wanna say is, by the time you watch these three days, there ain't gonna be any fear because everybody will be on the same page. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican. We, we, we are all people. And then just because the Democratic Party got picked for this because they, and they warned us. Remember, I gotta keep telling you that. They're the ones that warned us. You know, they, they warned us. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't do anything. And then it's kind of funny because people have asked me, well, Mike, why didn't the government then capture the internet, capture the packets through the internet? Why didn't they do that? Well, they said they weren't online, so I'll give them a break. Why would you buy flood insurance if there's no rain? That's what, you know, so I'll, I'll just give them a little out there, right? To, to, back to, the day. to, to continue the day, um, up, up in the video, we collected 210 or so uh, nonprofit organizations that are directly linked. And it's the Tides Foundation, the, the, uh, the, the Ford Foundation, uh, Open Societies Foundation, Organizing for America, uh, Act Blue, Media Matters, all of those organizations who have a, uh, I call them, uh, we, we, we termed it the, you know, the Sorosian Alinsky Marxist, that Marxist worldview that um, is seeking to destroy the middle class, destroy small business, and destroy the ability to make decisions and, and earn a living to, to make America a better place. Um, I believe that you know, Soros and, and the Open Society Foundation, they truly want a global order. They, uh, they want to eliminate the, the middle class or the elite class. So they're really going to be like China. Look at China right now if you want to see where they want to go. They want a super elite class of the billionaires club and the Politburo or the party, and then the workers to support that, those super elites. And that's really what uh, they, I believe that they're, they're trying to achieve, uh, shutting down, lockdowns, really cripple small businesses, people that uh, employ the great majority of, of Americans. And if you don't have a job because the company, the small business that you work for uh, is out of business, then you're forced to take the government hand out. And it's, it's, it, it may be like an addiction. I don't know, but it, 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 it's, it's that. Yeah, no, and uh, I want to tell you about this one. When I 
I'm seeing now, there's, you know, you have 30 some percent of Democrats and it's almost 100 percent of Republicans believe this election was happening. But I'll tell you why. What they're doing, what they did, just think of this. When a political decision, like Donald Trump <coughs> made all those decisions for December 19th, now I tell my, all my friends that are, this is what will open their eyes, even though the terrible media keeps brainwashing, keeps pumping this garbage down. But I'm, just think of Inauguration Day. That day, you, you get rid of 50,000 union jobs, 50,000, 13 of them at least have committed suicide. No, they were promised. They're up there working on that pipeline. They're, well, who did that help? Did it help Democrats? Did it help Republicans? Did it help any people? No, it helped somebody overseas. And, it, and it's not that gas price going up. It affects everything right now. you got a small business in this country. The price of rice went up, I'll tell you, on everything. Because everybody's paying for not just the 2000 some dollars worth of gas per person, but everything you buy. It's, it's just, it's, there's no, just like I said, there's no, they're destroying it and destroying it and destroying it. When you see decisions like you open up a border, that's why I want people, I'm really talking to Democrats or liberals out there. But does it, if it doesn't make sense, there's another agenda. If it doesn't help <coughs> either party or either side, there's another agenda. What did that help at the border? I deal with my Lindell Recovery Network. By the way, it's a platform. If you got addiction out there, Go to LindellRecoveryNetwork.org. It's free. It's free. I put millions into it. It's free. I give it away. Because people are hurting right now with what's went on. One out of four of our youth have thought of suicide the last year and a half. One out of four. So if you have anybody you know that are sending them there, it's free. But I want to say, what sense you open up the border you know, and you can go right down the list. How did that make sense? Fentanyl, more people dying, human trafficking. Um, you see, we're supposed to be in the middle of a China virus. Um, bringing, come on in, bring a new one in. It's crazy. It didn't help anyone. If it wasn't broke, if you didn't, if it wasn't broke, why did you try and destroy it? You got to look at that. And that's a deviation. That's a deviation. Even if you're a Democrat over here, you're going, why? Why they do that? You know, Mike's speech is always over here because what they've done, the narrative when they've controlled the media, we're going to keep going back to the media all three days because the win here is to give, but we're going to give you that information out on the big platform, the prankspeech.com. It's built. It goes around the world. I want a billion viewers. And it's not, it's because if we don't have our voice, I want everybody again, in November and December, in January, the, do you know the evidence that had 50,000, the evidence is, I mean, you know, the evidence for all of them, for your Sydney Powell's, your Rudy's, for all of us, we're watching the evidence pile up here. I mean, you could have convicted the whole country with just taking one sliver for each thing. And why did that, why did they not convict? Or I mean, why did they not, why did we not, nobody did anything? Because of the media. They control it. They, it's the biggest cover-up and scam in history. And you know, like behind every one of those pieces of evidence, there's a human story behind yeah. each and every one right. of them. There are people that put their lives, their careers out on the line to do this sworn testimony. We had people crying before the testimony before the Michigan House, worried about what it would be, what it would uh, result in, just not just to their family, uh, not just to them, but to their their family and their kids. I mean, we had. We had uh, Wayne County Board of Canvassers, docs during their meeting, telling everybody where their daughter went to school so that they she could be hassled there. We have devolved into a point where stuff goes back to that fear thing. Are we gonna, you know, a lot of people gave a heck of a lot more for the rights that we enjoy here than just yeah. being called names or being uh, um, lambasted they on the media. They fought for this country. They fought for this great so country. now it's time for the We're in a facility yeah. with the, all these great veterans. No. Right. That's where we this, are right you now. Know, this Alliance Center, I mean, the people that fought for our country, and what is the media doing? You know, I mean, you think, why we are journalists for them? Why would you, you know, destroy our American dream? What are they going to do? Wouldn't it be sad one day that they wake up and go, gee, I wish I had a second chance. Well, you know, one of those There's rights no is, second chance. One of those rights is freedom of the press. And we've already seen how they've taken out reporters, like Cheryl Atkinson. Right. And what they've right. done to actually... 
use some of the same technology we're talking about in elections to go off and spy on actual reporters. Guys, this is not America. This is more like the And, they, and those are hired people. groups. You guys got to realize this isn't a massive, all the, you know, one party just is out there doing all this. No, you just see the movie. We've been invaded. We've been invaded. We skip right up. You go to our colleges and they go, they, you know, teaching this socialism. They think socialism is having a cup of coffee with their friend. But now they're learning real fast because we skip right over socialism and communism. It's here now. They actually probably did it too fast, everybody. If I was a marketer for them, once again, I would have told them on, on, on inauguration day, I would have said, I would have gotten a room and said, okay, nobody's going to do anything bad till they shut up. We'd have opened up the states. They could have opened up the states and, you know, made everything good. And everyone would have said, wow, that's, they're doing great, right? And then, and then all of a sudden they could have crushed us. But once again, they got greedy. And right now we're in a race. Do you know how much damage they've done already? Just think of it. The damage they've done in this country in these short months. That's why, I, no matter what, I had to get this up now because the whole world's got to know. So you, so every when we get done with this, when you heard me say, "Hey, we're going to bring it to the Supreme Court and it'll be 9-0, They, those got those nine people, those nine justices. They are, they are, they live the American dream. They have families, they have grandchildren, they have children, they have neighbors, they have friends. They're here to protect our country. You know, anybody that knows them, you watch this movie, have them watch this whole thing. They should be calling them out, going, hurry, 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 get here. Seriously. And they, and you know, all of them, and everyone says, well, here's another marketing thing. Here's how they screwed up too. You know, when it was seven to two, when they voted that they wouldn't even accept it, right? Constitution, they were supposed to see. Kirby says a little long winded. I'll have to check back with you in a bit. All right, I'll see you then, Kirby. Colin, unless you're a cyber forensic specialist looking at the 37 terabytes, you won't find that out for days. Isn't that just cast? Isn't that what all those people behind him are? The cyber experts? Yeah, I thought this was like a panel of experts or something. Call says, wait for the experts, it's going to take days to go through the data. Did not know John Cena. Oh yeah, John Cena and LeBron James being CCP puppets. Well, I mean, it's all about entertainment, you know, because China being such a big population and having like, I don't know, so much control economically. It's like, yeah. Mike's people have seen the data. It's the guests and their experts who are just seeing the data. I, look, I am looking forward to hearing what the fake book Mike has said. Yeah, and I don't know, like, how... This is about your country. Don't you care? You're not going to have a job. You're not going to have a job. You know, who are you going to... Like, are they releasing the data, like, on his website or something so that everyone can look for it? I don't even know, like, how I would, like, evaluate something like that. Great President Donald Trump. You shut him off so you know so you didn't have him to attack. You know what? You know why I didn't put ads on? Uh, you know I put the Frank, the Frank speech ad up for this event. I went to put it up on Fox. They were the only one that denied it in the country. Shame on them. You know, trying not to talk. But let me tell you, I didn't put it on CNN, and MSNBC because it's all relevant. How much you pay? How much you pay? They don't have an audience. They're losing that because we're tired of their disinformation and their lies and their. And what's going on? They're, they're part of this destruction of our country. And, I, and I'm going, this ain't a party thing of who, you know, I, this isn't about this. I told them, I'm going to tell it again. I told it probably by the, in the pre uh, thing we were doing, but we were waiting to get back online. Jimmy Kimmel, and, you know, everyone says, Mike, why did you go on Jimmy Kimmel? You know, you should do it, you shouldn't do it. I do, for one thing, I pray about things I do. And I'll tell you what. I, I, I went there because I went there and I and I'm going because I knew that the word would get out if they're not gonna if you're not if they're keeping me down not to talk about it at least if I got attacked it would get out but I walked in there and, and uh, Kendra and I were in the green room of California and I heard from the producer he had read my book and that made me feel pretty good you know I felt some confidence there because it's a story of the American dream. You know, going from a crack addict to sitting up here on the stage for the world, you can't make that up. That's all God. And the, uh, and, but I, but I went out and I 
on stage and I get out there and I'm telling you, Jimmy Kimmel was torn. He's doing that and he's doing that and we're going through it. He was torn. When we went to break, commercial, he said to me, we had this conversation. I said, Jimmy, I said, they attacked you last summer. Maybe it wasn't really, you did blackface in the 90s or something. And I said, they attacked you last summer. Based. They were going to wipe you out. I said, we have it in common. He looked at me and he said these words. Mike, the difference is I did something bad. All you did was back a man you believe in. And he said that. And we oh. had that conversation. At the end, it wasn't a fist bump. He shook my hand. And I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of respect for that man. And in that moment, because we talked about it, and we, one of the things was, we're not a divided country. We are not a divided country. That's the big lie. By the way, the big lie is the big lie. You come in here trying to tell us we're racist. We're not racist. Give me a break. You divide and conquer. That's what they're doing. They were not racist. We got you, Democrat people aren't against them or Republican people. We want to, we want officials that are elected for the people without party agendas and, and personal agendas. Isn't it funny how they're bubbling up? I could really go on, but I'm going to go on that later. My favorite people like Brian Kemp and Doug Ducey. We'll talk about that later. Disgusting. Hey, Mike, uh, you're bringing something up that's really, really critical to understand about information warfare. In information warfare, there's a principle of uh, information dominance. And in the U.S., there, you know, the, the progressive left, or however you want to phrase that, has achieved a, a position of information dominance. And what that allows is a narrative warfare, control the narrative and control the pace of the narrative so that it, it shuts down anything that's not what you know, the, the machine desires. That narrative warfare you saw up there when uh, Harp said, we don't want to talk about, we, we can't talk about George Soros. We shouldn't talk about George Soros. What, what uh, Senator Colbeck said, you know, if we don't have the ability to have that discourse, uh, about politics, about academics, about you know, the situation. Of, you know, just imagine if our founders didn't get it together and, and pound this out, this this marvelous thing we have, this republic. We wouldn't be here in this grand experiment that that is the United States, the United States of America. The information dominance and the control and the narrative warfare, the conditioning. Damn it, Pedro. Kids, you know, I have my. Uh, First, first grandson, and the, the phone, cell phones, that conditioning, that leash, that is a way to control information. If I had had that, if I had had that power in, a, in an iPhone or a Samsung or whatever you're looking at, as a psychological operations officer downrange, in the theater in Iraq or Afghanistan, wherever else, uh, that is such a powerful tool for influencing, for shaping. Really, what's happening with um, you know, with you look at the organizations we connect, key communicators across uh, you know, across the that progressive spectrum. And you see guys like Brian Stelter, CNN, and, and Media Matters. Those are organizations that are well founded. They go back to uh, 2000, far as back as 2010, that, that I'm aware of, with Eric Holder's uh, Justice Department using legal legal deferred adjudication to shift money from the U.S. Treasury to organizations that Congress had said the government will not fund, ACORN being one of them, all, all these things. So using the, the power, the, the, the unrestricted, unbridled power of the federal government and the endless stream of money that they pull out of your pocket and out of my pocket to fight the, their, their wars. It's, it's crazy, but again, they're using the power of the Department of Justice, the elements of government, to fight against the American people. And it, it's, it's very troubling that they use that to control the narrative so that people are, like Mike mentioned, afraid. They're afraid to stand up. They're afraid to say, like, something's not right here. And I may not, not know what it is, but something's not right. And that's, that's really where this discourse has to go uh, as far as bringing America back to our republic and back to the founding doctrine. Can you, can you expand a little bit on, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, what's that? I was just going to ask, we 
have to ask the question, why is it that we're losing the information? Right? Yeah. When, you, when you get into these circles, the greatest tool of mainstream media, the snake news, is platform suppression. That's their tool. Conservatives have substance. So we spend 98% of our time talking in terms of substance. When it comes to content distribution, we're not so good at that. We use 2% of our power. That's why we've got second tier freedom journalists, citizen journalists that are covering this event and none of the big, the big five. Now, the progressive Marxists is, is the exact opposite. They have no substance. They are all content, all distribution. So if we want to engage in this information war and do a better job, we need to have the infrastructure, the technology, we need to have containment, we need the right platforms where we're not shooting over, over our shoulders and retreat, where we can take a breath, start something like we're doing today without any problems, but the, the appeal to the conservative movement out there, the people that believe in truth, you got to stop imitating and being a copycat of the Marxist technology. Where are our opposites of Zuckerberg? Where are our opposites of Jack Dorsey? Where are our patriot entrepreneurs to help us fight this information war? Because unless we get a hold of content distribution, we're going to be in a, in a fallback position. So remember that, folks. We all agree on most of the We've got the substance. The other side doesn't. Patriot entrepreneurs are the targets. Yeah. Without them, the rest of the patients. Uh, one of the things that you brought up in here, is, and one of the things that I've been learned a lot, I mean, I'm a scientist, and you know, like this last year, I learned more politics than the whole rest of my life so fine. But I've, I've oh. interacted with a lot of military guys. Nick's black pillow in the pat in the in the chat. Like, it's like, like this. It's like we have some, some CCP pe uh, chills in the chat. And this really is a Bought now. China, China will not fight us force on force. They won't fight us where we are strong. Okay, why would they, why would they oppose? The Nick Gurix decided that uh, he's gonna he's gonna go out a blaze of glory. And this uh, what is it? This chat that five people are watching right now, gonna spend all his time typing out paragraphs. This is totally worth it. Hate <laughs> not Trump. <laughs> You know, I guess we all have different levels of, you know, time in our life and, you know, what kind of things are worth it to us. Don't sell I guess we'll see, uh, you know. To Don't sell these businesses. And they said, well, we got to you know, make, you know, make a living. I said, well, at what cost? At what cost? Is this to your family, to your heritage, to your country? Uh, don't let, you know, China back money invest into, into your business. Yeah, you need capital. But at what cost? They will think, and, and one, of the, one of the articles up there is that if you move business production to China, you have no intellectual property. The Chinese government owns it. This is, this is a, a vulnerability, and they, they, they've been doing this for years. They, they'll use this technique See. called box card. Uh, I, anybody, I hope no one has Express VPN on their phones. Uh, okay, might get sued, might get that. Um, it's a Chinese backed VPN, a virtual private network. So VPN just creates a tunnel information that you think is important and want to protect and it it hits it hits a boxcar when it gets to a junction and it starts filling that boxcar with with data and they'll sift through that data right with private information intellectual property business dealings and they'll use that information mm -hmm. even if it's encrypted and even if it's they don't have it quantum computing is coming sooner rather than you think in three to five years nothing that you do will be private unless we make some substantive changes in our Cybersecurity. Um, that's coming. Just be aware. That's coming. If you think you've got money in a bank that's protected for three to five years? You better think again. If you've got a, if you've got a company that's protecting some intellectual property, I mean, you, you really need to be thinking about this moving forward. But this is what they'll do. They'll pull all that information and they'll box cards. So even if they can't break the encryption now, they'll break it. They've got we call it apartment one. It is a huge, huge building in the PLA. Army, that all they do is hack, 
ring encryption and, and steal data. And China uses that. I mean, they've copied, I, think, I believe it was Boeing, the jet. They've got a commercial jet that basically they copied and stole from a U.S. Uh, US uh, airplane manufacturer. And they use that theft to leapfrog us in technology and whether they can maintain it or sustain it, where they have that entrepreneurial engine in their upper polypuro class. That remains to be seen, but they use it. They're, they're stealing America. They're stealing right. the Republic. Right, and with that said, I'm going to go through now uh, what we're all going to do. Uh, and then I'm going to go through right now. We're going to break out all the cyber forensic experts that are here. You're going to break out in four groups. But I'm going to tell you before you leave um, what we're doing today. So we're going to have the panel up here all day, everybody, all the way till 9 o'clock tonight. The sub coming at 7 o'clock, everybody, that uh, the whole world will not want to miss. Cyber, the cyber forensic guys, uh, you guys will go until 5 o'clock now in the breakout rooms. You're going to be, uh, if you see over here, live next to the stage there, the data uh, from the 2020 election, and you're going to be, you're going to be given up. Uh, Colonel Phil here is going to um, bring you around, to, and you're on your uh, cyber forensic <coughs> four different colors for breakout rooms and that was random you know just random and you guys can be in those rooms you're not you can Nick you're free to Gurek go says you know, don't forget to send more donations to Bannon to screw Bannon send donations to me get on D live and uh, send me donations you Nick you want to, to your, in those rooms I am fine. the queen grifter the here you, never forget going on. Right queen grifter here, bean wall, it's me by one o'clock there's gonna be set up a cyber center you're going to be able to put in any state, and it's going to show you what the big lie was, and then you're going to say, and then it's going to go what the truth was. And you're going to put in counties that are set up based on the data. What happened in six swing state counties? Okay, so I think I need to be here. You're going to go so Maricopa, get the pearls. County, right? You, know, um, you put Pink that in there, and that's going to come out. On the main <laughs> stage here, we're going to start a map. Um, and as soon as I, we just, the cyber guys go, I want to put a map up of what the big, what the big lie was that it ended. Do we have that map? It's the big lie that we're ended. Um, but then we're also going to have throughout the day, you guys. There's a mock election here. All of you can vote throughout the day. I'll let you know what time that first the first election starts. Pat's going to be running that election. You can come in. You vote. And what we're going to show, we're going to show you vote. We're going to, and uh, we, once we fill up the votes, let's say it's 20 to 10 or whatever it is. And we're going to do votes like Fox Hell against yeah. CNN, just so we have something to vote on, right? You know, who's the worst outlet in the country? Is it Fox or CNN? So, so <laughs> oh my gosh, like, like Mike Liddell so salty 10. about Fox. Okay, that Fox one, right? The worst, out, the worst company, or the worst news outlet. Now, I mean, they are terrible, hacker, but. Hacker, hack it, and flip it. Exactly, flip it, and they're going to do it. To, you know, there's routers, so they're, they're going to do it through. Uh, gonna, there's three points of contact and where they can attack. So, and, and Pat will Can't explain that sure. when you're, if you have any questions. But we hack it, and now boom! Now CNN's the worst one. They because you know they flipped it on Fox, right? Twenty to ten. We're not going to stop there. What we're going to do there then is go. Oh yeah, it comes out the other end. Yep, twenty to ten. Well, that's a real good demo, right? We all know that, uh, but the, the machines weren't supposed to be online. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the router and we're gonna have a cyber guy randomly pick. We're gonna come to you four rooms and you guys can, uh, whoever wants to be there, read that packet capture. We will go, we are gonna go random to four rooms and anyone will, you know, draw a name if they wanna do it. They're gonna bring him in. We're gonna put him in a, a room with no device they're going to sit in that room and, and uh, wait until we grab the packet capture from the router. It doesn't take long. So we pull this packet capture. Now, you and I won't be able to read it. These cyber guys would, probably. But we're going to pull, we're going to say, now we're all going to know how many votes were flipped, the exact time, everything. Now we're going to pull the cyber guy out of the soundproof booth. And say, here, read this packet capture out of the router. And he's going to take him about maybe three, five minutes. We've had a test it with a couple of them uh, to read it. And he's going to go, you flipped 20 votes from Fox to CNN, 20 votes at exactly this moment in time, and out of this computer and this IP address, and then you're going to all go, no wonder they don't want to give those routers up in Maricopa County. <laughs> OK? 
Okay, so that so right now, um, Colonel Bill's going to go with one of these. Uh, um, I think with Janet here, Colonel Bill's going to go with Janet. All you cyber guys, if you go, I think you go that way towards the front entrance, and you can go to each one of the breakout rooms. And um, and like I say, you can come out any time. That's just your room, so you can do have that. The data is going to be brought down to you. They're going to be going to be fed data through the through the internet. Right. Yeah. Can I um, yeah. quantify a little bit, Roy? Okay. All right. So that we we got a little bit of a peak data of a small, small, small slice. Uh, like nine, I think it was nine o'clock Saturday night. We, we had a, about a three-hour virtual look, and it's a, a unique data set, a unique file structure that's uh, uh, operating in, and uh, we got to see some of the extraction of the data. I'm not sure what you're going to see today, and uh, that's. Probably by design. Yeah, and, we're putting uh, we're in. You're gonna see. You're, we're gonna start with the tele, uh, the alligator's tail. <laughs> yeah. So just, you know, so we we've, we've seen enough that it's we've seen plausibility, but there's we haven't proved or disproven anything. Uh, red so team. And red team. yeah, yeah. Red team. and, uh, and so that's uh, that's where we are. Right. And I want to tell you on the screen. If you go to Frank's speech, everybody at home, on the screen. There's uh, there's data that's running there. What what do you call that data? That's uh, data that's been somewhat parsed. But, uh, but not, parsed. I think that's uh, that's a hex file. Yeah. Or, or binary. Yeah. yeah. So you're see. seeing that. So if you're at home and you're a cyber forensic expert at home, you can freeze that screen. Go to frankspeech.com. Go down to the third or fourth thing. We're gonna run <coughs> that for the month of August. We're gonna keep see. This is an information more. Things. The fact they so took down home, this electric. Election fraud video not wow, once but twice but three times. Why is it so damaging? So it plans to see in the reality that we live. It's all based on lies. Yeah, I mean, it's because they keep all they keep trying to say, oh, it's disinformation. That's why you have to take it down. But it's like you leave up all sorts of crazy. Like I get these ads for like these star seed things and like all this crazy stuff on YouTube all the time. But it's this that they're trying to take down. It is pretty skip, Jessica. It's very uh, suspicious. But this is what they want to crack down on. No, he is. He is. He's one of the smartest men in this country. He, I'm gonna, the story behind him is, I, I met him in a divine appointment, but the story goes, I met a gal in Pennsylvania and her election got stolen. It's Kathy Burnett. She was, uh, she had ran for uh, um, Congress and she, she was ahead that night. She was up by 70 percent, she went to bed. And she woke up and she lost. This woman almost went, I think she did go door to door. Did you vote for me? It's traditional 70%. Did you vote for me? I mean, she just dug in. I met her at a divine appointment at some, it was some rally. And <coughs> she, what she did, she had met Dr. Dr. Frank, and he had never been in election stuff. And he was a physicist from Ohio. So he goes over, and I didn't know this at the time, and he goes over to, uh, to help her. She goes, this doesn't make sense that these numbers, it was deviations Alrighty, beyond fine. belief. So we go to film absolute, um, I think it was absolute interference. And we're sitting in the studio. Now, I had never met him before. And I had all these information from around the country. Everybody pouring me stuff every single day. Thousands of stuff. Hey, I got evidence of this. I got evidence of this. But my focus was on the machines, the big steel. It was on this, you know, this big, there's no way that... There's no way that dead people voted and non-residents voted. I said, the non-residents alone, I'm going, that's impossible. That, that many people wouldn't commit a crime. It had to be done by computers, right? Or machines. So anyway, we go to film this, absolute interference, and Dr. Frank is sitting next to me, and he starts in, and he shows me this algorithm you're all going to see here based on the 2010 census report. And I stopped it at five minutes in, and I'm dropping it. I'm going, it's, it has, it's completely separate from the data you see over here, the, the captures of the data from the election, from, the, from the, uh, uh, the Internet. This stuff is based on, you can all see it at home. You can do it yourself. He's going to show you something that blew my mind, where I don't care, pick your state. You know, pick any state. 
What he did, he went over to Pennsylvania and he found out there was a pattern in the, and he remembered it from a class he was teaching. And, he, and this pattern was the same pattern in every county that the same percentage of 25-year-olds voted as 40-year-olds pick a number, uh, 30-year-olds, it didn't matter. And he go, and he went back over in the middle, he goes, well, it couldn't have happened. He goes, that's, that's impossible. Every county has the same exact pattern. This little thing here you're gonna see. But one of the interesting thing is, he went over to his home state, it couldn't have happened in Ohio. Donald Trump won Ohio. But it was 7% he won by, instead you're gonna see it was 15%. And it was every single county in Ohio he went through, and it was the same there. So when we did scientific proof, by the way, all you media out there, anyone watching in the world, go to frankspeech.com, watch scientific proof. This is completely separate. This is 100% evidence that it was done with an algorithm through machines. And it has nothing to do with capturing anything on the election. It's what they did. Which what you're gonna what you're gonna find here when in his in his demonstration, it explains so much. It explains like, gee, in my home state of Minnesota and Iowa and uh, uh, Nebraska and, and, and Colorado, there's there's counties there where more people that voted than live there. Well, you know why? Because in 2010, since then the population no, they moved to the city or they died. So you had you used voter rolls from the 2010 census report. We had one anomaly in Colorado we couldn't figure out because I was really into it. These deviations. One of them, it was a it was a in Colorado a county, and that county only half the people voted. It hadn't happened anywhere in the country. They had used the same algorithm, but this one half. What were they? You know, just didn't want to vote. It didn't make sense. What we found out since 2010, they built a prison there, and, and half the county was a prison. So I mean, you could, he's gonna show you, it's so interesting and it's so amazing and it explains so much because uh, you know, people that went out there, when you talk about these machines and what they use, those voter rolls, when you, you couldn't explain when people went to vote and they said, oh no, you've already voted. You know, how that happened, it was huge number. Or people went there and tried to find their vote after the fact said, you didn't vote. This wasn't people going out there and everybody going, hey, let's have 20,000 people from Nevada go out and vote even though we don't live there anymore. <coughs> it didn't make sense. No, people are good people. You don't, you're gonna have some bad eggs, but nobody did that. So what they did is they used the 2010, you're gonna see voter rolls, so those people don't live there anymore. We're, I'm gonna have a presentation just on Georgia what happened to Joe? Remember the call with the president, with Brad Rassenberger? Nick Gurick asked, why would Republicans the on these boards allow cheating? Absolutely. Well, that's because it's actually, you know, been shown Republicans make more money whenever they're losing because they have something to go out and talk against. They're saying, oh, these leftists are going to do this and they're taking over and blah, blah, blah. And that gets uh, right wing people more motivated and uh, donating and stuff. So it's actually Republicans make more money as losers than they do as winners. Because, well, you know, then once they're in power, because they're just like, okay, they got it. I don't need to worry about it. So that's what I've been told is, is you know, the motif of Republicans. I'm a libertarian, by the way. An anarchist, to be more precise. Well, when do we get the right numbers? You know, now to this day. What is Brad Rassenberger and Brian Kemp covering up? They don't have a party agenda, do they? They don't have a party agenda. Otherwise, they would have looked into their audits for their state. They would have stood behind the people and said, hey, let's check into this. So that only leaves one thing, a personal agenda. Oh, man, there's a whole fight a going on. Agenda. The swamp and runs you know deep. It's not a, a DVR election. $107 million yeah. worth of Dominion machines in 2019. You think you had a little personal agenda there, Brian? If you all remember, I got kicked out of the, Re the Republican Governor's Convention because Doug Ducey and Brian Kemp were afraid I would talk to him. I was invited there. Now we're going to talk about the, the terrible media. I was invited to that convention. Here's the real story behind it. I get oh, down there, oh I the real motive has been revealed. Nick Gurick is uh, displeased about this because apparently been he's been a, a poll worker. He was a poll worker in Ohio. So this is all uh, coming down and proving you're cheating. You've been caught, Nick. Me and Jessica are on to you. Yeah, Jessica says, oh, because, Nick, this is personal and about you. Yep, yep. And Brian Kemp is in charge of the election integrity of that committee. 
and it's disgusting. So I called up a bad media and I called up political. I called up political and I said, hey, you want to do this? Can you believe they kicked me out of the they kicked me out of the governor's association and I got my credentials. I wouldn't give them my credentials back, right? Because I knew they were going to put what they were going to pull. So Politico calls up the Governor's Association and they say, um, well, you've got to be a governor to be invited. In other words, I was a <coughs> betting crasher, right? Well, I, I called all the other media. Now get this, all the other media, I showed them. You'd think this would be a story. I called the bad media, the Daily Beast, the, all these places. I called them up and I showed them my credentials. I sent it to them. I was email invited and the credential to get into that mansion. And you know what? Now, once you think, then they called them up and they lied and said I was invited. But they see my credentials. Now, if you're a hit job media, once you go after the Republicans and say they kicked out Mike Lindell, he really did have credentials. But instead, instead, they attacked me. They buried it. You think about that. <clears throat> okay, I guess we have we got Temple of Artemis now. So we're live streaming now. So, do you want to talk? Well, I think we're going to, I think we're set up for a break, and then maybe we're going to talk a little bit right when we get back there. We're going to go into... No, we're not going on a break. Put up that movie again. We're on the movie. There's no breaks. We're streaming 70... <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> this never stops. <laughs> That's fine, but I ain't eating. I'm staying up here for 72 hours before they ruin our signal. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, that's some energy. I mean, say what you want about, you know, Lindell. If you're saying, oh, he's a grifter, oh, this is all BS. Like, I mean, that's some energy. It's very entertaining. I don't know about you, but I am entertained. And then when we come back from the movie, we're going to have Dr. Frank, or go, he's going to get out there and do his presentation. So is the movie going? You guys, this is a movie y'all heard about this morning. With this movie, everybody out there. I'm going to make three more units. I want you to go share it. You get on Frank's feet. Department of Defense, NASA, the U.S. National Laboratories, private investigations and cybersecurity companies, and legal. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are live in Sioux City. South Dakota for Mike Lindell's Cyber Symposium. We're going to get cut to this movie here in just a second. This aired <coughs> earlier uh, in today's broadcast. We want to thank everybody for watching us over the last, uh, really, two and a half hours. We've had some incredible uh, moments here. Of course, we got off a little late uh, from this due to a couple cyber attempts uh, to hack into the system here. Uh, that was successful. They had to go back to a fourth backup plan, and that's what ultimately has gotten this presentation um, underway. But we're glad you're joining us. Uh, they're taking a quick lunch break here, uh, where lunch, breakfast is served, lunch is served, uh, to all the attendees here uh, in this space. But we want to thank you for joining us. And if you've seen, I've been following us the last uh, two, three hours, you know what you've heard. And we are anticipating a major announcement coming up at seven o'clock from Mike Lindell and his security cyber team here. They have a breakout session as well where people are basically going around and going into these mock election areas that uh, are basically simulating an election and he's gonna prove just how easily it was to hack into the system. But before we get back to the movie on screen, I wanna remind everybody, you know, this is all possible because of you, because your generosity and your donations and your support for our friend Mike Lindell, of course, He's been on this ever since the election concluded. In early I'll be November, honest, the Step 6 is more entertaining than the conspiracy theory. Thank you. The yeah. So I'm actually having a really interesting game. I have a lot of room. Like at first I was like, oh, I don't have enough room. But now I'm actually looking at it. I'm spacing. I'm like, okay, this is this is a good amount of room. This might be a, a good game. I really need to get on making more uh, military units, though, because I think I might get attacked here soon. Your entire order. If that happens, I might rage. That right now we support Mike Lindell and all of his efforts. And of course, actually, maybe. He's go ahead funded all of the quick. investigations into election integrity. His company has been out of the line. He has been out of the line. He has faced lawsuits, uh, several lawsuits here in the last six months. It is time that we can support him and do it financially by buying some of his quality products there. So go to MyPillow.com or MyStore.com. We've got thousands of uh, products there to choose from. Always advocate putting an American flag in front of your home, your business, your apartment, wherever you live. i got one in front of my house. 
and I bought it from mystore.com. So go on Tony website, Rush says, okay, code, later, guys. Have a good one. Don't let them rot your brain. Well, okay. Have a good day, Tony. Your entire order. Now, as I pan the crowd here real quickly, you'll see there's various people here, uh, not just yes, Mike all, is on fire. let's just say, you know, pro-election integrity or people that are supporting uh, election in integrity. They've got some skeptics here, and that's what Mike Lindell wanted to do. He wanted to invite those that would be a little skeptical to yeah, from five million into dollars. the election Jeez. integrity conversation. So that's what he's invited here. He's got cyber experts that are going to actually look that, at some of his know? content and proof of what happened on November 3rd. He had a great film. I want to cut to this film right now, and if you missed any portion of today, you can oh go gosh. back and rewatch no this as our coverage started about 9 o'clock Central Time. Once again, 7 o'clock tonight, major announcement. Mike Lindell, let's turn it over to the movie. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. We brought in um, folks who, before our eyes, hacked election Workers were able Sorry. to easily hack into the electronic voting it's machine. It's a reflex. So switch votes. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able go to get more water. Machines Approaching and drink. Machines. Remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraud. Hackers, unfortunately, Dominion has recently been thrust into the national spotlight as part of a dangerous and reckless disinformation campaign aimed at sowing doubt and confusion over the 2020 presidential election. First, there were no switched or deleted votes involving Dominion machines. Dominion is not and has never been a front for communists. The company also does not have any ties to China whatsoever, including no ties including investment or source code transfer. Let me be clear. Voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning they, they are not connected to the internet. It sounds like some of these machines are showing the tabulators can and, and are connected to the internet. Um, throughout, you're gonna, particularly where a vote is cast uh, on election day, those machines tend to and should not be uh, connected to the internet, certainly as a best practice. But, but some have the capability, don't they? Uh, some may have uh, modems uh, that are typically uh, disabled, but in certain states, I believe in Wisconsin, some are temporarily activated to transmit, uh, transmit some counts. But, the, but those tabulators are connected on election day because that's how they transmit the data to the counties and also into the unofficial. Uh, in some cases, yes, sir. Yeah, OK. Through forensic analysis of election management system computers in Antrim County, Michigan, affidavits from numerous election officials in Georgia, as well as the operator's manual for Dominion's Democracy Suite 5.5, our teams have gathered indisputable evidence that the entire system can indeed be connected, hacked, and manipulated. And in fact, it was. Here's what triggered this investigation back in 2018. This is the Allied Security Operations Group primary finding right, in the back. governor's race where a direct I'm a protein drink in my water. votes was made from Matt Devin to Andy Bashir. 30 so grams. That was of exactly 560 votes was deducted from Matt Devin. 560 votes were added to Andy Bashir. This race was decided by a little over 5,000 votes. So this one switch represented about 25% of the margin of the vote. Andy Bashir is declaring victory because he is the leading candidate over a Republican incumbent governor in a state Matt Bevin won by 10 points four years ago in the state Donald Trump won by eight Here's an example of election anomalies that took place in 2020. So now we would take the ballots and we would scan them. It's going to feed these ballots through the scan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to overvote. What do you mean by overvote? Overvote is when if there is multiple people in a section where it says only vote for one. So you're scanning the same ballots twice. It's already been scanned once. I've already scanned them once. Yes, you so tell them, Paula. The same ballots twice. It just accepted every one of them. Every one of them went through the system. There it is. The fifth ballot. There it is. It's pending adjudication. I think I would want to vote. I'm sorry, I find this adorable. I find her voice adorable. And complete. So you made a vote for someone 
where someone did not vote. I did, didn't I? And you're the election supervisor? I'm the election supervisor. I am the person that sits and does the adjudication. All right, board, I want y'all to step outside. Initiated by a court order, the Michigan investigation team obtained forensic access to a DS-200 tabulator, the machine that counts the votes. A TELIC 4G wireless chip manufactured in Taiwan was discovered embedded into the motherboard. The voting machine tapes clearly indicate modem engagement and transmission of election data. Some of the anomalies that we noticed in the 2020 general elections that five key states all stopped counting at a certain time in these key battleground states. These were all where the software, the mini machines, the SNS machines were used, the, the Smartmatic, the GEMS, the software. So when the vote stopped counting, and this has been noted in other countries as well, President Trump was significantly ahead. When reporting and counting resumed, there was a massive spike occurred that, uh, that favored Joe Biden. The next major observation the teams made was that there were significant financial transactions from private and nonprofit organizations that had a severe impact on the 2020 general election. As revealed in a Time Magazine article in February of 2021, individuals and organizations have been plotting to fortify the election since at least 2015. This is the inside story of the conspiracy to save the 2020 election, but it's massively important for the country to understand that it didn't happen accidentally. Democracy is not self-executing. There was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEMs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. They got states to change voting systems and laws and help secure hundreds of millions in public and private funding. That's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream, a well-funded cabal of powerful people, ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes to influence perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage and control the flow of information. They were not rigging the election. They were fortifying it. This network influence diagram really shows the interrelationship of money, people, and influence and control between key players and key organizations. Now, there were over 200 nonprofits that we found oh, in this. Drongo Bonka says, thanks for streaming What's this. No problem, Drongo. Is that all My of those pleasure. 200 organizations have received substantial funding from a single source? Of all the financial titans and philanthropists of the 20th century, none are more complex or mysterious than George Soros. You're a Hungarian Jew who escaped Just completely the eliminated my archery. By posing as a, a Christian. The barbs are more yeah. powerful than me right now. You That's how bad my freaking military is. is. <clears throat> and I would say that this that's is my character was made. My understanding is that you went out with this protector of yours. Yes went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. Like Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and the Rockefellers, he amassed billions through ruthless business decisions only to turn around and give away most of his fortune to advance his own personal philosophy. I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. Do you believe in God? No. This is not the first time that Mr. Soros has been implicated in a plot to destroy a nation. His cover organizations have been banned from several countries for doing exactly what they're currently doing to America. The Philippines, Russia, Turkey, Poland, Pakistan, as well as Soros' own homeland of Hungary have learned the hard way the true intentions of this ruthless multi-billionaire.
and overwhelmingly elected with George Soros' money, and they're a major cause of the violence we're seeing because they keep putting the violent criminals back on the street. I'm not sure we need to bring George Soros into this. <laughs> I was going to say yeah, you they, get the last word, Speaker. <laughs> he, he, he paid for it. I mean, why can't we discuss the fact that millions no, of dollars he I, I agree with what said. George Soros doesn't need to be a part of this conversation. Okay. So it's verbal. All right. We're good. Okay. We're going to move on. It was in 2006 when Soros said the main obstacle to a stable and just world is the United States. Translated into truth, that sentence would read the main obstacle to destabilizing the world is the United States. While Soros is often accused of unfounded conspiracies, that should not detour from the heinous crimes against humanity that he's actually guilty of. Many of those crimes he keeps hidden in plain sight. According to a white paper called U.S. Programs 2015 to 2018 Strategy, Soros's Open Societies Foundation began funding radical operations in Arizona and Georgia in 2015 with the goal of subverting the 2020 presidential elections. Through massive campaign contributions and nonprofit funding, mm -hmm. Soros owns and controls countless public officials, university professors, teachers' unions, mayors, district attorneys, judges, congressmen, senators, secretaries of state, sheriffs, governors, and electronic voting machine companies around the world. In 2010, George Soros shocked even his most devout loyalists when he declared that China has a better functioning government than the United States. While the Chinese people should be considered friends and allies, the Chinese Communist Party is anything but. The CCP has been plotting to take over the United States for the better part of this last century. And their unconventional warfare principles are barely recognizable to the U.S. population. America's top intelligence official even went so far as to say, and I quote, if I could communicate one thing to the American people from this unique vantage point, it is that the People's Republic of China poses the greatest threat to democracy and freedom worldwide since World War II. While we were sleeping, their poisonous seeds planted long ago have taken root and are now in full bloom within U.S. soil. The Chinese government and their operatives are buying up the United States at an alarming rate. Through cover organizations and individuals, they're purchasing American farms and businesses in mass volume. In addition, the CCP has co-opted the U.S. entertainment industry. Chinese firms own several major U.S. entertainment companies and control more than 8,000 American theater screens. Hollywood movie scripts are often reviewed and censored if they pose any threat to the image of the Chinese Communist Party. And many professional sports teams and players are controlled in great part by the CCP. The pandemic sped up a trend that was already years in the making, and it's brought about another change. The Chinese government's growing influence over the content of these films. That has people worried, including members of Congress, as they point to a growing list of examples of Hollywood seemingly bending to China's will. Now, here's a case in point. If you're a Hollywood actor, whatever you do, don't call Taiwan a country. Here's WWE star John Cena apologizing for doing just that. Uh, oh, Kirby Gaspard asked, what game are you playing? This is Civilization VI. The, um, it's, it's, what is it? A strategy game? A turn-based strategy game, I guess they call it? Right now I'm Christina of Sweden, of Sweden is my current civilization. And that's it. LeBron James taking on Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey, whose tweet supporting protests in Hong Kong set off a firestorm between the country and the league. China announcing this morning they're pulling NBA games from their airwaves. I'm going to get into a, a feud with Daryl, but I believe he wasn't educated on, on, on the situation at hand. Just be careful what we, what we tweet and we say. Why would the NBA take $500 million plus from a country that is engaging in ethnic cleansing? They are a customer of ours, and guess what, Megan? I'm okay with doing business with China. Well, one of the stark realities of this past year is the clear and present threat that China represents to the United States of America and to the daily lives of Americans. 
And it's not just about exporting a pandemic. China has also potentially compromised Joe Biden's family. Joe Biden, while he was vice president, took billions of dollars in bribes from the Chinese government in the form of payments to his son Hunter's businesses. In exchange, Biden was soft on Chinese military and economic aggression. This is the reason why I've held the view for so many years and continue to hold the view that a rising China is a positive development. They're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a competition for us. Yeah, I think that the biggest competitor is China. Joe Biden had a bit to say today, suggesting that China wants to own America by 2035. They literally have a stated goal of toppling America as the world superpower. How on earth could Joe Biden, with a straight face, negotiate with a government who's put billions of dollars into his family's businesses? And finally, new rule, you're not going to win the battle for the 21st century if you are a silly people. And Americans are a silly people. Half the country is having a never-ending woke competition, deciding whether Mr. Potato Head has a d We are a silly people. Do you know who doesn't care that there's a stereotype of a Chinese man in a Dr. Seuss book? China. You think China's doing that? Letting political correctness get in the way of nurturing their best and brightest? You think Chinese colleges are offering courses in the philosophy of Star Trek? the sociology of Seinfeld, and surviving the coming zombie apocalypse. Those are real, and so is China, and they are eating our lunch. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. Last night, I was, uh, I was on the phone for two straight hours with Xi Jinping. And, uh, but, uh, you know, they're gonna, you know, get moving, they're gonna eat our lunch. When he called to congratulate him, we had a two-hour discussion. He's deadly earnest about becoming the most significant consequential nation in the world. China is currently making big moves to gain control of U.S. port facility operations and already controls the Panama Canal. They're building 5G networks throughout Europe and the West, which can be used to feed personal information and sensitive data directly to the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese government uses commercial software and apps to spy on U.S. citizens and extract their private information. The CCP doesn't ask them for information. They don't need to. They have access to the information. There seems to be a great disconnect. I mean, the American people, at least the kids who are on TikTok, have no concern no. about what we're talking about here. Their ignorance of the threat does nothing to diminish it. It's estimated that at least 80% of American adults have had their private information harvested by China. Big Pharma has exported the vast majority of their production to China. Oh, you pick your sieve roll random. Oh, I picked it. I, I go through different ones China. like, oh, that person sounds interesting, and so I, I play protective it. Protective equipment, such as face masks, come from China. 80% of U.S. imports of rare earth minerals. The column China. says, okay, talk to you Microsoft later, peeps. Thanks for streaming this. Hope you stream again tonight at 7 for his next time. announcement. We'll check back later. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he'd be doing well, until they mentioned it. So, yeah, I'll China plan on that and try to be, try to be here at 7. See you later, Colin. In step with the Mexican drug cartels, 97% of fentanyl, one of the most addictive and deadly drugs, is smuggled into the U.S. from China. People's Liberation Army hackers are executing unconstrained penetration, surveillance, theft, and offensive cyber attacks on U.S. businesses, critical infrastructure, intelligence apparatus, and yes, even the U.S. election system. To ignore this message is to surrender to a government takeover that will bravely affect the lives of every man, woman, and child of every class, culture, and nation. Our goal is to reach and revive the heart of humanity while there's still time. This is your wake up call. We have put together, I think the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Douglas G. Frank to the stage. Am I alive? Check. All right, who 
wants to hear about algorithms. So when I was uh, giving the talk before the president's speech in Wellington, I remember standing and looking at, you know, 20,000 plus people on a hot Saturday afternoon. How many of you have ever been to a Trump rally? They're pretty rowdy. Can you imagine I'm standing at the podium looking at 20,000 plus people on a rowdy day, 80 degrees, hot Saturday afternoon, and I'm supposed to teach them math. And uh, that was uh, quite intimidating. But what was fun about it was that, uh, is my uh, presentation going to come up? Oh, there it is. What was fun about it is that, uh, there it is. Afterwards, somebody posted a meme that said, Dr. Frank teaches the largest math class in history. And it was pretty fun. Uh, there were these two big jumbotrons behind, and it was, I was kind of expecting it to stay rowdy, kind of like this. And then, uh, as soon as I started talking, it just got instantly quiet. And it was weird. It was like a, a, a silence came over. And you could hear all the oohs and ahs from 20,000 people. It was awesome. All right. Hi, Susie. OK. So we call it the key, because algorithms and polynomials are hard words, hard words to uh, understand. And people are having fun talking. All right, so Mike already introduced my, um, just thinking about this strategically. Mike already introduced me, I talked about my work in Pennsylvania. Until March, all of my work on the election was kept mum. It was kept mum by legal reasons and by legislative reasons, and so, until, you know, nobody really knew anything about it until March when Mike made scientific proof about me. And then suddenly 10 million people knew about me. Uh, and we made I'm that playing through all the dom group. sieves. I'm immortal right now, so halfway through the main eight. See, I, I don't even like going domination mind. victory. It's I've just done just like uh, diplomatic, about. cultural, this and this science. It's my last one twist. with uh, the Robert the Bruce of, of what's it called? Scotland. Like I don't know. I like to play the non-aggression principle uh, sieve, where I'm not like fighting Walmart. people, but you know, that's the cool. Though you're on immortal, I'm still on like Prince, uh, not doing you know, not getting ride. that crazy. These data we're bringing in are not trivial to work with. It's quite a challenge. Yet, the way maybe I'll make my way up to it. I'll become like a master. And so, like, like there were moments of panic and moments of elation. See, did you know they give fentanyl to women in labor? No, I did not know that. I did not know newborns got a dose of fentanyl. George Floyd's trap. I did know that. So it's like we're trying to get ready for this, trying to get ready for the cyber guys, trying to get ready, and then suddenly we get new information coming in that's massive. So that's I'm teasing that tonight at seven o'clock. There's some really important information. So you can imagine this whole situation is fluid. So I was talking with uh, Waldron about it, and he says, "Yeah, Doug." He says, uh, "What you do in the military is you plan an assault, you plan the whole thing, and then you arrive and nothing is as you." planned it to be. He says, so you always just as a military up, you just keep moving forward. So that's that's what's going on. All right. So I'm in two of those movies. I'm in Scientific Proof. That's with me and Mike talking about it for the first time. And then Absolute Interference. Okay. That's when I was talking uh, with before the president's speech. It was a great day. All right. You can see this presentation, something close to it, a shortened version of it on Lindell TV or frankspeech.com. Uh, and so if there's something you want to um, interact with a little more carefully, you can go back and look at it. All right. Yes, he's just a, he's just a pillow fighter. Okay. So pillow fighter. One of the things that I've learned this last year, I learned a lot of, a lot of political lessons and legal lessons. First political lesson I learned is that our, our legislatures are not going to save us. And I learned that in Pennsylvania. Our legislatures uh, don't have the leadership and uh, strength to save us. Uh, there are good legislators. And it seems like as I've been traveling around the country, there are one or two real patriots in every legislature. And we've been starting to work with them. 
and there and you're here. Some of you are here, uh, and so that's that's really what you need to look for in the next in the coming weeks and months. Who are who is it we've been working with as we launch in each state? So for oh example, gosh. last week we launched in Wisconsin, and I don't know if you noticed, but Janelle Branchin, who's leading that effort. Okay. She's already issued all these subpoenas. She's been working with our legal teams. We've been coaching her. We've been giving her all the data. So in other words, we've been helping to equip her to be successful. That's different than the first time. Remember when Rudy came out and when Sidney Powell came out? That was that whole kind of wave kind of fizzled out a little bit. This time, all of our ducks in a row first. With oh damn! I forgot to get exploring with my galleys. Oh, I was all distracted by these barbs. Successful. The successful. You can navigate so ocean tiles now. New. But, so the first bitter, bitter lesson Let's I learned last here. year was that politicians can alone can't save us. The legal system lets us down because I was in those uh, lawsuits that were headed to the Supreme Court from Pennsylvania, and all those fizzled out. So by the end of March, uh, by the end of February, I was pretty frustrated because I had figured out the election in December, and I'm like. This whole country is being stolen, and nobody knows. And I wasn't allowed to talk about it. So then getting introduced to Mike was like a big change for me, being completely mum, and then suddenly 10 million people knowing the answer here. So that was a, a big change. But what the third lesson I learned, because I was modeling COVID all year long, that's how I met several of these politicians, was that the people who were involved, the people that were engaged, the people that were- Ever watched Potato MC Whiskey? I went from king to deity in about six months. <laughs> oh, okay. Watching him. And, you know, that doesn't mean you have to be a You can mom, leave an you archer in your capital that never raise it. But it just seemed like everywhere Put I them beat on it and ignore them. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, oh, they're going to destroy all my stuff, though. I need to kill them because they're going to have to, like, repair everything, always, which is so annoying. Always some mom from some state who would say, Ooh, would you please come help us? Would you please come help us? And I would be, I would play a little bit coy because I can't answer all those phone calls. And I would say, well, which ones are the ones working? And, and I'm telling you, the mama, mamas with the mama bears, man, they- Hold they, on, did they, they just they, kill they my sword, dude? Quickly, oh. And they don't let up, and they, they're like a dog with a bone. It's messed and I've up. Several of our let me upgrade here. this guy. You guys man, are the real heroes in this. You guys are gonna be the ones that win. All right, and yes, they're on fire. Okay, so here's how our elections are being stolen. In a nutshell, this is how our elections are being stolen. Someone before the election decides what they want the outcome to be. Okay, it's a decision ahead of time. And then they make projections and they say, well, we think this is what's going to happen. So, and, and so they want to regulate that at a county level to make sure they get the outcome they want. So they, what they do is they inflate the registration databases. Now, this is before the election, and during the election, and after the election, they're manipulating the database. But beforehand, they make an estimate of what they think is going to happen, and they inflate the registration databases. So the beginning big hack, most of the hack of the election, takes place at this point, beforehand. Mm. They inflate the registration databases. The reason they do that is because it gives them a, it gives them a, a, a credit line of phantom voters. Think Interesting. It. it would be a really stupid cheat to have the have a, an election happen and then afterwards you count the ballots and they don't match the machine. That's too easy. A recount is too easy of a thing to catch. So what they do instead is they print a bunch of ballots and put them in. That way when the machines count the ballots, it, they don't have to cheat the machine. The machine's job then is not to flip votes, even though we do have cases with that. The machine's job is just simply no, to report progress. How are things going? Is it going as we predicted? If not, adjust it. And when you write a computer algorithm that does that kind of adjustment, it's, it's comparing to some target value. So it's a target value, and then the computer's constantly checking, saying, how's it going? I feel like it's going to destroy my freaking archer if I bring it over there. And, and then it's constantly making adjustments. I don't want to destroy my archers. And yes, absolutely, the machines are connected to the internet. Okay. And so, and then before the elections, we also, they also have to program the machines. And just to tease it again, I've been going around the country talking to people in different states. And every once in a while, I come across a county clerk who says, oh no, Dr. Frank, we follow all the guidelines. Our elections are totally secure. So I bring out the data, I show them the evidence, and they're like, oh, we were hacked, huh? Yep, you were. And then they're not happy. They're very unhappy. 
And in several states now, across the country, people like that have said, hey, Dr. Frank, why don't you bring your team in and let's do a complete forensic audit of our machines. So you think that Maricopa is an audit? How would you like to do an audit where you have access to everything and nobody knows? We go in, we take complete images of all the machines, of all the digital software that are in them, of all the routers, of everything. Before, during, and after the election, we record the activity during the election, all of that, at the bequest of the, the county people. We have those. And so it's always kind of comical to me when people say, oh yeah, but our machines aren't connected to the internet. We have an air gap between our machines. I just feel, you know, it's like your phone has an air gap between your phone and oh the internet. Oh my gosh, right? I don't okay. want them to kill any more any of my real. units. Especially since we're able to record the entire election Come on. It's through the internet during the, during the election. Okay, we know they're connected. So anyway, get ready tonight. By the way, if uh, if someone knew that we had a complete recording of their election and it was going to expose a bunch of officials, what do you think might happen? Maybe we might have a few people that might want to come forward. Okay. Anyway, so before the elections, they program the machines, yes? Okay. Then, during the election, the databases continue to be hacked and tracked. Uh, we've got several situations where during the actual election, we were downloading the registration database from the county levels and keeping track. And it's amazing. You can see them adding voters, removing voters, adding voters who request ballots and receive ballots even though nothing has happened. We've got records of all that happening in real time during the election. Okay? So that's what's happening during the election. And then after the election, you saw Patrick Colbeck sitting here. He's been working in the state of Michigan for month, months and months on this. He, he has a term for this. He calls it the eHarmony.com phase. Because what happens is during the election, they create all these voters. And then afterwards, you have to put names onto them so that that way they can survive a, a subsequent audit. So he calls that the eHarmony.com. So you notice that the whole point here is that throughout the entire election, their computer algorithms are operating. It's just every county in our country is essentially hacked. Every one. Okay, now with the PCAPs the, and the electronic recordings we have show that there are 3,009 so far. We haven't even been through all 37 terabytes. It's just too huge of a job. It's one of the reasons why we're having this symposium, so we can bring in a bunch of cyber experts and they can help us. But we've got 3,009 of our counties already hacked. We've got evidence that they were hacked during the election. So there's just no way that people are going to do that. It's, it's a computer algorithm that's always operating that's doing all that work. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to make a So that, that's the point. Now, don't be afraid of that word algorithm. Algorithm is, a, is, a, is a, a word that we like to use in science because it's just like a recipe. It's a set of steps you do in order. and But we like the word algorithm because it usually means that there's some equations mixed in and some, some numbers mixed in. Even though there are numbers and recipes, right? But there aren't very many equations. But you get the idea. That's what we call it. So don't be afraid of the word algorithm. Now, how would you know if an algorithm was operating? So here's a simple way to know if an algorithm is operating. Pretend you have a 20-sided die, and you roll it 83 times. 83 times. We'll, we'll, we'll do probably all up to 83. And you get a series of numbers. You notice you've got a set of numbers there. And you write them down. And so then you go over to the next county over in your state and you roll it 83 times again. And you get the exact same 83 numbers in the same order. Is that normal? No, that ain't natural, buddy. And what happens is then you go to another county in your state and you get the same 83 numbers in the same order, right? You know that's not real. You know there's some kind of algorithm operating. Something is controlling what's happening. That's not natural, yes? What if you go to every county in your state and they're all the same? Then you know that's not real, right? That's how you can know. Now, you don't have to be a math genius. You just know, gee, 83 times in a row? Uh-uh, that's not right. There's a reason for 83, I'll tell you later. But for now, that, that's it. Now, that's the first the first thing. Now, let's say we're here in, this, in the uh, state of South Dakota. What if I step over the border into Nebraska? Is it next stop? 
Yeah, yeah okay. We can, I, I was just in Nebraska a couple weeks ago. A couple of super moms were awesome down there. Yeah. Uh, and let's say we go into Nebraska and we start willing to die. And as soon as we step over the border, instead of it being the same 83 numbers, it's a new set of 83 numbers. But every county in Nebraska has the same set of 83 numbers. You see what happens? And then let's say we step over the border and go into Iowa, okay? And then we have a whole new set. Yay, Iowa. So we have a whole new set of 83 numbers, but it's the same in every county. Okay, what you would know at that point is that it's that the numbers are being decided for each state and that they're being controlled in each county. Does that make sense? Okay, that's what's happening in our elections. The elections are decided ahead of time by state and they're controlled in the county. Hmm. Okay, so this is how I figured this out. I'm gonna show you, this is fun. So, because I teach at this special school for really bright kids, genius kids, it's pretty fun. It's like, I call it recess. I go there a couple hours in the mornings uh, during the week. Yeah, potato uh, MC like whiskey, yeah, I'll check him out. This class. I like to pick a real um, example from real life. You're saying you don't have to lose troops to them, to play defensively. So I She's one down. archer, focus range, the melee. The Cavalry, so not good, versus spearmen, so, year, so do swordsmen. I yeah. I'm in the knight. I think there's a thing where it's like you get a, a boost if you kill someone with a knight. Well, because the 2020 census, all the talk is about the 2020 census. So how do you analyze... Yeah, it is pretty crazy, so Jessica. How to use calculus on the planning, what are you saying? The Though I don't understand, you know, the kind of number stuff. It's a bit over my head. Census, right? So I was studying the 2010 census, and I prepared this graph in September before the election. And it's a good thing, because I think if I hadn't been doing that, I wouldn't have figured this out. I think it's a divine appointment. Okay. He and Mike both keep saying that, divine so appointment. In the census, what they do is that back curve, the blue curve, that's from 2010. That's the 2010 census. And that's the last detailed census of the whole country before the election, right? And then you notice that what they do is each year, the United States census just shifts it one year, only they don't just only shift it, they attenuate it for mortality because, you know, 90-year-olds don't just become 100-year-olds, right? They're, some of them die off. So that's what the census does. This is a, these are data from them. This is not me doing anything. I'm just showing you what they provide. And I've been studying this, and so all this was fresh in my mind when Kathy Barnett asked me to go to Pennsylvania and study her data because her election had been stolen. So this was all fresh in my mind. Okay. So let's just talk about her district. Pennsylvania District 4, one of the most corrupt in the country. Another divine appointment. Okay, one of the most corrupt in the country. And notice what I got across here is a graph. This is 0 to 100 years old. And then here's 0 to 12,000. How many people of each age are there? Now, and, and you notice, you know, you can kind of see there's some wiggles and bumps. Here's the baby boomers, and then people pass away. Uh, but you notice not everybody gets to vote, right? Because if you have to take out the 0 to 17 year old, and, and not everybody above 18 gets to vote. There's about 4% of people you have to take out. So this is who's registered. I mean, this is who the an eligible voter in Pennsylvania District 4, about 550,000 people. Well, here's who's registered to vote in Pennsylvania District 4. And when I showed this to the Board of Elections people and the legislature in Pennsylvania, they all said, what? No, 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 that can't be right. It's, it should only be 60 or 70 percent of the people registered. Yeah, the election people themselves don't know this has happened. You understand? So in other words, 98 uh, percent, nearly everybody's registered and they, they didn't even know it. Okay. And so that's, that's a warning flag, yeah? Warning flag that they don't even know. This is who supposedly voted in Pennsylvania District 4. And whenever I show this to people, they say, Dean Dr. Frank, from about 50 years up, those curves look really a lot alike. The red curve just looks a little smaller than the black curve. What's up with that? Yeah, I agree. It's stuff that's wrong with that, huh? In fact, if I multiply the black curve by 86%, you notice it superposes right on the red curve real pretty well, huh? Uh, it's surprisingly well, so of course, um, I, as a scientist, I mm. know something called the correlation coefficient. 
this R number. I'll tell you about that a little The bit. new but Space Jam movie, movie is all about the algorithm. That it's so high. Oh. Because the way correlation coefficients Perfect work, timing of releasing the movie for us to comprehend the data. I well. usually, usually talk about correlation coefficients. I, know, I haven't seen the new Space Jam one. All I hear is that there was a huge thing because I guess they they changed the the bunny female. That's all I've heard about it. If the correlation, if it's R is zero, that means it's completely random versus each other. If it's negative one, that means one goes up, one goes down. So anytime you have a correlation coefficient near one, which this is, that's not natural. Um, it's something that's going on that's making the two agree with each other. In medicine, in uh, anything to deal with people, if you get correlation coefficients in 0 0.7, 0 0.8 range, you're doing amazingly well. Because anything to do with sociology is, is, or medicine, anything to do with people is usually really low. In physics, if you're between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, you're doing amazing. To get 0.99, that ain't natural, buddy. Okay. All right, so here, here we go. This is Pennsylvania District 4. Except I'm showing you now the census. This is the 2010 census. I'm, I'm about to compare it to Pennsylvania District 4. But this is actually the 2010 census right here. Uh, uh, and but I, what I did was I shrunk it, though, so that it's the same size as Pennsylvania District 4. You know, it's not millions of people. It's thousands of people. Now, notice when I shifted 10 years to the right, because it's not 2010 anymore, it's 2020. Right? If I shift it 10 years to the right, and I include the mortality, just like the census does. Let me just go back so you can see me do that. I'm just going to shift it to the right and include a little mortality. See what I did? Because Why would I want to do that? Well, because it isn't 2010 anymore. It's, 20, it's, it's 2020. So now when we add who's registered in Pennsylvania District 4, This was my first clue that they were using the census to inflate the registration rolls. Now, if you think about that, it totally makes sense. Let's say you want to add a bunch of people to a county. You want to add a bunch of phony voters. Yeah, it looks like I might be able to finish off this uh, barb votes. camp no, before my night's even so done, done, so I'll probably just use my night to explore. Number of each it's all fast so how and many stuff. Do you add? What do you compare to? The census. And you use the best census available, the 2010 census. You shift it 10 years, you attenuate it to the size of the county, and you fill up to there. Does that make sense? And if you do that, if you fill up to there, if you fill up to there, you notice it's going to take on the shape of the census. And a couple of the distinguishing features are these two peaks on the side and this peak up here. You'll see those in every county in the country in the registration database because they're filling up to the census. So it's like a fingerprint in every county. And I've done thousands of counties now across the country, and it's in every county. Okay. So And you notice that ain't natural, buddy. Okay. So now I'm just going to teach you a little math. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up a pretend county, and then I'm going to show you some real data. So here is, um, this is the census, back to the real census again. And you notice that it basically is about 4 million people of every age, and then people naturally remove themselves from the voter roll. Okay, that's a joke. Ha ha, okay, you didn't laugh. Okay, here we go. So anyway, I'll try that again. So you notice there are about 4 million of every age, and then people naturally remove themselves from the voter roll. Thank you, thank you. Okay, good. All right. So here's my pretend county, my pretend county. And you notice I've given, I've given 15 people of every age until they're about 60, and then they naturally move themselves to the voter roll. Okay, so that, that's a pretend county. And it has 1,275 people in it. And the reason I picked that number is because if you take out the kids, they're the 17-year-old, you end up with exactly 1,000 people in my imaginary county. And my super moms are always saying, Dr. Frank, you got to make the math easy. So that's how it's easy. We have a thousand people in our imaginary county, yes? All right, and you notice that there's you know, about 15 people of every age and then they die, okay. Now a certain percentage of those are gonna be registered to vote, okay? And I just picked this number 13 fifteenths or 87% because it uh, fits with some other data. But I'll, I'll tell you the story. When I first was developing these slides, I have a dear friend who's my roommate in college who worked for Newt Gingrich for 30 years. I was practicing on him and showing him these slides. And he said, oh, Dr. Frank, he says, that's a really bad example. 
Why is that, Mark? He says, well, there's no way a county has 87% registration. I've already shown you much more than that. Huh? So in other words, a guy who's a political expert, he's been doing it for 30 years, thinks this is ridiculous. But boy, did he have something to learn, didn't he? OK, and then a certain percentage of those that are registered will vote. And so that's, if I assume that's 70%, then you notice you get your population here. And then you have who is registered to vote and then who actually voted. Make sense? McAfee and May gave cell phones and laptops to politicians with key loggers and knew what they did from then on. Ooh. Go back. If you know the blue curve, and you I don't know, look, I didn't see much happen, you, you know, the whole curve. kill switch thing. If you know the black curve and you know the percentage, you can get the red curve. If you know any of the curves and you know the percentages, you can get any of the other curves. That's oh, no. how no, I was I meant able to do to this one. Pennsylvania no. with a set of algorithms in my hand not knowing anyone who was registered in the state of Ohio, and I predicted every county in the state of Ohio before I even knew, yes? And Mike was talking about that because I was bragging about how great Ohio was, right? Oh yeah, we gotta figure it out in Ohio, we have secure elections. No, I was able to predict them all, then I realized, no, this is everywhere. And I have to admit, you know, as a scientist, you're supposed to be skeptical of yourself, and I was. I could predict all these counties in Florida and the state legislator, I mean, I mean, in uh, Pennsylvania. <coughs> and so the, the state legislators, they said to me, well, Dr. Frank, um, have you tried any other states? And I said, well, no, I think I've been assuming all the corruption is here in, in Pennsylvania. And they said, well, why don't you try another state where you think there isn't any corruption? So I, oh, okay, I'll do Ohio. You know, and then I was able to predict all of them. And I was like, hmm. And I, okay, I'll try Florida. I tried Florida, nope. 14 counties in Florida, oops. North Carolina, oops. Colorado, oops. Everywhere I was going, and so I was starting to, I was starting to doubt myself a little bit. Like, wait a minute, is there something else going on here that I'm not thinking about? Because how can I go around predicting this everywhere, especially in states that I think, you know, Trump won, come on, how, there isn't, you know, you would think there's no manipulation here. Then I meet Mike Lindell, and he talks about his electronic evidence and the fact that at the time he had 2,800 counties worth of infract incursion data. Oh, now I understand. There are computer algorithms operating in every county in the country. No wonder I can predict it everywhere. So it was nice that I met him. All right, now here's a real county. This is Hamilton County, Ohio. This is right near me. This is Cincinnati. It's it's uh, a big county. So these are real data now, not makeup data. You know, it's oh, wow. across the bottom again, how many thousands of people of each age. You can see the millennials and the baby boomers nice and clearly. Yep, this is Ohio now, not Pennsylvania. Here's who's registered to vote in Ohio, in uh, Hamilton, Ohio. Oops, when I showed this to the Board of Elections Director in Cincinnati, she was shocked. And she's like, how did that happen? Exactly. Do you know why these people- <gasps> How did they reach around and do that? How can Barb's, what? Because these are big data sets. These are hard to work with. And what's happened is the election companies give them software that allow them to work with their databases. The software that they're given doesn't do this. The software that they're given just gives them total and, and, to, and, and lists. And so they're not used to even being able to do this. It takes a data geek, it takes a scientist, it takes somebody that likes graphing and exploring data to begin to do this. So just showing them this is a shock. By the way, this is why we're here. You see these two peaks on the side? That's the census. It's the breadcrumbs of the census peeking its way in. All right, so that's supposedly who's registered. That's a warning flag. And then, uh, by the way, I'm not the only person to figure this out. In October, Judicial Watch published an article before the election showing that 353 of our counties in the United States, in 29 states, had voter registration more than the population. Why did we let this happen? We were being told that our election was being hacked, but we, we all didn't listen, we didn't understand, yeah? Okay, so back to Cincinnati. Here's who supposedly voted in Cincinnati. Do you notice a pattern? Just like in Pennsylvania from about 50 years up, it's about a perfect match. Let's just compare that to make that easy for you to see. And if we give that 
If we give that number, I just chose the same number there that I did in Pennsylvania, 86%. If we call that number the registration key, think of it like a code. You've got one set of data and you have a code and you have a key to break that code that allows you to convert this set of data to this set of data. And so that number would be 86%. That's like a key. It's like break, it's the, how do you convert this to this? You use that key. Well, and, and the fact that that repeats the same thing that happened in a different state. This is Ohio now, the first thing I showed you was Pennsylvania. So, um, but we wouldn't have to have only one number. We wouldn't have to just have 86%. We could have a percent for every 18-year-old, a percent for every 19-year-old, a percent for every 20-year-old. We could have a different percent for every age. That would be 83 numbers. You've heard 83 before. 83 numbers, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all the way up to 100. You've got 83 numbers. So let's say we had 83 numbers, and, and we could call that the key instead of just one number. It's a collection of 83 numbers, and if we do that, this is what you get. The black curve is what I would predict you would get. The red curve is what we actually observe. And when I show this to people, they wisely notice, but hey, Dr. Frank, if you have, if you can just get 83 numbers, you should be able to make it fit perfectly. How come it doesn't quite fit perfectly? Well, the answer is because I didn't use Hamilton County to get my percentages. I use Franklin County. Did you and know you could turn on quick movement? Yeah, I do. I like watching them fight it out. I don't know. That's weird, but yeah. I don't know. I think it's cute being able to see the little, and this you know, is what that animations. Numbers look like. From I don't know about the kill switch, but he tweeted. He. And when I show this to people, they're like, "Tweet about a laptop a deal a years ago on his verified curve. account." Hmm. You mean the percentages from 18 to 100 vary smoothly? Can I yeah. post a link if I find it? I think so. I posted a link in here, so I think you could post links in the chat. Right, things. And that what's so fun about that is if you if I had put this these data into Excel, which I did, I made this graph in Excel, and I right click on it and I say add a trend line, then it'll say, Well, what kind of line would you like to put in? Would you like it to be a second order polynomial or a third order polynomial? And you start adding this little scroll button, you know, you click on it. Fourth order, fifth order, sixth order. When you hit sixth order, it won't go any higher. Right, can't go the rest of it. Drink it too much. Sixth order is as high as Excel goes. And guess what? Every state in our country, I can predict this way with a sixth order polynomial. In other words, as Gail Golick, my friend from Arizona, said, America was stolen by an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to this again. So you notice if once I know the percentages. If I know one thing, I can get all the others, yeah? So all I have to do is go into any state, look at one county, and I can predict all the others. Because every state has its own key. Just like in the state with rolling the die 83 times. It works in every county in that state, but when you go into a new state, it's a new set of 83 numbers. So every state has its own key. Make sense? Okay. So. I had to pick a state, so I just picked Ohio, just to kind of let you see. Now, what I'm gonna do in this set of 88 slides, they're gonna go by really fast, it takes one minute to play. What's, what you wanna look at is, you can look at the R factors, how good it's correlating, or you can look at these bottom two graphs, or you can look at the black curve. Let's just review what they are. The blue curve is the population of a county. The black curve is who's registered in that county. The, red curve is who supposedly voted, and the blue curve underneath is my prediction. Now what's fun about these set of data is I'm gonna make the prediction two different ways. I'm gonna make the prediction based upon the population. Pretend I don't even know who's registered. I'm just gonna make a prediction based upon the population, and then I'm gonna make a second prediction if I did know who was registered. So I'm gonna show you two graphs for every county, and they're gonna play, boom, 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 boom. It takes about a minute to play or something like that. And what you're gonna be looking for is these bottom two graphs. And you're gonna notice that the, the population prediction isn't quite as good as the, as the registration prediction. But it makes sense. Oh, because if back I have back. to start from here, yeah. to get to here, I have to go through two numbers. So it's harder to predict. I can go straight from there to there. That's one
one way of predicting, or I can go from the black to the red. So I'm going to do. It. I'm going to predict in both ways for you. Oh, and here a we stream go. to what? His tweet? Fun. Yeah, I mean, if if, uh, so to play. So if you want to post a thing to McAfee's, you know, tweet or whatever. He says cool. That every county is predictable two ways. Okay. Now I've been doing this across the country, and what I like to do is I like to go to a. I like to get the data for for a particular state and do all the analyses, and then we release it in the state, and people get all freaked out. And they say, hey, we got a problem. Yeah, you got a problem, okay? And then I'll come out there, and I'll meet the super moms, and we have, we have a few events. I meet with a few key legislators. We plan our event. A couple weeks later, there's a big event. The public what are these super moms he keeps it. mentioning? And, and we, have a, we have a movement going. Right now, I've done that in 13 states in person. And I'm working with 30 total states. Our super moms are kicking butt, I tell you. I saw you, Tony, Pennsylvania. And Lacey Washington. And Susie. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's, yes, I agree. All right, so here's the thing. I've explained this to you. You kind of know. Now, this is really just a top-level analysis. I've got all kinds of other analyses that go down. In fact, if I've got analyses that will take you right down to the precinct level, and you can knock on doors and find and find phantom voters. But this just gives you the overall view, so you can kind of know what's happened. Now, how do you explain this to your friends? Yes. Constitutional officer. That isn't what these predictions are. Okay. Keep in mind, to predict them, I have to be able to get in the minds of the people who decided ahead of time what they wanted the outcome to be. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think, because sometimes the people getting elected are, you wonder, why would they elect that? You know, and there's, but that's a whole nother discussion, okay, which we need to have that discussion. Okay, so I've just explained to you how our elections are being stolen. Now, how do you explain this to your friends? It's hard without the graphs. So I told you about rolling a die 83 times. Here's another way to explain it to your friends, and I, I developed this metaphor with my super moms. Let's say you're in the state of Ohio. Imagine you're in the state of Ohio. Easy to do for the ladies in my state. Okay. Uh, and, and let's say the 2020 census just came out, 2020 census, and you look at it, and it says that 10.0% of the people in your county have blonde hair. 10.0. Even blondes can understand that. 10.0%. I'm married to a blonde. It's okay. All right. 10.0. One of the smartest ladies I know. 10.0% of uh, blonde uh, people have blonde hair. And then you go to the next county over and you look at the census, the 2020 census, and it says 10.0% of the people there have blonde hair. And that's a little puzzling because you're Amish and they're Mexican. You know, as a county, it's kind of strange that they would be exactly the same percentages. But you keep looking around the state, and every single county has 10.0% blonde hair. That just doesn't make sense, does it? You would, you would think something's wrong with that. So you look at the next state over, you go to Pennsylvania, and 13.4% of the people there in the very first county have blonde hair. Now, wait a minute. Everybody in Ohio was 10.0%, but then in, now suddenly it's different. And every county in Pennsylvania is 13.4? Uh-uh. So you go to Florida, and now every county there is the same but different than the previous. You know something's wrong with this, don't you? You go over to Colorado, and it's a new percentage, but every county has the exact same percentage of blonde hair. You know that can't be right, right? That just can't be. You know that it's mm. being decided at a state level and controlled at the county level. Yes? So that's a way to explain that. Now. But it's worse than that, really, because you remember that 10.0%? Imagine if that was just for 18-year-olds. What if you have a different percentage for 19-year-olds, and a different percentage for 20-year-olds, and a different percentage for each age all the way up to 100? And they were all the same in every county in the state. And it didn't matter whether you were a large county, small county, urban county, rural county, black county, white county, green county, doesn't matter the same percentages in every one, you know that isn't real. That's not natural. So that's a simple way for you to explain to your friends. Let's use the blonde hair analogy. Uh, now, the reason I'm going around the country is because I'm a firm believer 
in the people. If they are given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. Is this a national crisis? Yeah, I think we just lost our country. Uh, Mr. Lindell in the movie Scientific Proof, when we did that together, he about 15 minutes in, he said, it's a good thing we lost the election or we wouldn't know we lost our country. I wouldn't have even looked at this. Yeah, that's another divine appointment. The great point is to bring them the real facts. And bringing them the real facts is what I'm trying to do and what Mr. Lindell is doing. Now, the problem is I learned the bitter lesson that legislatures sure aren't going to save us. City. I learned the bitter lesson that our legal system isn't going to save us. No one is coming to save us. We are the people we are waiting for. And if I've learned anything from last year, politicians don't start parades, they join them. So you have to be the parade. And it's not that the politicians are evil, it's they need you. There are good politicians who need you to start the parade and need you to be in the parade, need to build the parade so that they can accomplish their legislative agenda. I've seen several politicians here this week and they're they are gonna they're gonna be heroes, but we need to equip them and we need to start the parade for them. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going around starting parades. So I'm a physicist, so I like to use metaphors. So let's pretend that this piece of aluminum, just a piece of aluminum, let's just pretend this is a this is the United States, this piece of aluminum. And here is me spreading the truth. That's not the microphone working. That's really annoying like that. And I can make that really loud and really annoying. It's kind of annoying. And it's all pervasive. So this is America. This is the truth resonating in America. We just have to, we just have to make it really annoying. We just have to make it unbearable. We just have to keep getting louder and not let them silence us. So that's it. What's going on? Are you joining me? So have you noticed that this is a fluid situation? I wasn't supposed to talk for another two hours. So, uh, and I see the professor coming up. We had a great interview. We've had two great interviews. That's right. One of them was called Divine Appointments. Yes. And the other one was with Draza. By the way, Draza Smith, he's another math geek. Why isn't she here? She's in the situation room, pounding out the data um, with the other red pad. Uh, red team, and it is a lot of work. So anyway, uh, we got it before uh, she needs to have me on the stage at some point or another because she's cool. There are other mathematicians that have been doing great work across the country. It's not just me. And what's so been so fun for me is that all of it has come together. You know, my predictions, their predictions, my algorithms, their algorithms, it all leads to the same undeniable conclusion. So even if there had never been a cyber <laughs> even if there had never been a Mike Lindell with, with 37 terabytes of electronic evidence, we have mountains of mathematical evidence, mountains of statistical evidence, mountains of hard evidence that there was an election steal that had taken place. This is just the icing on the cake and kind of the nail on the top. Yes? Is he great or what? Mike's back. Yeah. And like we said, it's the same thing. It all is the same cyber attack. And I just wanted to interrupt him for a second before we talk about his info. I don't know if you know this. This is just in from the news. We, uh, By the way, we're going to talk about two things. But this is, today's the first coordinated China attack, cyber attack on Israel. They just hit Israel, the government and private organizations were targeted. What? It's the first large-scale Chinese cyber attack on Israel. It was reported by FireEye cyber, cyber security firm. And it's um, Israeli paper reported it today, August 10th. Um, so, it's 
it's happening all around the world, everybody. And uh, they're probably trying China. to this here. Um, what Dr. Frank just said is, you have, you have math petitions. We got another one coming tomorrow. We got another one coming tomorrow. We've got we've got all this. We're going to show you all the cyber evidence that's rolling now on brainspeech.com. If we go scroll down, it's rolling and it's rolling. And it's going to keep rolling. If we have six states up there, Ooh. that's data from the 2020 election where the cyber forensic experts are in all the breakout rooms and they're breaking it down and they're going to see it is from the 2020 election. This is real and it happened and it's their taking of country. I want to tell you what they did though because we always want to call out the fake news here. The horrible, horrible media we have in our country and around the world. But the reason I say around the world is because uh, we have the um, president's son, Eduardo, coming here. Arso, not if I say it right, Bar Arso, if I say it right. Bar Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro? Bolsonaro. Okay, Bolsonaro. Oh, damn. Look uh, at that. He's going to be coming here to speak in a couple hours with their, the same things going on in their country. Okay? But we're going to first call out the media this morning. So we all know what happened. They attacked. Our media had three backups here. They don't want the word out. This is the fight. The fight is you can have all the best. We've got a physicist here, one of the smartest people in the country. The, the stuff he's won in awards is beyond belief. He was not a. He wasn't into elections. You just heard his story. He wasn't into elections. Just like me, I wasn't into elections. I was into pillows. He was into teaching classes. <laughs> he's an old softy. Yeah, yeah, but. But he did figure out that they said those you, know, you just seen those algorithms. It's machines. When him and I first met, I had all oh, this data. So all this kill a unit with my knife. And he's going, How do I explain this? This had to be done by machines. It could only be done not by machines. So when I met him, it was like a perfect match. You know, what his explained I you know, how did they set that algorithm? Remember when we all went to bed eleven o'clock or wherever we seen Donald Trump at one? And then all of a sudden three in the morning? Everything stopped and flipped, it flipped over on its head. Well, that couldn't have been done. It had to be done by machines. And, uh, and I just want to say that, it, like Newsweek, this is this morning. This is the big, the big lie is the big lie. And you had Newsweek did this hit job here. And, and see if you can read between the lines here. Mike Lindell delays cyber symposium after seeing he was hacked. Okay, now let me tell you that. There's two things wrong with that statement. One is delays it. Doesn't this sound like we're putting it off, right? Yeah, we didn't. It could be weeks, right? Could be weeks. Could be months. Heck, you know, after saying he was hacked, what's it? You know, I just said it. We were hacked. Not once, but twice. I just found out 40 million either bots or people came in at once. 40 million, I was just up with the cyber forensic expert. So a lot of them were attacks, whatever they did, but that's a lot of people that came on there, you know. And uh, we're gonna, this will be our whole thing of this frankspeech.com and this 72 hour streaming. We're gonna be streaming live the whole time. They tried to take a commercial. Did you see that for the breakout rooms? That ain't happening on my watch. We're streaming, we're going 72 hours because this is gonna get out there. You never know, and plus I want to keep calling these guys out for these, these, what they've done to our country. The whole technology was attacked, Lindell announced, to a live crowd gathered in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We need to get the word out, he added, because they blocked the thing. Really? Is that why we need to get the word out? We need to get the word out because we've been under attack by China. Hello? I mean... You know, Newsweek, let's see who wrote this. John, John Jackson for Newsweek. John Jackson, everybody. Is that a journalist? Does he care about our country? You got, he doesn't care about our country. He watched that 18-minute uh, movie. I would hope he did, but I'll bet he did. I'll bet he did. If he did, how could he write this? It's, it's, it's terrible. And this is what we're going to do all week, and we're calling their names out by name. That was John Jackson. Yep, you know, so anybody now that Googled my name, can I just Google my name? You guys want to see what's going all day, on day, all day? Google Mike Lindell or Symposium, and then hit the news button. If any of you, 
If any of you see some hit job, go report it at the front desk out there, and we're going to call them out. We're going to call them out. They're enemies of our country. All of them are. They're enemies. Anyone that's trying to be part of this is horrible. We have to get this out. We have three days to do it. I'm going to tell you, tonight at 7 o'clock, you need to tell everyone, if you're watching around the world, to be on here. If you, may, if you see one thing of this, you better be on here at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight, Central Time. As long as you're done by everyone's Tucker. Gotta be on I'll be done by Tucker. Everyone. You're gonna, you're, and, uh, we got, uh, I'm going to see if there's any other ones here. I think we're, I think we're good for now. But we're going to call every single terrible journalist out. Jim, Jim Mikowska, uh, would you like to call me? I'll take your call direct. Okay. Um, so you all seen Dr. Frank's uh, algorithms. Now, doesn't it scare you when you can go do it yourself in every single state and every single county, you check the first county, the same percentage of 25-year-olds vote or pick any 70-year-olds or 50-year-olds? That's, the, that's how they set the algorithm. They set it. That's what I told you earlier on. That's why when you had, this is one of the things when I met him, it was the answer. I'm going, wow. That's why, when he told me it was the 2010 census report, that's why when you had your Arizona or your, or your um, uh, Nevada, let's take Nevada. I don't know how many people, I don't have the number right now, but, but let's say there's 50,000, 20,000 non residents that voted. I thought to myself, I, it kept bothering me through November and December. People are good people. That's just, they didn't just all say, you know what, I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to commit a crime. Election fraud is a crime. It's a crime. It's the worst crime because it's stealing from everything we do. I don't know if it's the it's worst, the worst crime. crime there is. I think there's the worst. People that are out there, know, that like have, that murder, this. We're not talking about the rape, that are out there, the China attack. You know, there's people that child trafficking. In this. I said it earlier today, Dominion. Yeah, it's definitely bad. They sued two people this morning. They sued OAN, and they sued, sued Newsmax, and they sued Patrick Byrne. They did that before this started this morning to try and scare them. So they first they were going to take us down, which they did. We got delayed started. But then, so they do that. Here's the way they had it all planned. They take us down. They come out with a headline. Mike Lindell delays cyber symposium after saying he was hacked. And then, then they sue these people, so then we try and do it again. If I went ahead back up, try and do this again in a day or two, or a week. Now these two are sued, and then you got other networks afraid to even come here and film this. I mean, you know, even, even, even news, you know, the, the news that actually talks, like OAN, OAN, Newsmax, RSBN, all these people that put the word out there. And then you've got people like Fox that don't do anything. I, I'm still, shame on Fox, you know. It's disgusting. This is what we're up against. This is the fight. If we don't get our voice back this, these three days, and this isn't heard around, you can have the best evidence, which we do in the world, and it ain't going to matter. It's not going to matter, everybody. We've seen it happen in November and December. Are you kidding? We had more evidence to convict everyone in, this, everyone in the country. Just take one piece for you, one piece for you, one piece for you. How could there be that much evidence and that much crime? Because it was done by computers. It was a cyber war, and it's a cyber attack by China. And they just did it to Israel. It's just reported. And there's, you know, Brazil, when he gets here today, that's what they're going to, that's what's going to happen in Brazil. That's what they're trying to change. He's going to talk to you all about that. You've got countries like Australia and Italy, all these countries, that are, they're, they're afraid because communism has moved in there, the CCP. It's horrible. So anyway, back to with your presentation, Dr. Frank. Yes, sir. Anybody at home, you don't have to even watch, you don't, you don't have to watch the rest of the show with the cyber, the cyber stuff. You know, that's the whole election right there. When you're going to learn what PCAPs are and everything today in the mock election, we get that just getting real close. We're going to do our first mock election. But he showed you a mathematical thing that's a, a it's impossible. There's nothing. It's absolutely impossible. It's, it had to be machine. And, and one of the, one of the things you noted early on, which is really fun about it, is that anybody who has the math skills and access to the data can reproduce it. And since I did that movie with you, at least a dozen groups independently across the country have reproduced my work, including some secretaries of state. They 
they reproduce it. So it's 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 not like it's not like I've got some outlandish theory. Right. They can reproduce it themselves, and it's mostly data. It's mathematics, and all you got to do is look at it in the data. So every state, there's 46 states represented here today. Either politicians or that thing. Thank you all. 46 states. That's incredible. Alaska's here, you know. They, I mean, <laughs> they came a long way, you know. But people care. That's us. 47. <laughs> Yay, Connecticut. Yes. And, you know, hey. Yeah. Because there was uh, there was only four yesterday, Hawaii, Connecticut, I believe Delaware and Rhode Island. And Connecticut is here, so 47 states represented. Every one of the states, every one of you need to carry it back to your state and do the simple, very simple, get the data from, from your, you, you, where do you get it? Tell them where you get it. Well, it, it depends. In, when I first came out, uh, when, when you first made scientific proof about me, you could still go to most of your, the secretaries of state's websites and still download it, but they're on to us now. Whoa, and the secretary of state's are corrupt. Tell me it ain't so. And now they're all hunkering down and they're, they're taking down their ability to do that. So uh, no. it's harder and harder. So if you're in a state, ask us. We might have the data and we can get it to you. Yeah, it, it isn't as something that, you know, you think of this, how deep, how deep the cover-up goes. The secretaries of state's office, I've took down data that we all deserve. We all we, we have the right to, don't we? Oh, it, it's it's by don't we? law. You're a lawyer. <laughs> I sure do. We have the rights to it. Tell them about that. What they're doing to it with these Secretary of State, starting with the worst one in the country, Brad Rassenberger from Georgia. So we we need a, we need to think in terms of structure or an architecture. When you see the map and the data that Dr. Frank showed you. You know, I used to prosecute drug trafficking organizations. This looks like a boat trafficking organization. BTOs operate regionally, counties. We're seeing regional crimes being committed across the country. So the question is, who's giving the orders? So drug trafficking organizations answer to a cartel. I think we're starting to figure out who the election cartel is. We saw that wonderful video earlier and what Dr. Frank has done is he's provided wonderful mathematical evidence that shows the existence of that election cartel. Makes sense, doesn't it? So um, the other thing that I put out there is from a foundational standpoint, Dr. Frank is an expert's expert. That means I could get him into a court of law and he can offer an expert opinion that I couldn't give as a layperson. The question I wanna ask the Snake News Media is where Snake are your speak. experts? Where is the open forum to have an exchange and debate the math? They don't do that. They, they, they send out hit pieces, publish them, but they never want to confront our, our witnesses. They don't want to con confront them. In a court of law, we have the confrontation clause. We're accusing people of fraud because it happened. So put your best out there. It's very telling, but no one wants to go toe to toe with these mathematical geniuses. So think about that. Use your common sense. Again, you are you are the jury. So use your common sense. Why is it that they're hiding? They're ducking you, Dr. Frank. That ain't natural, buddy. That ain't natural. I, it, um, Mike talked about the uh, news in Israel today. I got off a plane in Nebraska, I think it was just last week, and there had this big billboard, a digital billboard, and it just said, the largest threat to small business in America is cyber attack. And I just felt like it was perfectly, you know, ironic that I'm getting off the plane and that's the first billboard I see. And of course, it's some firm trying to sell you cybersecurity software, right? It's an advertisement for them. But if you think about it, it's the largest threat to small business. Well, America is like it's the most powerful nation in the world. If you were going to hack something, that's the thing to hack. Now, the difference, if you think about it, for a small business is usually there's like a server. You really just need to protect like one server or something like that, or maybe your website. But think about it. In a typical state, you, Mike was asking, where do we get these data? In a typical state, who has access to this registration database? Who has access to the router? Who has access to these various things? It's not just one central computer you have to defend. Think about what a state has to do to defend itself. It has to have, it has to protect the Secretary of State's office. That's to protect the Department of Health because they add and remove people when they die. 
uh, they remove people when they die, they're supposed to anyway. They don't, they, lately, they've been bad about that. Um, they, the Department of Motor Vehicles, they have Motor Voter. Since 2008, it's been easy to just go in, register for a license, and bam, you're automatically registered. They add people. And then, of course, the local the local counties do. So that's at least four places in a state that have access to the database. But think about it. Access in every county, okay? There's like multiple points of entry, and getting into any one of those gives you access to all of them. So I was asking the Secretary of State in Ohio, I said, um, I, I offered him a deal. I, I met with him about a month ago, uh, two months ago, I guess now, time flies. And, and I said, look, Mr. Lindell is in possession of 37 terabytes of, of electronic activity during the election. I've demonstrated that our election is corrupt. I will. I would love to work with you. I'll point. We'll find all your vulnerabilities. We'll bring in our expert team. We'll fix the state of Ohio, and you guys can lead the nation in election reform. Let's go! Hooray! 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 And they're saying, No, no. We know our, our machines are not connected to the internet. We know we're safe. We know we're secure. I said, Look, you have a choice. I said, You have a choice. You can either work with us now, and we'll point all the <coughs> or later when the cyber symposium happens, you have egg on your face. Which is your choice. You can do it now or later. They said, they sure? And they said, they said, oh no, Dr. Frank, we know we're not connected to, we know that we're safe. And I'm like, how do you know this? They said, oh, we buy these um, Center for Internet Security developed systems called Albert. They prevent internet hacking attacks. I, I just thought, wait a minute. Who owns up, China? And, and, and then I, well, but wait a minute. They, they have machines that can't connect to the internet. Why do they need devices that protect them from internet hacking during the election. I, I can't imagine why that would be. But anyway, so you, you, so the thing is, is, but uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna save one more piece of news for a second reveal. Tonight, seven o'clock, big reveal. Okay, there's, there's a reveal for the state of Ohio too. Yeah, and, there, and what we're talking about, you guys, what we're talking about here, and we're gonna, we're gonna throw it out there on the third day, is the solution, is the solution. You start with melting down the machines and make them into prison bars. <laughs> They're gone forever, everybody. They are gone. You can't have them anymore. And we're going to show that. When, and we're going to show this over the next three days. The uh, you can't even if they they can sit there. Here's a good example. They said, why why did our Democrats warn this? Why is our government why didn't our government capture this data? These packet captures because they were told they weren't going to be online. Well, why would you need to take flood insurance if there was, if there's no flood coming? That's a great, I mean, great it's, point. It's, it is a good point, and it's like, why are they covering up? You just talked like you just met with what it was the secretary. Secretary of State. State of Ohio. Secretary yeah. of State. I want to tell everybody, every single state got hacked. Every, every single state. one. Every, every state. single one. We're gonna get up here as soon as we're when we're gonna start doing state by state. And, and what you're going to find, I'll give you, I'll give you a first clue that we're going to have up here. We're going to have people we'll go by a state. We'll flip up. Let's say it's New Hampshire. Now you're going to have the. All right. You're going to have. See, the I think we have a different uh, perspective on government. Park, Park B T O. He says, all of our laws are backed by the Constitution, which allows for law and order, the right to vote, determines who makes the laws. For instance, the purge could be legal, legal next year, so stealing the election is the worst crime. See, I don't think the Constitution allows for law and order. I think government itself operates on theft, because taxation is theft. So government in itself is a inherently immoral entity, according to my, uh, my political philosophy. So, I mean, stealing the election, it's like, okay, you're stealing some theft machine. Like, you're st I mean, I guess that's pretty bad, but I mean, in terms of, like, doing that as opposed to, like, actually harming someone, you know? I think harm is, like, the... The biggest thing to worry about, you know, this was just a blessing. like you're saying, oh, they steal the election, so then they could possibly do the purge. Like, okay, like then doing the purge would be the bad thing, not stealing the election in and of itself. Like, yeah, obviously it's bad, but is it the worst crime? I wouldn't call it the worst crime. That's that's hyperbole. Some of the computers let in, some are some are blocked, or they break in. But we do know you can't explain Dominion and stop covering it up. They just sued two more people this morning. It's, it's you know, that's, uh, 
It's all the machines too, by the way. You mentioned you mentioned New Hampshire and Marilyn Todd's here from New Hampshire, where are you? Marilyn, she's a super mom. She has gathered so much data uh, that, that that correlates so well with what we're doing. It's a super mom, like an actual like super mom. Like you're saying, these people are super at being moms. Most people realize this, but it was the first time Mike had seen most of these data, and he was quite excited about it. It was pretty fun for that interview. And I remember at one point referring to it like I thought they were talking about some kind of group, but I don't. Ohio, and you said, well, because and I, I said, well, because they had asked me, and then you asked me this question. And it was sort of like. Remember when O.J. O.J. Simpson had to put the glove on, right? You never a lawyer never asks a question he doesn't know the answer to, right? The lawyer should never ask. Mr. Professor, right? But I mean, <laughs> you should never ask a question you don't know the answer to. But Mr. Lindell says, well, "Wait a minute, what do you think Ohio actually was?" And I can tell, like after he asked that, he's like, "Oh man, did I just step in it? I hope he gives the right answer." Do you remember that? And then, and then I said, "I think it's 16 percent." And he's like, "All right, that's exactly what the electronic data say. Remember, because the official number was 8 percent." And so the electronic data confirmed. So our data were going right, right hand in hand. Mine showed 16%, his showed 8%. It, 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 well, no, 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 it was 8% reported. Yes, but I and said both 16. both of ours matched. Exactly. You know, every single thing. There's right. only one truth here, everybody. Yes. A, a, a capture is a capture is the real is the real. Yes. When our election was hacked in every state by China, when they were hacked, everyone, it, no matter, I don't care if you go, if you come in the other direction in Arizona, and you go, you come in and you use audits, and you've got to, you know, you'd have to do, you do these audits, the paper, the machines. When you do an autopsy, you got to do everything. But they won't give the packet captures. What? You know? <laughs> but even when they do find what they probably have right now, we already know a hundred and some thousand votes were flipped in Maricopa County. I already know that. I'm sitting up here. I'm just waiting. Now they're, they're, those audits will come in, and this, when we get through in these three days, Every single state's going to want an audit. Every single state's going to want an audit. Everyone. It'll be like the song, you know, from this, from the lakes of Minnesota, and that song that Steve Greenwood sings, all across our land, we want it back. I, I like I like uh, Mike's obviously a marketing guy. And I like I like the phrases he comes up with. Like he says, yeah, well, well, at, at the end of the election, we're going to melt down all the machines and make bars out of them. Is that, is that, is that, that's a good marketing line, isn't it? <laughs> and we're going to have we're going to on Thursday it'll be revealed a, a way. way and you know what? Here's a good thing. <laughs> There's another fake news. Terrible media. Terrible journalist. I announced about two weeks ago that we were going to reveal. A, a way to a, a replacement for the machines. I've seen it. I believe it's hack proof. You're nothing. You can't go online. And it's a it's a combination of if these that this group came up with. And you know what they put in the news? Mike Lindell is monetizing his thing. He's going to run pillow ads and he's going to get his technology. It's not mine. We're giving it to the American people. There's no charge on Thursday, everybody. And then when they say that stuff, he's monetizing. You know, we've had, since I've lost everything, we keep losing. Now, my 2,500 employees, I have not had to lay one off yet. And, it, and it's, because, it's because we are reaching out. We've shifted our stuff to people, you know, having to go to direct to the consumer. You know, and that's, this is, if, if, you, if I didn't have money, I think I will put it, one shift, last city and, up and, around uh, here. I can't decide exactly what they're doing where. this to me, and they're doing it to small businesses across our country that can't stand up and don't have a voice. They're by the tens of right thousands. Here. And for different reasons. You came up with this mass mandate thing or this vaccine thing, or you got taken off YouTube because you, you complained about something. You said, I don't, I don't want to do this. You know? Or Vimeo, or Google, any of them. You, see, <coughs> you know, this isn't fair. You're gone. There, you're erased. Cool. You're erased. You're erased. Yeah, Petra. You know? And they keep doing this. It's because <coughs> the whole thing broke. Oh, shush, shush. And this is what it comes down to. When we get done with this, everyone's, you know, we all stand up together. And they can put that thing, Mike Liddell's the biggest threat to America, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, this is insanity, everybody. I'm talking on there. I'm talking to everybody. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, it don't matter. You know, when I walk the streets, here's the big lie. I was out in California for two weeks, about a month and a half ago. I walk the streets. I don't have all this protection on me. I probably should have coming up to this. But I, the people, and they're recognizing me. 
I couldn't find one person in California that comes up and you know is upset because I'm trying to get to the bottom of to save our country for for all of us. I told Jim Acosta, Jim, I'm doing this for you. This is American dream. You're living a dream. You get to hit hit people every day. You do a hit job. You know, it's what you like, I guess. But then what my point being is is any anyone out there can be anything and do anything they want to be if they want, you know, if they want to make something of themselves, but that's gone. That's gonna be gone. So it's the big lie that we're a divided country. This is a, you know, you've never heard me. CNN the other day, when I did that interview, he started attacking me that I said at, about Biden and Kamala Harris. And the Democrat, I said, you're lying. You guys all seen it. He said, you're lying. I never said one thing about bad thing about the Democrat. I did, I haven't, because this they just used that party. They Democrats weren't, and this is all of us. You know, we're all people. I have friends that are on both sides. They we're not a divided country. That's they want us to think we're divided with racism and all. No, we're not racism. So that's, you know, we're, that's where we're bringing all, like, you're, you're, we're bringing evidence. We have to get it out there. And this is, you can't argue with mathematics, right? No, I mean, you're yeah. a lawyer. Okay, now, from a lawyer's <laughs> perspective, would you win a court of law if you took these these mathematics and you and you brought it into a courtroom with you with people? I'll bet you anyone that watched that is going, if that's true, because they would they, maybe someone would say, well, I'd have to go get those things from the Secretary of State in my state. You just heard what did they do? They, they, they sorry, you don't get to see it. Well, well, what I would say is, if I don't seem nervous because I'm not. I haven't had one law professor, one trial attorney that wants to have this discussion. Dr. Frank meets the rules of evidence. He gets to sit in the chair. He gets to testify. You, the juror, gets to weigh his credibility. That's the way it works. And the bad guys can get their bought and paid for experts. They can testify and they can poke holes. They won't even let us have that. So to put this into context, I've tried murder cases. You've got murderers that get experts. They get their bought off witnesses. They all get to take the stand. Yet red blooded Americans who just want a fair election can't get those same protections. That's what we're talking about here. So yes, under a rule of law, his work comes in. And then we're gonna start getting into this conversation about PCAPs. So this is something that I would want you to think about in terms of the packet capture. I've had it translated to me by Lady Draza, Draza Smith. It's basically a, it's a conversation. That's what it is, it's a recording. And some of you are gonna go, I'm not a tech person. I don't understand tech. Well, I've had cases where we've had bad guys who were recorded and we had to authenticate those recordings. And guess what? I didn't know who that person was, but someone else did and we've got white hat. We've got people that understand the conversation. And that's all you need, folks, in the court of law. To authenticate it, then it comes in. Then you, the juror, guess what? Rinse, repeat. You weigh the credibility. So the, the amount of candor and courage that Mike Lindell is demonstrating to have these packet captures here is an amazing thing. So all of this, if the court system wasn't broken, gets in. Doesn't mean that we're gonna, doesn't mean that we have a verdict yet. You get to decide, the American people get to decide if this evidence meets the burden of proof. So what is that burden of proof? In a criminal uh, landscape, you're talking about beyond a reasonable doubt. In a civil landscape, you're talking about preponderance of evidence. I have never had a case with this kind of evidence. We're talking about beyond a shadow of a doubt. I've never had this kind of conviction about what I've seen. It's 100%, now I hate it when he says that, because he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. You know, you understand, this is about getting evidence out there. And, and you don't have to prove 100% to get you to hear it. It's a very low standard to get it to you to listen to. But he's right. If we could just get the snake news out of the way, we would come right. back with the same abiding conviction that your election was stolen. Anything. And everyone on, on the stage that you're going to hear from has risked their reputation in some ways. I have no fear about what we've got here. So take stock in that, be encouraged. Yeah, thank you. And what, if you all, if you all watched,
but I absolute proof, absolute interference, and absolutely nine zero. That was to that was to try and get the word out that hey, I have something. And I and I think back back in absolute, I think interference. I said I wanted to do a national poll. Everybody just come in, and I didn't even want you to come in unless you said I'm a hundred percent. They're guilty. And we, they did this. But that's but I couldn't I couldn't get it out there. The media blocks it every time. You don't even get to it. It comes out, you put something out, it's a blip on the radar, and what do they do? When you got social media where you can't send it viral, <laughs> think of that. You know, they can do anything they want. Crooked Google can just stop it. You can't even Google your own name. Remember I told you that. They just they stopped this. They tried to physically stop it this morning. And now they're trying, you know, they'll do these, they'll put out their narratives, which we're going to call them out on. But that's the biggest enemy of the United States right now that is obviously the China attack, but the media. If you can't get the word out, you're going to hear from another country today. You're going to hear from another country in an hour or so. Now, around the world, this is going on. If you get the voice, if you get the media, look at, like I said, you can, you'd win a case every time with everything we have. Look, if I got a jury of regular American folks, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, I bring this case home. There's no doubt. Like I said, when I say that we've never had evidence like this, when you have your red team and you've got mathematicians across the country that have verified this, when you have over 5,000 sworn affidavits by people that don't have a dog in the fight that are saying, I will risk prison under a penalty of perjury to tell you what I saw and what I heard. Don't you think those people should have the right to be heard? You put the case together, right? right? So a brick, a brick is not a wall. You've got the math brick. You've got the hacking cyber interference brick. You've got the personal knowledge uh, affidavit bricks. And you start building that wall. And then pretty soon all of us see that wall for what it is. It's solid. You can touch it. And once you've seen it, there's no way to unsee it. So do the work. Have to do. You just have to apply your own thinking, right. and not let the snake news do your thinking for you. And, and spread the word to the. We got three days, everybody. Three days, and they and the media starts in again. They're going to try this three days to stop this from getting out there. But I want to. I want to. I, I can't say it again. I can't say it enough. Remember when I was on Jimmy Kimball? This is very key. When he asked me, would I do it if the shoe is on the other foot? And I said, yes, of course I would. I said, this is our country. It doesn't matter who's in there as president right now. They came and took this. China took our election. This is it. There's no tomorrow. I'm serious. There's no tomorrow. Now you say, well, Mike, did they, you know, sure you would do that. The Washington Post and another one came to Minnesota. They came to Minnesota after Jimmy Kimmel. They questioned everyone I could know, my ex-mayor. I people that probably, certain, some of them don't like me, they questioned people on all sides of the party. They, they asked him, would Mike Lindell really do that? Come on. Every single one of them said, yes, he would. Because I would expect any of you, if you knew what I had, yes. I don't care where you are in your walk, or your far left, far right, middle, whatever, all this political garbage, if you had what I had and you knew that this country was attacked, wouldn't you do what I did? I wouldn't have had my pillow. It wouldn't matter. It would be gone. The American dream is gone. And I'm speaking to people, the journalists out there that are blocking this and writing, writing stuff like John Jackson, you know. Mike Lindell delayed his cyber symposium. Did he say he was hacked after saying he was hacked? The media is the, pump, is the enemy of the people. Social media and the media. That's what they're doing. If you have that, they have everything. We've got to wake up. We've got to tell everybody. That's what I've been saying for two weeks. Tell your friend. Tell your friend. Tonight at 7 o'clock, you need to tell far and wide. This is something you've never heard before, something you've never seen before. That's huge. I mean, it's going to be, it's, and this is just some of the stuff we're going to drop. And not just now, the cyber forensic experts looking at all these uh, that it, the data that I have, and we're going to start putting up in a minute here, we're going to start putting up states. We got 25 states to go through today, in between all the news that's absolutely going to, it's earth shattering. It's going to be awesome. Because you know what? After this three days, 
Never again. I, I really want the media to go to think and lay in bed tonight on your my pillow, and you lay there, and you, and you go, and you go. Now that you know what they're gonna put, Mike Lindell does a shout out for his pillow. <laughs> now, it's all we, we we knew this is why he had it. Yeah. They're disgusting. They're gonna they're gonna find they're gonna find this hit. But you know what? If you're if you're a journalist and you're with the politicals and the CNNs of the world or the, the New York Times or Washington Post, Daily Beast, the Business Insider, it goes on and on. I'm not even down to the next level. The salons, these guys are up and coming. They, they just, you know, whoever can sensationalize and do the biggest hit. I want you to lay in bed tonight and do what you watch, especially that movie that everybody should be sharing. Share that movie, it's on breakspeech.com, 18 minutes. Share it around the world. And you lay there tonight, and you think, and you and you pray to God. God, am I am I doing the right thing? Because you're going to have to answer. Because we're losing. If we lose our country, the, if, if it falls here, it falls the whole world. Yeah. God's given us grace for such a time as this. We're in the greatest time in history to be alive. You know why? Because this is we are here, and we have caught this. We caught them, and we're going to right the ship. Yeah. So, so Mike is setting the stage. Everyone here has seen a Rocky movie, right? Everyone's seen Rocky. What the last dun, eight dun, months dun, or nine dun, months dun, has dun, felt dun, like dun, is the first two thirds of a Rocky film. You know, Rocky's down on the mat. What he's foreshadowing is you're gonna start seeing these people, pack captures coming in, and that's a jab. Rocky's getting up, it's another jab. What we're gonna set into motion this week is that third act. And we all love the last five minutes of those Rocky movies, right? So it's time to start punching back, and, and it's coming. So excited. Absolutely. And, you're, and you, when we get to the third day, everybody, too, remember we have the replacements. We have the answer to get rid of the machines. But we also we are going to show you what our pathway is to get the selection taken down and get this, and get this yeah. shine out of our country. Yeah. What, I, I got, Mike, I just got a question from somebody. They were saying... How many people would it take to do the corruption that we've seen? In other words, how many people in America? And, and you know, because usually when I explain the algorithms, people are saying, well, gee, you'd have to have a corrupt person in every county. And no, no, you, no, you don't. You no, you don't. Yeah. And that's a good point. Yeah. When, when you get into cyber, for, or cyber forensics and cyber attacks, yeah. you only need one person. Yeah. One person only need world. one person. One. This is where we're at. In our world, we're living in now, in the, in the age we're in with computers, and the thing of, you know, you have cyber attacks on a gas line, and they, do, they, they patch a protected a white hat hacker, they come in there, and then you have cyber attacks on our credit card companies, our businesses. Israel just got it today, I just announced it, yeah. on both businesses and government. But you know what? They were smart. If you've seen the movie, it said they were talking about taking over our country in 3035, the CCP. You know what? It got a, it's pretty easy when all you got to do is do it in the election. Because if you take an election and you own the election and no vote ever matters again, then you get you can make decisions on everything. You can order. You can order this. Things like let's shut down the uh, 50,000 union jobs. You can order borders opened up. And that fentanyl and, gar and uh, human trafficking can come in. You can, uh, you can make um, nonsensical things like they did in California when they put up things during this China virus. They, put up, they made them build outside enclosures like Minnesota at the restaurants, made them build it. We had to eat outside in the snow. Whoever had the highest snow may put their plate on top of it. It's crazy. And California, though, I'll give you one example. I went out there to visit a friend of mine, and this was after the Super Bowl. And there's this beautiful restaurant you still couldn't eat inside. And by building another building onto it with plastic and stuff. And we talked about the Super Bowl. He goes, yeah, I built, put all this money into the Super Bowl. You know what they did to him in California? They said, no TVs in the buildings for the Super Bowls for the restaurants. Are you kidding me? So they all went home and stuck inside uh, houses. Minnesota, you know what they did at Thanksgiving? They said we couldn't have more than eight people in our house. I could be off Facebook fact checkers. It might have been nine. All I know is part of my family couldn't go there. And then at Christmas, they gave us a little more. 
This is, in, this is insane. How nice of them. And I'll tell you, I'm bringing it up right now. I'm going to do this, brother. You talk about that vaccine that's not FDA approved. Let me tell you about that. Anybody, if you think the vaccine and you want to take it, good for, good for you, special K, good for you. But don't worry about what I'm doing. Because if it's supposed to be so good, you shouldn't care. You're trying, you're, you're trying to help me. Oh, thank you. I don't need that help. If, we, if me and a bunch of people don't take that, that's our business. We'll take that risk. I, for one, think if I take it, I'm at risk of dying. It has not been, and you, let me tell you about the vaccine. Last summer, you've seen things get attacked like hydroxychloroquine, the stuff that they brought me, ceratavir. There were many, many, a friend of mine's son just died. He was at 182 IQ. There was over 30 things that worked. Do you know what our government did? The reason you couldn't get that, that vaccine approved, you couldn't get it approved for emergency use if there was something else out there. So they had to make it so there was nothing else out there. That's what they did to us. But you know what? For some reason, the media, if everyone's seen, I was attacked on Anderson Cooper for 18 minutes on CNN. All I was was a guy, these guys brought me this, and I'm going, it works. I took it. My, my pillow never, we never had any go, to go home for 14 days. We took it. We were fine. It's disgusting. Anderson Cooper attacked me for 18 minutes. Go look it up. Go look it up. And why? Because I'm a guy, that, an entrepreneur that has a story from a crack addict to where I'm at. And I cared. I cared about the people. I was so excited. Brought that in the White House. And me and Ben Carson and the president leaked out of there. He said, you know, he, it was something to help. Can we bring it to a hospital to do an IND? A simple thing, right? Simple request. We want an IND to try it. We've got the hospitals lined up. It leaks out of there to the press, to the news media. So they set up a hit job, and they squish it. Now, I went on CNN, and I went on there for a reason. I, I knew I was going to get hit, but I had, I'm going, you know what? As soon as I go on that, I'm going to go over there and show them the safety data that was already there, but I didn't want to give it to CNN. I was going to go over to Fox. Go over to Fox, and boy, they would have got it, right? Go on CNN, get a check. Ha-ha, uh -huh, here we go. Look at this. You know what Fox did? They wouldn't have me on. Same thing they're doing now. Shame on Fox. This is what the media, they're all like that. You got heroes today. OAN and Newsmax got sued just for being here today. It was this morning, everybody. It's, you know, the media, and then I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep saying this. These three days, it's not just about the evidence. I got that. You guys, I've been telling you I got that. It's over for the evidence. In November and December, we had more evidence than we ever needed in world history. More than anything, to, to, you could have tried 5,000, 5 million clients probably and just go, we're going to use this evidence for you, this for you. It was over. Why didn't, they, why didn't it win? Why didn't it get anywhere? Because of the media. They did it, whatever they wanted. Beep, boom, boom, boom. Man, it's all a big plan to just, to not, to, you know, when you sit in the twilight zone and go, <laughs> okay, um, of course, 20 some thousand people can't vote that don't live in a state. No, yes, they can. You know, I, the best one is when the president, with Brad Rassenberger in Georgia, and he starts listing off all these things, you know, non residents that voted, dead people that voted. Those were real numbers that came from the Secretary of State's office. We all heard the tape. He said, just give me a, find a couple of them. What he meant was he'd take any one of those piles, any two columns or one column, of people that can't vote, and they only lost by 11,370. And that's all he was saying. So what did they do? You know, he, on live, on live, we all heard it. He says, the Secretary Brad says, they're the wrong numbers. He's the Secretary of State. They said, well, the President says, well, where's the right numbers? Or where do we get these numbers? And his gal said, we got them from him. We got them from Brad. And, and the President, when are you going to give us the real numbers? This stuff happened, and it was like Twilight Zone stuff. But I want to tell everybody, that's a miracle of all time that all that happened. Because if all of that didn't happen, we wouldn't be talking here. They'd still have the machines, and our country would be gone. Yep. At least now, there's not just hope. There is, it's all here. We got all the evidence. How do we do these three days? 
if we don't get the word out now, this is our one shot. This is it. These three days of this symposium, it's it. Millions of eyes. I just checked at one point in the beginning, 40 million people were on there. Now, again, some were bots and trolls coming in from all over the world and attacking, and they're coming in. If we don't get the word out and get it past this, the bad media, get it out there. And it's going to, it could be hard. Frankspeech.com, everybody give that to. There's a reason I got it. So they can't take it down like Vimeo and YouTube. You know, it, right now, let's see. I mean, you put up right now the news. Let's just check. Mike Lindell refuses to lead the cyber symposium stage for 72 hours, but lunch is available in the hallway. <laughs> Look this. this is our news, people. Let's just see who wrote that. Is that, hey, by the way, you guys. All day long. Oh, well, sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, park at BTO. By the way, they can't well. see. Mike Lindell, <laughs> my mic was off. But yeah, well, thanks for letting me know about the super moms. That's interesting. It don't matter. People say, Mike, you just keep pouring money. We don't have a country. So I don't have a company then. My, my employees, nobody has it. Does it matter? It doesn't matter if we don't have a country. Sorry, this was the headline. Can you believe that? It's from uh, MSN.com, and it says it's written by. Got to make sure we call up. Oh, solar quotes. Okay, uh, Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas, are you here? Stephen Douglas. Okay. Now he's in the lunch line. Now let me tell you what he put. Um. Mike Lindell is hosting a cyber symposium on election fraud today in North Dakota. Much North like Dakota. Yeah, that's what he put. This guy put North, <laughs> North Dakota. Dakota. So that's, is that fake news? He can't even, he's picking on North Dakota. What is he doing? This guy, let's really call him out. This is disgusting. Where's our Facebook fact checkers now? Stephen Douglas write this one hour ago. You know, let's see, you all been here. We've been live streaming. Um, in North Dakota on election fraud, okay? This is on a crime of history. This is about China. He should put an attack by China on our country, but he puts election fraud. Much like the launch of his social media platform in the spring, there have been technical difficulties that he and his friends are calling hacks. Do you listen to how disgusting that is? What a scum. No, that's scum. He's scum. He's a traitor to our country. The day, the day started, this is what people are hearing out there that they aren't here. This is what they're hearing. The day started with Dominion dropping some new lawsuits. And if you want to see Lindo react to anything else over the next few days, stay tuned because he's already passed up lunch, proclaiming he would not stop streaming for the entire 72 hours. He's right there. One thing, I haven't had lunch yet, okay? Um, and yes, we are streaming around the world for the next 72 hours. We're going to flip. There's... Everyone in the world, we're at, at 9 o'clock tonight, at 9 o'clock, the cyber forensic guys will be done at 5. They can come in here and watch the, last, the four hours between 5 and 9. You won't want to miss that ever. This is historical tonight. And then at 9 o'clock and 9 in the morning, we're flipping this on its head. And now we're going to go, gee, since uh, we were attacked, we lost like an hour in the beginning. So what I'll probably do... I'll be going over here, and then we'll just add it on the third day. They trip me. We're not going to let them cut any time off this thing because of their hacks and what they've done. I just think this is disgusting. This just shows you what the media does. You know, you're out there now. I got, you know, people sitting out there, and they go, they look up the symposium, and this is the garbage they see. Mike Lindell is legit upset that some people want to break for lunch in his side. Okay, this is Justin. Baragona, okay, Justin Baragona, 
Mike Lindell is, is legit upset that some people want to break for lunch in his cyber symposium, yelling that he's going to stay up on stage for three days straight. There's no breaks. You guys can go eat, that's fine, but I ain't eating. I'm staying here for 72 hours. Do you, do you remember me saying that? Does anybody remember me saying that? No. You can sleep, we'll cover it. Okay. <laughs> well, you. the only true thing in there is I haven't eaten. <laughs> that's that's there's lazy so, for watching. There's so much, there is, you know, okay, I'm going to read this. Once again, this is written by, this one's written by Justin Barragano. Oh no, this, now we're back to the other guy, Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas, let's not forget his name, everybody. He, then he writes, there is so much incredible comedy in that one minute clip. Lindell's handed a paper, and then his assistants tried to pull him off stage to show him something which may or might not have been lunch. We know that lunch is involved because the guy says it's time for a lunch break. Lindell's having no part of that. There are no breaks for streaming 72 hours. This is disgusting. We're talking about something for our country and world, and this guy is doing a hit piece. Now why? Let me tell you something, Douglas, Stephen Douglas. You know what? You, the United States is at stake. Why did you do it, Stephen? Why did you write this? Why did you write this? What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Are you going to write? You're going to write what Mike said now about you? Let's, I'll tell you what, Stephen. Go write an article right now. You're probably in our audience because you're here. You know, but you're not going to show your face, I'm sure, because you guys are all cowards. You're cowards. You're media cowards, all of you. You're cowards. Not only fake news, but you're cowards. All of you back there, cowards. All the fake news and these journalists that sit behind and sit in their hit jobs. This is what we're doing. This is a battle. We win this and we have all the evidence. It's just, you guys, it's a given. We have it all. If we don't break this media, you know, and bring them back to reality, whatever they're doing, some of them must be paid off. Let's just try and figure out why would Stephen Douglas do this? Let's ask ourselves. Does he not like our country? Is he doesn't like it? He doesn't like Mike Lindell because I was a Christian conservative. And I, you know, realize I had never voted in my life. You guys know I was an ex crack addict, an ex addict. I met Donald Trump. And it was so common sense. I go, wow, that's what politicians should be for the people and do stuff that you, when you, when you, when they have a problem solution, that they make decisions based on helping people, all people. That's the way it should be. But we lost that with our election now, or not because we lost Donald Trump, because they took it with machines. China's here, you know. So you got to ask yourself: Is Stephen Douglas a communist? I don't know. You gotta look at when you have a devi when you bring have him up. Hey, bring him up. When you have deviations like this, a deviation. Why would this guy do this? Why would he do this? Either he, either his boss won't let him write the truth, or he's or he's part of the attack, or he um, or what? Or he just likes uh, because I got his name called out. He didn't expect that, so it couldn't have been that. But this we're gonna do. So we got to ask anybody that knows Stephen Douglas, say, why would you do such a thing on a historical week of three days? We're trying to save our country. This isn't a what? democracy. What? He's really, he's really getting the detail of calling this these guys out. Country. This is the world. This is, if they take us now, you, you want to be Venezuela? Is that what you want? Stephen Douglas, talk to some people that are in Venezuela now. The machines took their country in 2003 or four. And they're sitting down, they never get it back. Their hope, I've talked to some, their hope <clears> is that they've been praying for years that in our country, that we catch them. Because this is a global thing, everybody. This is your, you're gonna see Brazil is gonna be your, we're gonna have, and we're gonna have many, many uh, countries that are worried. I'm gonna pull one more just in case. While you're, while you're doing that, I just uh, was notified my TikTok account came down. So, they took your TikTok down. <laughs> you know, by the communist, communist TikTok. They just took his TikTok down. You guys see what they're doing right now? What they're doing. Everyone that's up here, because the more we get into it, and I'm telling you, 7 o'clock tonight, everybody in the world, you better be tuned in. Because you know what? They're going to keep clawing. They're going to keep attacking our, what I put up on Frank, frankspeech.com. By the way, if you're overseas, 
and you can't and you can't get in there, go to lindellgb.com. I've got backups to backups, but this is getting out. Our message is getting out. It's getting out. And we're going to get it out there in spite of these, but we're going to call out all the things, the people that have done it. They took away your TikTok. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't they, this, is why, this is why we let you in here. We didn't put names on your tags. We didn't put names on you. Because you know what? They'd have probably attacked and took your Facebooks down, but we need them to get out there. One, one thing to think about, folks. What we're doing is we're calling the snake news bluff. Because there's another component we haven't talked about at all. You've got the, you've got the air game, right? As, as uh, Bannon has pointed, that Mike's in charge of. If you don't believe the data that you just saw with Dr. Frank, let us get our full friends to it. Let us do our canvas, right? Either either he's telling the truth, and we can back it up, or we can't. So ask yourself, why is it that in certain states? You've got attorney generals like Dana Nessel who are weaponizing our rules against attorneys to get them get them to lose okay. their law license. Okay, here we go. This is a Media Matters, written by Zachary Pleat and Eric Pleatville. Pleat okay. And uh, hold on. It says here are the right wing outlets that promoted Mike Lindell's cyber symposium of the election lies. This was before we started, everybody. Right wing pillow made him. Mike Lindell, one of the most loyal purveyors of the big lie that a 2020 president election was stolen. Let me tell you right now, the big lie is the big lie. Yeah. While he might seem like a comical figure, you know, it goes, it goes on down. Mike Liddell says, and then it tells about pulling my ass from Fox News. Let me tell you why I pulled my ass from Fox News. Let's talk about that. By the way, where's Fox? They're not here. It couldn't be a weather channel because they wouldn't report. They're lost. Coverage. It's a statistic. They, they, um, maybe, maybe they will report this. We, 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 you know, Fox, if you're out there and you're watching, maybe you could kind of redeem yourself. But let me tell you, when I wanted to get this out, our, we have this one shot for the whole world to hear the evidence and hear what's, what really happened and show everything, the 100% evidence. 100%. Okay? Now, what they tried, what they, so what I said, you know what? If Fox won't have me on to talk about anything, I'll buy an ad. I don't know if you all seen the ad. It's up there. It's a one-minute ad talking about the cyber symposium. I gave it to all the media, all the media, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, everybody, because I was going to pay, which I have millions of dollars in those hands. And I put it, I gave it to Fox, and Fox tried to delay. It comes back, we're not accepting the end. So I'm supposed to sit there and go, you know what, you're part of the cancel culture? I'll tell you what, you think that, you think my money matters? It don't matter, because it, it, I won't have a company. So I pull my hand from Fox, and everyone's going, where are you going to spend that money now, Mike? You know, no, you don't get it. We're direct response. That costs my pillow a million dollars a week by me pulling them ads. But it doesn't matter because we got one shot and everyone out there reporting on this and sharing it and sharing it to frankspeech.com to get up there. You think I needed a social media platform to put out like this? No, I built it because we were losing our voice. Your Twitters, your crooked Jack Dorsey's and Mark Zuckerbuck's of Facebook, they're criminals. They are criminals. They're going to be the first ones when we melt down the machines and make bars. There's, but then I'm just going through a couple of these because we're going to do it. They stay on. CEO Mike Bill, this is Yahoo News. They're horrible, everybody. Yahoo News, by the way. They're the ones, but they attack me. Now realize, everybody, if I didn't have them, I did for five months, just like when they attacked Donald Trump in the summer of 15. You know, it's all I had. It's all I had. Every day I had to break stuff. Mike Lindell lost four more retailers. And all them journalists would call me. They're all on my phone. Every one of them. Mike, you lost four more regions. Did you hear about China again attacking us with Dominion, Dominion, Dominion? Every day I had to do this. Because it was just to keep getting the word out. That's all I had because Fox, you can hear from them. It's disgusting. We count on them. They turned us, what, the night of the election? They said, oh, Arizona's good. No, it was way before that. When you can't talk about vaccines or anything or things that work when we're in the middle of it, 
a virus that's killing people and there's stuff out there that worked and Fox was the first one to say, let's suck her down. You gotta ask them, when this is all over, you gotta ask them, they gotta be held accountable. Why, why, why would you not report the news? But here's what for Yahoo News. Mike Lindell, CEO, delays start of cyber support claiming he's been hacked. Claiming he's been hacked. Mike Lindell, CEO and pro-Trump conspiracy theorist, delayed the start of his cyber, what is that, what does, I want to ask you one, what does that Donald Trump or, or, or Biden or anything have to do with this? this is the, they hacked our country and they're here. And uh, you, any, anybody out there that's a Democrat, you're the ones, you've got to really open your eyes and, and unveil and really sit and listen for the next three days and listen to what we're talking about. This isn't about, here, I'll give you an example. Here's the, here's a cover up. Brian Kemp down in Georgia. I mean, you guys just look for deviations. He, down in Georgia, after the, uh, Georgia gets stole in the epic proportions through the machines, they have more machines in any state. Could be wrong, be able to check Facebook fact checkers. And uh, he, what does he do? What, a couple months ago? Brian Kemp does, oh, now he's all about election integrity. Talking about paper ballots and worried about the mail-in ballots. That's a cover-up, you guys. It's the machines they got them. It's the computers. It's the, and then they can take a whole country with one press of a button. That's where it is. That's all deflection and lies. But this guy puts on there, we need to get the word out because they blocked this thing. And, and anyway, Yahoo basically copied them. A lot of times they just prey off each other. This is what we're going to do. We're going to call them out. And so uh, this, this whole symposium. This whole, and then we got to. And then we, this whole symposium. It's not just to show you the evidence here, right here in this room. But you got to get out. Everyone's got to get out and tell everyone. Watch. Get here and watch it, watch it, watch it. I, when I got this done, I said a thing. And they made fun of that too, the media. I made a. It was about three weeks ago. You can look it up, Mike Lindell, Elvis Presley. When I was a kid in 1973, Elvis did a thing called Via Satellite Hello from Hawaii. It was seen by over a billion people. This is back when we had live stream to a billion people. This is back when we didn't have, well, you know, we had TVs with bunny ears and black and white. You turn to watch the doc, you don't go out. Well, during that time, how did they get the word out? Overseas, everywhere around the world. He never played overseas. So they, the, the word spread, somehow it spread, where a billion people, I think it was like one-fourth of the world's population watch it. Well, I made that analogy. This is a little more important than a concert. If nobody sees this in the next three days, it's just going to be like everything else because the media will destroy us. We get one shot at this, and so all I'm asking everybody to do, keep telling everybody every day, don't read this garbage. Don't read this garbage. I got a guy in here named Zach. He wants me to do an interview with him. You know, all he does is hit shots. Garbage. Maybe we'll, maybe, you know, absolutely. This is too important. There ain't no, no interviews I'm doing. It's right here. We've got to get the word out. We've got to get the word out. I've got a suggestion. You should do an interview, but you should have him sit up here with us. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Every one of you cowards. That is a great idea. Journalists, you want your interview? He's right here, but you got the ticket. That your is mission a great idea. Is to sit here at the table, look these people in the eye. And do your interview, and then we'll see what you write. Zach, you want to be the first one? Where are you, Zach? Come on up. He's a coward. He ain't coming up. No, we want bad media. Yeah. No. I want all the I want the media here, the CNNs of the world. They have eight people here. I give them I give them credit. CNN has eight people here. Fox zero. By the way, we're going to do a mock election. The election room is going to be over here. I don't know if it's ready. Um, is the election room ready? Okay, come on up here. You guys, we're going to come on, come on up. We're going to do an election room. We're going to show you if. Uh, Path here is running the election room is over there. Where is it? Over there? Right over there. Okay, right. you guys, you're gonna what we're gonna do, you can take your time anytime and just go in there and vote. And we're gonna vote. Who do you prefer? The worst who's more to blame for our country right now? CNN yep. or Fox? That's the first vote. This, 
So you're going to go in there and you're going to vote. You're going to you're going to vote CNN or Fox. You're going to vote. What did you need? You but you're going to vote CNN or Fox, and you're all going to go in there vote. And I'm going to tell you, there's five minutes left for the election, but then we're going to go in there, everybody, and we're going to have a hacker hack it, and we're going to flip the vote, whatever it ends up being. So let's say CNN was the worst. What vote and Fox was over here? Whatever it was, we're going to, we're going to ask, how many would you like to flip? We're going to hack it, flip it in real time. Hey, Mike, okay, I'm not cheating. We're, we're going to go over and we give an overview of everything that's out there. Okay. And you can do that in a second. But I'm going to tell you this. But one of the things I wanted to do is the routers. We're going to bring a cyber guy. We're going to go pick one of them back there. We're going to bring a cyber guy in, and he's going to capture it. We're going to put him in the other room, doesn't know anything about it. We're going to capture the packet that's in the router. You're going to learn from Pat what, it, what all that is today. We're going to capture that pack, and the cyber guy is going to come in, and he's going to tell you exactly what happened. There's no way you can do it. You see the stuff over here, that data going over there on the thing? The stuff that's there, we can't read, but cyber guys can. A lot of you in the audience. So go ahead, Pat. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to be going through uh, just an overview of elections overall, where some of the uh, security breaches are. And the best part is we're going to walk you through something that a development team put together literally in about 12 hours. If you want to talk about expedited development timelines, I know who to contact whenever that happens. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Patrick Kolbeck. I'm a former Michigan State Senator. Please don't hold that against me. I was term limited. And, uh, but before I was a state senator, I was actually uh, uh, an engineer. And uh, as an aerospace engineer, I worked on the uh, cabling design for elements of the International Space Station. And I also am a certified Microsoft Small Business Specialist. And the only reason I bring that up is because I've got a, a bit of a weird background because I got one foot in public policy and understanding how the elections are supposed to work and what the laws are regarding that. And then I'm also a bit of a technical geek. So when you start talking about the keyword cyber symposium, you know, I can talk cyber. Um, not as good as some of the guys that put together this this development that's out there, but I, I'll tell you, what they pulled together was amazing. Um, they uh, have a, we'll go through exactly what they've got kicked into gear here in just a little bit, but one of the things that driven me for these last nine months is that I was actually there at the TCF Center in Detroit. Matter of fact, courtesy of my good friend Janice Daniels and good friend Debbie Haas at Election Integrity Fund, this is the actual election challenger badge that was worn by our poll challengers out at the TCF Center in Detroit. I was there from about 5 o'clock in the evening on uh, election night to after 5.30 the next day. So it was a marathon session. So for those of you who are, um, are uh, privy to all those photos of the pizza boxes over the windows, I was there. I was one of the folks blocked out of getting back in the, uh, into the uh, voting area because of uh, some bogus COVID rules that were put into place. I was challenging our, or I was training our next uh, batch of poll challengers, highlighting what they could expect going into uh, what was happening in all the different uh, counting areas. <coughs> um, I was there when the van came in at 3.30 in the morning to drop off a bunch of unsecured ballots. And I was there crawling around on the floor, can't buy cables as we were talking about before. And I can tell you, these computers were connected to the internet, which is why the data that Mike, that Mike is showing up here, Mike's data, is so important. There's no cyber symposium without cyber data. There's no cyber data without internet connection. So the whole topic of internet connectivity is a big one. And I didn't realize how big it was at the time. I was just focused on protecting the chain of custody regarding our election. That's a very important topic that nobody ever seems to want to talk about, but I don't know about you, I was always very curious. I wanted to know how in Detroit at the AV Counting Board, they took a ballot that was counted by a tabulator. Sometimes it was a needed adjudication, so there was an error, and it had to go to what was called an adjudicator workstation. And then those results were transmitted out to all the media outlets that are here, right? How does that how does that ballot follow through that chain? What's the handoff like for every single one of those handoffs? I wanted to verify that it was being done with integrity. And every single election official that I talked to 
I asked them, are these connected to the internet? And I already knew the answer. But I asked them, are these connected to the internet? And they said, no. I even asked one former state representative, David Nathan. I go, David, come on. Please, all you have to do to verify whether or not these are connected to the internet is roll your little mouse in, uh, over, the, over the cursor here. Uh, roll your mouse over the internet connectivity icon on the bottom right, and it'll pop up with the word saying connected to the internet. You know what? You didn't do that. And I, I go, well, why can't you do that? You go, you're just going to have to trust me. I go, well, that's the whole idea of a poll challenger, is that we're challenging these assertions, right? And under our state law, you're, I'm supposed to be uh, able to ask those questions. All right, instead they said, talk to the hand. All three election officials that I talked to in that context said, talk to the hand. So I went back afterwards, diagrammed out a network topology diagram. I'm a, yes, I'm a geek. I, that's what I do for fun. So I get back till like one o'clock in the morning. I'm diagramming out what I saw there and put it in, into uh, an affidavit form because I couldn't take pictures while I was there as a poll challenger. They banned it. And as soon as I would have pulled out my camera to do that, I would have been kicked out of the DCF center. But you know what happened a couple months ago? We actually have footage from the walkthrough that happened at the TCF Center before, and guess what they validated? They validated my network topology diagram and the fact that these were connected to the internet. All right, so you don't hear that anywhere. So that's why this is important. Remember, this is a cyber symposium. The idea of internet connectivity is very important. And what we're going to walk through over in that mock election center is very important as well because it's going to, we're actually going to show the PCAPs like Mike was talking about. We've got experts that can walk you through as you're casting a vote, how's that information being communicated all the way through the system? Does that make sense to everybody? Is that something you want to go off and see? All right, good stuff. Now, this is just a homegrown system, and I'm going to walk through this in just a little bit. But I want you to understand that this is not specific to any one voting system company. They all have a common backbone known as SQL Server. How many people here love to play in SQL Server land? I, believe it or not, I never thought this would come into play in my life. I used to deploy Microsoft Project Server all the time, and I would play in SQL Server every once in a while to move databases around. I never thought it would come in handy to go off and determine whether or not we had an integrity in our 2020 election. But God's got a sense of humor sometimes. Um, and why this software is so important, because there's a special module in it called SQL Server Management Studio. This SQL Server Management Studio, its ability is to go off and manipulate the database uh, to provide whatever results you want. You can edit the results of an individual data table. You can go off and swap out one database with another database. You can execute scripts that modify the, the data in those databases as you see fit. And guess what? That software is not part of the certified software application, software installation for any of our voting systems, yet we found it not just in Michigan, but in other states as well, installed on these databases. That should be a concern to everybody in this audience, because now we have non-certified software being installed on systems that led to a quote-unquote certified election. That's a big deal. How many of you guys even heard that SQL Server Management Studio is installed on these computers? Okay, better yet, how many people did not hear that they were installed? Now, now, hopefully you guys understand why Mike is so adamant about what's going on with our media. Everybody should have known that. Everybody should have known about the fact that these ESNS systems have a built-in 4G wireless modem on the motherboard. Right? Everybody should know that stuff. But they're not talking about it. That's what drives me. Here I am nine months after the election, I'm still talking about election fraud. Why is that? I put my whole professional career on hold just to make sure people get the truth out. Because frankly, nothing else matters in our country. I don't care about 2022. I don't care about 2024. And we have to fix what happened in 2020. Which means we need to have a frank and open discussion about what happened in that 2020 election which is why the data that Mike's sharing is so important, which is why the information that I've got back there on little palm cards provided by organizations like the Election Integrity Fund with these poll challengers. It's the grassroots, it's the everyday meddling kids from Scooby-Doo parlance that were the key to getting this information out because we were let down 
by our election officials and we are let down by our elected officials. So it's been the meddling kids and Mike's, Mike's our big, the, the, uh, the uh, Fred in our, uh, in our Scooby-Doo Inc., uh, our Mystery Incorporated folks, he's got the van, all right? So we're all going around the van, checking out all these different things that are going on. And I'll tell you, he's been invaluable in that context. But so has everybody else who has fed the information necessary to keep this going. So I want to thank each and every one of you that are here to help get that information out. It is critical. All right, so I'm going to walk through what we're going to talk about here today, the overall election process. There's, and, I, and, and when I'm talking about election walkthrough, I'm just putting in context what we set up over in the mock election area. When you're considering securing an election, you have to consider what happens in preparation for the election, you, uh, not just what happens on election day. So a lot of folks will sit there, including the CEO of Dominion, will sit there and say, hey, you know what? None of this stuff was connected to the internet during tabulation. Oh, that's a nice little caveat. I don't care when it's connected. I got an issue, right? Um, but preparation is a big deal. Because that's when you're going off and configuring your election equipment, right? That's when you're going off and telling them that a, that a uh, oval dot uh, one inches down and three inches across corresponds to a vote for Biden or for Trump or whatever. That's when all that configuration is done. So that election day preparation is just as important as what happens on election day. You're supposed to have public accuracy tests that occur that verify the, the uh, accuracy of the election. The EAC standard, or the uh, um, Federal Election Commission standard is one error in 250,000 scans, right? Because that's the purpose of having a machine. You want something that's reliable. It executes on a regular basis or a reliable basis, right? In Antrim County, they identified an error rate of 68%. And I, I'm a little rusty on my math because I've been studying this Common Core math thing for so long. But one over 250,000, I think, is a little bit lower than 68%. What do you guys think? Who's the math genius out here? Yeah, so there's something wrong on the face of it right there, right? All right, so election day. And then, you know, you can play with these systems anytime before you actually certify the vote. There's all kinds of games that are played after election day. So don't think that, oh, since they didn't, we don't see any timestamps of anything changing on November 3rd, then we're good. They don't stamp those elections till. And in the case of uh, our Wayne County, where I, I live, um, which is a home of uh, Detroit, they don't certify that election for two weeks afterwards, and sometimes longer. There's a lot of room for them to go off and play games in the interim. And uh, so I'm here to say, this life cycle that we're talking about election, if you think it's just about election day, think again. It's a lot longer than that. Now, we're going to simulate election day when we get back there. And maybe you could kind of bleed over into a little bit of the after the election stuff and see some of the games are going to be played. But that's where we're, I want to make sure everybody understands that. We're going to have a couple, a few different roles here. So we're going to have uh, a voter. That's where you guys fit in. All right, we're going to bring you in kind of like a, um, like a, uh, a, a ride style, one of the big amusement parks. We're going to bring you in like groups of 10 or so. And you're going to come in. We're going to... Let you, we're going to check for your ID, just so you know, it's not picture ID here. I don't know what South Dakota's laws are, but we may be violating them. Yeah, all right, picture ID. In Michigan, it's just optional. You know, we tried to get a picture ID, but we couldn't, you know, thanks. Um, so we're going to get it, we're going to get you to show your picture ID, then we'll give you a ballot, we'll cast it, and then walk through. We've got a poll worker that's going to be going out there, taking the ballots and scanning them in. we got a clerk, and then we got this guy in a hood. And we're going to show how you can change the vote in a basic election system here that they developed in 12 hours and show how that can be manipulated through tools like this SQL Server Management Studio that nobody seems to want to talk about, that's non-certified software, yet it's finding its way onto a lot of our election systems. That should be something everybody should be talking about, right? All right, so the basic process is cast a vote, scan a ballot, Tabulate it, transfer the vote tally. That's the way everything's supposed to work, right? One of the things that we have a lot of clerks that are well-intentioned, that swear that this was the, quote, most secure election in history, right? They're very adamant that what they're doing, they've executed everything uh, to the T, they dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and everything that they've done, and they're swearing that this has been a secure election. 
And I'm telling you that it's very, very possible that they are exactly genuine in those assertions that they believe that that was the most secure election possible. But I'm telling you one thing here, that sometimes they don't know what they don't know. All right? How many clerks do you know that would be, you know, inquisitive enough to pop open the chassis on their voting machine and then have the chutzpah to be able to go in there and see this is a 4G wireless modem. What's it doing on my motherboard? How many clerks do you know that do that? Nobody does that. Nobody. Even the geekiest clerk I've ever met would never do that. I'm a geek as it is, right? And I wouldn't even think of doing that. I'm assuming that we're getting certified equipment that has a nice little EAC sticker on the side, so it's got to be good, right? This is where uh, one of the folks in the back here, Sean, just highlights that our security model around certifying the configurations of our election system are based on a compliance model, kind of like the FAA with their parts on it. What they, rather than actually going in and digging into every single part and making sure that you've only got certified software installed on the machine or you've only got certified hardware configurations, they just say, well, if it came from this guy, it's got to be good. Oh, That's dangerous. thanks for the uh, follow, P Eater 69. I see no evidence that they're putting any rigor into the hardware oh. certification. Um, Let's see, and what is this? He's killing event, brain cells, is what he's uh, doing. I'm not oh. seeing a lot of rigor applied in that context either. So, oh, yeah, I'm starting to get uh, I'm starting to get pooped. To be now honest, I'm kind of tired. So I might FOIA shut it off here in the next five minutes or so. Get some food. I'm so hungry. I ate today. Guess how many replied? And gave me the information. Yep, everybody said zero. I'm, maybe we'll have that as one of our mock election votes here. Zero or 83? Uh, it was zero. Maybe we can use ranked choice voting. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is a big deal. All right, so I, I, they're not getting us the access to this information. And that's probably most concerning about all this. If what we were talking about was completely false, if this was truly the most secure election in history, why not open the door and let us go off and take a peek at what's under the hood? Why wouldn't you do that? There's an old political adage. If somebody's busy making a fool out of himself with false accusations and false assertions, you let them talk, right? You just let them talk. But when they're telling the truth and the truth that you don't want to hear, they will shut you down. And that is what's happening here. To the extent that We've got our state governments being weaponized against individuals, including myself, where even Republicans are going off and saying, you know, we don't want to deal with this whole election fraud thing anymore. Let's move on, focus in on the 2022 election. Um, the same people who say that there is no issues with election fraud in the 2020 election, all of a sudden decide that, hey, you know what, we need to pass a bunch of new legislation to make sure we protect the integrity of our elections. Well, if nothing's wrong, what the heck are they trying to fix? Right? Think about it. All right. I know we're living in a 2 plus 2 equals 5 world now, so maybe that doesn't register sometimes. But you know what? It's about time that we got serious about protecting the integrity of our election. We're going to give a small window into how those elections are executed. Just to give you an idea how vulnerable these electronic voting systems are. I'm a big, uh, you know, um, Dr. Frank coined the term uh, vote Amish. So if you guys want to start a hashtag, hashtag vote Amish, I think that's appropriate because it's not that electronic voting systems aren't, con aren't convenient. They are. The issue with electronic voting systems is that we don't have um, the ability to go off and make <coughs> sure that we can certify the integrity of each of these uh, elections properly before casting a vote with it. Plus. Here's a big difference, and it's kind of like the national popular vote versus electoral college discussion, right? We have natural firewalls called precincts. So if you've got corruption in one precinct or two precincts or three precincts, oh well, we got corruption in that one or two precincts, right? But once you put that into an electronic mode and you network that information together, now all of a sudden you're enabling one person from their basement, maybe uh, Hunter Biden, you know, with his other, his sixth laptop that we don't have seen yet, somebody in their basement can go off and hack an entire election. Now, I'm not proposing one person would do something like that. I'm more proposing like a whole building in Beijing that would be going off and doing that. 
Um, but you centralize those elections and centralize the ability to manipulate the votes. Now, all of a sudden, you are making some of these broad scenarios around election fraud much, much more plausible. And if you go vote Amish instead, now, all of a sudden, you're making it much more difficult, and you're going to have a lot more folks that are going to be more akin to saying, this isn't right, and they'll become whistleblowers in what happens. There's a lot more people to go up and call out what happens. And wouldn't it be nice to have some whistleblowers coming out on some of these electronic voting systems? Wouldn't it be nice to encourage them in Project uh, Veritas mode with James O'Keefe and those guys? Wouldn't it be nice to have some of these guys get a conscience and say, this ain't right? Right? That's what we need to be happening. So, they, all right, this is modified a little bit from what I, this is an old presentation, guys. So, configuration control applies to PowerPoint presentations as well as software and hardware security configurations on your, uh, on your uh, uh, voting systems. And uh, this is case in point. Bottom line is, I hope you guys are concerned about the integrity of our voting process. If you want to go up and see it on how an electronic voting system, modern system works today, just come on back there. We got some technical experts that are brilliant. They'll be able to walk you through some of this. And uh, I'll, I'll, I just encourage you to stop on by. We're going to be, as Mike was talking about, we're going to be doing mock elections uh, throughout the events here today, or throughout today, tomorrow, and the day after here, just to have some fun, give you guys a chance to go off and delve into it. And, uh, and have a little bit of fun, but also hopefully learn a little bit about how vulnerable these election systems really are. It's the network that we've got set up. And I want to point out, how many hackers are still left in here versus out in the breakout room? All right, well, many of you guys know some hackers, right? So our tech guy said, you know what? Let's issue a little bit of a challenge, shall we? There's a Wi-Fi network in here called uh, Minion Wireless. And if you are a hacker, you know how to get through that and connect to that wireless system. Use it to get into our mock election system. So that is a challenge for everybody that's here. Call it audience participation. All right? So the hackers get to go up and do that. Um, and then the rest of us, please just join us there throughout the day. This is casual. You go uh, take a little break or whatever, and you just want to go in and vote. Stop on in there, and about 10 at a time, we'll just bring you in there, walk you through a vote. Yeah, and I think, speaking of taking a break, out. I think I'm about to take a break, guys. Yeah, I am hooped. So I've been like streaming for a minute, but, you know, thanks for joining in if you're watching. Okay, guys. Well, I'll, uh, I think, let me just double check here. What are you doing? I think we're all set. There is a lot to do with this electronic voting system. I hope you guys delve yeah, into so it. Yeah, so I guess they're going to you know, vote and do all that. So, yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. I'll probably be back maybe at 7. We'll see. I don't know. My throat's kind of sore.